<sighs> Guys, please, if you like my content, please support it tonight. All right? This is the fourth straight stream that for some reason now is slow. Please support it tonight in some way. I don't even care how. Just please support it somehow. All right? Thank you. I have... I have... I have depression. I know what it feels like. I actually have it. I know what it feels like. You piece of shit! Slow day, all day. I'm depressed. Fuck up. Record low views. Thumbs down. I'm depressed. Give them up. Slow day, all day. I'm depressed. I'm breaking. I know what it feels like. Whale tail. I'm drinking and I'm thinking. I have depression. I'm breaking. Whale tail. I'm drinking and I'm thinking. Ain't no but I actually have it. Slow day, all day, I'm depressed. Ain't Record no low views, thumbs down, me. I'm depressed. I have depression. The fuck I have depression. I have. And you so so media. Depression. I have depression. You piece of shit. I know what it feels like. Talking all that. I actually have it. <laughs> I know what it feels like. Talk about my wife. Slow day, all day. I'm depressed. Record low views. Thumbs down. I'm depressed. I have depression. I have depression. Ain't nobody gonna it's tell right. me how to live. This is the United States of Florida. I am the supreme being. I make the rules and what I say goes. Uh, this is not a place for you to stand on your soapbox and complain about censorship and freedom of speech. Because the bottom line is you don't have freedom of speech. This is my land. Control this desire. You piece of shit! This desire. Talking all that. Her cake. Talking all that. This desire. The child. This desire and you control this desire. Fuck all you hoes. Devour. Control desire. Devour.
die. Till I die. Devour. Control his desire. What's up, everybody? Uh, we are back with another scream. Uh, you might hear I'm a little bit nasal. I got the nasal drip going. I got a little bit of a you know, nasal situation type of thing going on. Uh, but that's not going to stop me from what truly is important in this life. My priorities are straight, and I understand that making fun of DSP comes above everything else. So... Uh, before this week just moves on and all the crazy shit that happened just gets thrown into the past, uh, I decided I wanted to go through it and watch it and have some fun. Now, if you guys are good and the attendance is good and support is good, we might even have a live fever measuring ceremony. Well, where I will show you this thing which is a thermometer, and I will use this to calculate, measure, or otherwise estimate what kind of level of fever I have. But this is going to be a part of a special event, right? If, if we hit a, a massive amounts of likes, like let's say 100 likes, and I will measure my fever live, okay? Um, and... I assure you there is nothing on the display of this thermometer that is going to give away my precise location or any kind of sensitive information. All right? There you go. Warm and suck. I shouldn't attack the boyfriend. I need my boyfriend. <laughs> Beg T eats back full steam ahead. Yesterday was secretly top 10 of the year in terms of his shamelessness. Pick ups and hope you feel better soon. Hold up. 
how is yesterday uh what was it top 10 of the year but the day before that he had like a 70 minute segment about how he's not a lol cow how, how can yesterday be better than that so i guess we got like what two pre-streams to watch and then the in real life pre-stream if i even make it that far i don't know might feel not good but i think i'm good now all right so enough with this let's begin the catch-up and the catch-up is gonna be very fucking fun positive uh big ups vikes for the contribution with all the the underrated uh pastor miller quotes now uh begging yesterday as you saw from this clip sourced by the one and only poems underscore future as you can see things are not going good you guys now guys uh guys please guys. If you like my content please support it tonight <laughs> this is like this is the look on his face when he even 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 he knows he is begging and there's absolutely no excuse so let's just get it out of the way guys money okay uh thanks that would be nice all right this is the fourth straight stream that for some reason i was slow please support it tonight in some way i don't even care how just please <laughs> i don't even right. care how can i drop a like maybe if i if i retweet it it's gonna be considered support so yeah, oh the the hairline's also been going crazy. I mean, what exactly the fuck is this? What is this going on? And I had a thing on my Twitter uh yesterday. You know, actually talking about what it kind of looks like. Cuz this looks terrible. Let me skip through some uh shit posts. Oh yeah, this um the podcast from the other day was 71% Perky Tom interview and how he is not a lol cow. Oh, the current arc is insane. Big face up as the I, I I can't even determine what kind of arc it is. It just seems like this whole season, like the, the 2022 23 season has just been nothing but like constant drama. And then we get like a week off where he claims that he's above the drama and it's all over. There's no drama coming back. And then this drama again, like yesterday's pre stream, as you can see here, that wasn't yesterday, the other one. The day before that, the big one, the big drama pre-stream, had the title was called My Response to Turkey Tom and Thoughts on Lol Cow Culture. It was literally just a drama pre-stream. Just, just that. And the comments are great, by the way. I'm going to go through them. But let's get the... Let's get the chain of events correctly. So this is, this is the daily wrap from yesterday. You're not missing anything. Um, it's just begging and then talking about video games and then shrugs at some point because it doesn't make sense that he's playing video games and people not paying for it uh then we got the podcast from yesterday where he did the suggestion box of course he did because it's a thing that he does now to power trip on his audience uh but apparently somebody thinks awesome podcast as usual very informative topics and subjects discussed keep up the good work man that that sounds like one one for the engagement I, I think so. I think that one is just kind of for the, you know, for the engagement purposes. But he accepts those two. They're good. They help out a lot. That's, uh, it's almost as much as giving them, uh, like a, a dollar or something. So this was the one that doesn't have drama, apparently. Because uh, what I was actually looking for is, yes, the Daily Wrap. The Daily Wrap name is way less drama. Chill Mario RPG progress and more sim leveling. Whatever the fuck that is. He's playing The Sims now or something. But yeah, uh, it's it hasn't been good. Burnell Productions. Yesterday he had some pretty slow streams. Let me actually pull up the the totals from yesterday and see what we got in the cash register. Um, the update is courtesy of uh, the one and only account Gamer Phased Gaming who does those things, such as the end-of-the-day image that says how much money he made. So yesterday, Street Fighter 36, not good. Street Fighter is supposed to be the golden goose. It's like the greatest. Uh, and then... Where was the other one? Was it this one? Super Mario? Yeah, apparently 24. Very weak. Big L. And yeah, generally not that great. This guy, why do I have this guy's channel uploaded? And why is he so good at breaking the news? Well, we're going to get to that. And here we are, folks. Shut the fuck up. Let's start with this podcast first, right? 
this is the drama podcast to end all drama podcast. This is basically him standing on his, I don't know, soapbox, claiming that he is not a lol cow while letting everybody else milk him for this uh, entire stream, basically, because they got so much content out of this dude. He's fucking crazy. Plays just like the other Yakuza games from the past. Here we talk about video games first. And you guys hate video games. That shit fucking sucks. So we're gonna get to where he loses his mind. Okay. Hello? Apparently the quality is too big. Hold on. Internet needs to catch up. I don't have two lines of internet for nothing. My streamer content. Seriously, I really appreciate all of you supporting my stuff over the years. You're the reason I'm here, and the reason that I could still do what I love for a living. Without you, yeah, I uh, wouldn't be able to do this, but you guys still are here for me. I really, really appreciate that. You know, we're of sound mind and, and similar thought. When sound it comes to the mind. Kind of that I like to put out and you like to enjoy watching, <laughs> right? And I thank you for it. He's, he's reached the point where he's just saying words. He heard some word in a movie, and he just says it. That's the kind of shit I do, but for me, it's not even like my first language. Come on. Okay, now... <clears throat> We got through the intro. What was okay. it? 15 minutes? Good. 19 minutes? Now let's get to the oh, actual podcast. Because now, ladies and gentlemen, this is the subject. This is the topic <laughs> that everyone's going to want to hear. This is the part of the podcast that everyone's going to clip. Everyone's going right? to clip everyone's this. Everyone's going to put all over the internet. Okay. And this part of the podcast will be discussed on everyone else's show but mine. <laughs> okay? That's how it works, right? The drama portion. Wait, 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 wait. This this segment where he's discussing things is going to be discussed on every other show than the show discussing it first. What? I, I know the point he was going to try and make, but that's not how it works because it doesn't make sense. Is what everyone else outside of this stream wants to hear. Right. Maybe you're someone who's a regular and you don't even give a crap. Okay. Don't. I, I don't blame you. Close the tab, Why I guess. Don't I blame you. Because as you know, I'm not a guy who focuses on drama. I'm not a guy who focuses on this on, on this crap uh, entertainment value, right? Oh, I man. like putting out content that's game-centered, that's chill. Even though, yes, watching me rage or whatever at a game is entertaining. Maybe that's not so chill. It's still fun, right? It's in good humor. Um, you know the kind of content that I like to put out. Right. And you know yes. that I like super, to avoid super drama. Super good content. But every once in a while, I get sucked into it. And there's not much I can do about it, correct? It's going to happen in life. You can't always avoid the drama, but it all depends on how you react to it and how you handle it, right? Correct, and right. Now, now let's, let's proceed and handle this drama in the most DSP way possible. Let's do that. For a quick summary of what's going on for those who maybe haven't been around recently. <laughs> a lot. Oh, wait, you, I, I thought people watching his stream wouldn't care about this and they, they don't show up for this. And also, by the way, he scheduled his stream wrong um, today. So people are showing up in his chat thinking that he is actually going to be live, but he's not because he got his time wrong. Anyways. Tell me to summarize what's going on so you know why we're in, in this point today and why I'm right. so a drama recap. I'm coming to a decision. Which, honestly, so. I really appreciate him doing because I, I'm not entirely sure what he's going to be responding to as well. <clears throat> About a week ago, I don't know again because I haven't watched it, but a YouTube uh, documentarian, uh, okay. uh, I don't know, drama video maker, I don't know. Does, does June the King get the quote-unquote? Does he get the quotation marks or is he a real documentarian? How do we decide based on what they think about Phil? I don't know exactly how you would even categorize him because, again, I, I never Commentary watched channel. Before. His name's Turkey Tom. And apparently he did a two-hour documentary on me on his channel. Okay. Okay. Immediately when it released, Phil... I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it a documentary, but I also wouldn't call the June the King videos documentary. I would call it a summary at, at best. You hear it. Phil, did you see it? Phil, what do you think? Phil, what's your comment? Phil, Phil, Phil. Okay. And my answer is very simple. I have no comment because I haven't seen it. It's two hours long. I don't... Wait, okay. In this case, right... In this case, you just shut up about it if you haven't seen it. Because the dude is like, I haven't seen it, but let me address the drama surrounding it. But then you don't have all the context to address the drama surrounding it when you haven't seen the thing. You don't even know what you like about it or dislike about it. 
Just uh, either watch it and have this big dramatic segment, or don't watch it and shut up about it. It's really not hard. Or maybe you can just watch it and shut up about it if you think it makes you look bad. Just drop everything I'm doing in the midst of the busiest time of the year for me, by the way. This is the time of year when I'm juggling multiple new release games, right? We got special events going on for the holidays. This is absolutely my busiest work time of the year. It's not like this was like the dead of summer and there's nothing going on and we have dead time and we could, oh, let's just do a big ass react day to this documentary. Okay, so so here again, he's contradicting at least his uh, last four or five streams talking about how he doesn't do drama when he's having a slow day. But now he's just bringing up, yeah, I could do drama if, it, if I didn't have much else to do. And if my stream wasn't having a lot of content, if I wasn't playing a lot of games, sure, I would do drama. Then stop fucking grandstanding on all those people then. Better to do. The grandstanding hasn't even started yet. In reality, it kind of dropped at the worst possible time. If there was an attempt to try to get me to react to it, uh, this was the worst timing for it, right? I'm just so busy. All right. And by the way, I'm coming off of an illness. I was sick for a week. Now I'm backlogged a week. Was I was sick for like three sick. days. So it's even just compounds the problem, makes it even worse, right? <clears throat> perhaps, <clears throat> excuse me, perhaps if this documentary had dropped at a different time of the year, I would have reacted to it right away. I don't know. I have done this in the past. Um, I, last year, I did a lot of reacting. I reacted to the Frederick Knudsen down the rabbit hole video. Oh, wow. Was that a John documentary? Howard, basically, you know, attack video. Attack video. Teen. And uh, he had his own defense video. Oh, like very nice. A retcon um, revisionist history video. Oh, you guys love that one. Introspection. Introspection. Past, as a content creator, as a person, I fessed up to a lot of shortcomings, mistakes, and problems that I've had. Wow. You know, and... I think a lot of people appreciated that. Today, <laughs> like what? Things posting up on like the video what? Of people. It, it was everybody's fault in that video. And he fessed up to a lot. You're like, what, who are you trying to convince? God damn Watch it. This, this dude is like a wrestler who is buying into his character 100%. Like he actually buys into his own fucking hype. And saying, wow, you know, it's really interesting that Phil finally kind of did this. Um, You know, that's cool. Okay. It is very cool. Anyway. How much more context do we so need? documentary drops, and everyone, of course, is coming to my streams asking me about it, and I have nothing to say. Like, I really have nothing to say about it because I haven't seen it. How can you say something's good or bad, true or false, if you don't see it, <laughs> right? So my attitude is I'm just going to ignore yeah, it. Yeah, he just cried about the title. He didn't watch the video to see if he actually is a failure. He just cried about the title. Move on. But undoubtedly, of course, what happens is over the week, people keep asking me and prodding me. Did you hear that Tom said? And now, of course, we get the mocking voice to seem like he was harassed. People are harassing him. Your job you had back in the day was because of nepotism. Okay, and it was. was a high up manager at the company and he got you the job. It's the only reason you had it. And it's ironic that you lost the job because it was a nepotism job. Let you see it. You still lost it, right? No, I didn't hear that. I didn't watch the documentary. It's completely false. Okay. <laughs> it's completely ridiculously false. Not but what if, what if that guy lied to him? Why is DSP constantly trusting everything people tell him? Why if that's not what they say in the video? But he's still going to try and debunk it. Most of the truth. But no, I didn't hear that because, again, I'm not watching this documentary. Well, the video, by the way, at this point has, uh, I think, 1.2 million. So, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty big video. And... Wait. and not a single comment did I see on the video that is actually defending him or even slightly kind of believing things the way he wants people to see him. Think about the fact that he titled the documentary 10 Years of Failure. Don't yeah. you think that that's clickbait? Don't you think that that's yeah. toxic and negative? No, I think it's clickable. It's not clickbait because in the video you can see 10 years of failure pretty much objectively because he started off as a success and then became a failure. In the span of 10 years. That absolutely is a failure. Yeah. I think it's clickbait. I think it is toxic and negative. I talked in my streams. I was playing Mario one day. And I'm talking about how I don't think you can accurately call it 10 years of failure. Because failure is a subjective judgment. Okay. Right? Well, then. So? What if Turkey Tom thinks it's a failure? Because it's, it's his video. What? What? Okay. What How the do fuck? You fail? Well, fail at what? 
Oh my god, now we're retreading this again. Sure, if you want to talk about viewership and money that I bring money? in, you could say that it's been 10 years of failure because, yeah, I'm not popular today like I was. Okay, debunk. Uh, you got a business, right? Money and views are the key performance indicators of being a live streamer or a YouTuber. His money and his views are significantly lower than when he was somewhat popular. Therefore, he is a failure. There you go. In the simplest terms ever. He's running a business. His business is a failure. That's it. Years ago. 15 years ago. Okay. Right? And it doesn't matter if he's happy or not. His fucking happiness has nothing to do with if he's a success or a failure. At the same time, if I'm happier, healthier, and I'm okay with who I am as a content hey, big ups creator, for uh, eight months, dude. I'm not hurting people when I make content, and I know I'm not being toxic when I make content, and I know that it's positive stuff, and I love it, and my viewers love it, and it's a community that supports... What is wrong with that? And how can you say that someone who's operating a successful business... It's not a successful business. ...is a failure? It's not a su successful business. It used to be somewhat successful, and now it's a failure. Right. It is not subjective at all. Per your, again, subjective judgment. Okay, yeah, he. that's a subjective judgment video. It's not an objective video. If you would like to look at it like that then, but still, the title of the video should be 10 years of failure, because that's what it is. Uh, oh, this is a level of success you should have or could have had. Yes. This is a level of viewership. If you had done this and done this differently and done this differently and done this differently, you could have been huge. Fair enough. But hindsight's twenty twenty. Back then, things were different. There was no, uh, how do you say, blueprint of how to be a YouTuber. There was uh, no, no but he intentionally bottlenecked himself. You can think of probably like the biggest, uh, the biggest way he bottlenecked himself was with the direct capture. Because people were straight up telling him, Phil, you're going to fail doing this. Evolve. It's time to move on. And then he was stubborn and he fucking drove his uh, channel into a, off a cliff. History of uh, successful YouTube. Failure is measurable. It's not subjective. Yeah, in this case in particular, it's absolutely measurable and it is pretty objective. He's a failure. At that point, to see what they did. And he's a failure on many levels. He's a failure as a husband because if he dies right now, his wife is going on the street. She has absolutely no security. Failure as a fucking let's player because we're fucking rage quitting Mario games and we rage quitting fucking kitty games. Is a failure as a YouTuber because look at his stats and look at how far he's fallen. He's a failure as a son, isn't he? Because his fucking parents, like the moment you, you start talking about him uh, to him about fucking Phil, it all fucking falls apart because you get to Google his name and look at him jerk off on the internet. He's a failure at pretty, pretty much everything that matters. Successful. I was there at the beginning, right? So there was no track record of this is what you do to win. This is what you do to grow. This is what you do. There isn't, you, you don't get a, a checklist of that either. Nowadays, you, you don't do that. For, for any one of the top 100 streamers, there are probably 10,000 of people that are streaming to like 20 people. And over the years, I did make mistakes. I made missteps. I've already admitted to them many times. Again, we were watching the Frederick, Frederick Nudson documentary. And... Meanwhile, oh, that's a documentary now? Documentary okay. my I thought it was a documentary with the big air quotes. A lot of things about how badly I reacted to certain things that completely blew up in my face and stuff like that. You know, um, again, I don't know to what extent Tom talks about this stuff in his documentary because I didn't have two hours to watch it, right? We didn't do a live react to it. Anyway, so yeah, I have an issue with the title of the documentary. I feel it's clickbait. I feel it's misrepresentative. No. Nope. I wanted to call it 10 years of decline. No. Nope. 10 years of... Uh, you know, I don't know, uh, on the downward slope. That makes sense. No, it's failure, a failure. Failure subjective. Okay, well, he decided it's a failure, so that's that's all we got. Can we please fucking move on from this bitch-ass title? Judge something as a failure, I don't think anything I've done is a big failure. I'm still here. I'm still enjoying content. I'm still okay. making How is that failure? And by the way, I'm happier today than I've ever been. How is that failure, right? Anyway. <clears throat> I don't know. Some might say that if you're happy with what you've become in the business you run, that is one of the biggest arguments that you're a failure. Because, like, if you're proud of this and begging for, like, I don't, you guys, I don't care how much you give me, just, like, please support. This is the, the clip that I played in the beginning of the stream. If you're happy with this, 
then you're actually convincing me more than you're a failure than if you weren't happy with it. So I said these kind of things over the last week as people kind of asked me questions about the documentary during my streams. And again, I'm just answering on the fly off the cuff during my streams. I haven't seen this, this, this thing, okay? So apparently a few days ago, Turkey Tom, I guess, responded again. I guess. He basically said, He's giving us a drama recap without being a part of the drama, somehow. People are just feeding him info. Um, I guess, like, this okay. happened. Basically what happened His was, only success is being famous for Puppy on stream. That's, well, that it will forever be one of the most successful things he's ever made. And he could have capitalized on it if he wasn't so, taking himself so seriously like he is doing now. Look at him with this little dress shirt that came out of the bargain bin. And sitting in front of these stupid artworks that are for children. And that game over sign that is more ironic than he could have ever think it is. I guess Tom had said okay. on his content that he wanted to talk to me. Like he wanted to do an interview because he was fascinated now with some of my responses. And he wanted to like talk to me and do like a one-on-one -on -one deal. And I said, well. Yeah, he just wanted to milk you, bro, because you're a fucking lol cow. Everybody, it was obvious to everybody that this would happen. I'm not a hard guy to find. There's many ways you could contact me, right? You could email me. You could DM me on Twitter slash X, whatever you want to call it. Uh, among other ways, but there's public ways to contact me. It's all over my YouTube page and everything. This is how you do it. So, Turkey Tom did DM me on Twitter, and we've had a back and forth over the course of the last week or so, okay? Um, and essentially, the discussion is this. I don't think he's going to have a problem with me talking about this publicly because it's very common conversation. There's no private info here. Um, basically, he first responded and said, so I want to have a conversation with you, but I want to talk about everything. I want to talk about the mobile game drama. I want to talk about the <laughs> lol cow podcast. The and semantics queen finds one arguable point and builds his entire argument around it. Like the escort saga. One thing is wrong, so it's all wrong. Uh, in this case, he's also ignorant of the whole situation. He doesn't even know what he is invalidating in that video because he didn't see it. His whole beef was with the stupid fucking title. Team star. So dumb. I talk about so, okay, so they started talking. If somebody wins the lottery and proceeds to blow all of that money down the drain and then is begging the rest of their life that would be considered a failure, even though they are still here. Yes, uh, but it also is subjective because you might say they're a success at winning the lottery. That makes them successful, you know, and then you just ignore everything else. Industry is a content creator. I, think, I want to talk about your I think community. It works perfectly. I want to talk about the drama around you. I want to talk about all this stuff. Okay. So we had a conversation, and after going back and forth, many. Oh man, his hairline is so fucked. Essentially, okay. Look at this. What kind of a fucking vortex looking hairline is this? What is happening? Uh, <clears throat> the way that we narrowed it down was this. I said, first of all, I'm not going on any podcast. I'm not going on anything related to Keemstar. Everyone kind of knows such a bitch. this guy at this point. I want nothing to do with this guy. <laughs> okay. All. all right? So if you want to talk, it'll be a one-on-one -on -one conversation. That's fine. What would you want to do? And essentially, he's like, yeah, it would be like a one-on-one -on -one conversation, not a live stream. It would be like a show we do, a live video or whatever. Uh, or not live video, excuse me. An on-demand video offline. An on-demand video. video. Upload after the fact. And I basically told him, I said, listen, if you're looking for me to essentially rediscuss all the drama stuff that I've already discussed on my content in a, in the freaking side school <laughs> podcast earlier this year you're barking up the wrong tree oh I'm man that stuff that was the whole the guy who loves repeating himself and endlessly talking about his drama doesn't want to repeat himself and talk about his drama for somebody else because he knows that other guy is gonna make all the the clout off of it point and okay. Phil has already explained it. He wants to talk about positive things like his community and how they support his lifestyle and whatever. Doing that side scroller show is to get it out of the way. I've talked about it now. It's over. If you want my answers, you have them. I'm not going to change my answers because that's the truth. So either you watch that or you don't believe, believe me or not. It doesn't matter. There's no point in re asking me the same questions. You'll get the same answers 100 times. Okay. So basically, I said, excuse me. Um, you know, if you want to talk about me, my content, my history as a YouTuber, really, right, stuff like that. But bro, who fucking cares? I mean, legit. 
Even if it's like a one hour he long thing. Video. He talked about Panda on the podcast after the doc was released. He skimmed it before the stream. I'll get back to that uh, in a second. But even if it's like a one hour a stream or a video or whatever, him talking about starting off back in the day. That's not unique anymore. Many people started off back in the day and now they're somebody. They're not a fucking worthless beggar. They're not a fucking internet panhandler. They're somebody. So if you want to talk to somebody about their career, it shouldn't be this dude. This dude is only good talking about his stupid fucking retarded ass drama that's constantly going on in his life about something. And 99% of the time it has to do with money. And 100% of the time that has to do with somebody else's money because he doesn't have his own fucking money it's all given to him with for different reasons so go fuck yourself wanting to talk about your stupid ass community they got nothing to say that's why they didn't show up when uh, when Craig wanted to talk to him there was nobody from his community that showed up give me a fucking hey, that's break cool. but don't expect and, uh, I don't think he's seen the video uh, him talking about Panda Lee could be just somebody telling him how uh, what happens in the video, and he just takes that talking point. I don't think he legitimately saw it. Sit down and give any attention to Keemstar and all that shit. Okay. Don't expect me to talk about fucking mobile games and dumb shit. I'm done with all. Well, then you're just... you're worthless. Then you're a, a cow with dried up teats. So go fuck off. What are you doing here? Behind me at this point. I don't want to involve my. He's, he's uh. I I love that he's too proud. To comprehend that the only thing that gives him value as an entertainer is all the stupid drama. That's the only thing that makes him somewhat even worth anything for anybody who is like an outsider. Drama anymore, and I explained to him that earlier this year with that side scrollers podcast. All right, sadly, that was a situation where I decided to do it. I oh, that's a that's a good question, um, Dale. Uh, if there's a checklist for success now, why doesn't he follow it? Because he's better than them. Because he has morality. Because according to him, you are successful on the internet only if you're toxic and you make making content that hurts others. There is no alternative. And he doesn't want to be like any of them. Because he is better. And him being better means that the way YouTube is built, he's going to be at the bottom of the totem pole. Because that's how life works. Apparently. It was against my better judgment. I did it anyway. I trusted them. And... That was something that was very harmful to my community for months. Why? My community told me for months. His after, community? Wow, that really sucked because now we got nothing but toxic element all around you and your content. People constantly talking shit about you. But that, oh, it's no. It's messed up. You shouldn't have done it. Right. No. Uh, no. This is not true because I remember I watched a very nice clip from Phil where he claimed that the interview did his job perfectly because it isolated the negative toxic element to outside of his stream. Right? So in his mind, or at least at the time, the interview was actually one of the best things he's ever done. Because it made all the toxic people go and talk about him on their pages or YouTube channels or whatever. And he was just left alone to chill and relax with his audience. That was the narrative back then. But now the narrative is different because he wants to avoid another type of a situation like that. And now we're talking about how it was terrible for his community. And everybody was getting trolled, and the trolls was like there 24-7 was super dramatic. And I regret it now, you know, but it is what it is. It's out there. And now he regrets it. On, right? And so why would I want to go back to that, right? We're past that, right? So this guy said to him, you know, it would have to be non-related to all that stuff. And he kind of agreed. He said, all right. We don't have to talk about that. We can still have a one-on-one -on -one conversation about other stuff. You know, again, your your content, your history as a creator, all this stuff. And I was like, all right, well, here's the deal. Allow me to talk to my community about it. Right? Because <laughs> what a dumb I bitch. Want back from them before I'm oh, my God. Like, he can't I even do? fucking piss without his chat holding his dick for him. What a fucking loser. What a fucking failure. I got to discuss this with my stream chat. Half of it is full of people that genuinely actually hate him. And are gaslighting him. So he can feel like there's more of a community that exists. And the other half are most likely either social outcasts that don't know the answer to this question. Because they don't have enough fucking experiences to know. Or like actual disabled people. I did earlier this year. Where I feel like I made a huge mistake. Oh my right? god. I went out and I did this interview. And it basically turned... He can't put his pants on without looking at chat.
God against God damn it. Once. People reveled in the drama and all the shit. They all got their jollies off. They all made tons of money from my hate watchers, right? And in the meantime, all my fans and viewers are bothered by a bunch of harassment online and toxic shit. A what? This is the opposite of what people want. Okay? So let me talk to my audience. Let me d directly decide with my audience what we want to do, and I'll get back to you. All right? So, as you guys know, all right, yesterday we talked about this on this very show. And, <clears throat> excuse me, simply proposing the idea to you guys, okay? I got interesting responses in the chat. Of right. course, of Some course of he did. Some I got live were fascinating. Some people, all right, were completely on board. Wow, Phil, so you mean you're going to have... Oh, so, so you're trying to tell me that your audience couldn't agree on what is best for you to do? Wow. When has that ever happened with Dark Side Phil? When his audience is giving him two completely different answers and they can't agree. You're not going to talk. You should call them idiots, Phil. Drama, but instead, actually just about you and your content. Well, this would be out good for you. You'll have an opportunity. I need a few days to see Jadair Rock, Jade, Slayer, and Haseo are all right with me talking to you. Yeah, we need to get them vibe check. Uh, we need a... It's like you getting your parents to sign some sort of a form so you can go on like a school field trip or something like that. Let me... Turkey Tom, I can come over and sleep over your place, but I need to ask my chat if they're letting me. Okay? So, uh, I'll get back to you tomorrow. Is that good? To talk about yourself and what you stand for and your content and everything and not have it misrepresented because it's not going to have that drama element to it. Instead, it's going to be just discussion about more important things, right? Right. Um, and then some people were like, yeah, this also, is exposure. Like, you know, what, what is he? Oh, an exposure. Now we're talking about clout. And look, when he mentions clout, and his eyes become like bug-eyed. Dude, imagine all these people that I could get to swing by my place. Oh my god, imagine all this exposure to people that are going to know nothing about me. Because I'm going to get to present myself out there, and they're going to think I'm a nice guy. And then I'm just going to trick them. Oh, yeah. Ricky Tom's audience likely doesn't know who you are didn't bro turkey tom's audience thinks you're more of a failure than turkey tom uh, than turkey tom does that's what i mean turkey tom's audience thinks he's much a much more of a loser than than tom thinks he's a loser because turkey tom's audience watches lol cows who you were until they watched this documentary and now to actually have a conversation with you yeah you should go read um, those comments if you want to see what the community thinks you are as a person Maybe some people would give it a shot and we'll come over and watch your content. Yeah, right? yeah. Give it a, give it a thousand look. percent. It's good exposure, right? Oh, yeah. Cloud. Others are staunchly against it. They're like, oh my. And he's going to do, like, this is this is the thing. Now he's super over-exaggerating for things that he agrees with. But um, he thinks he can go on a show and do an interview with a guy who's literally on the Lol Cow podcast. Turkey Tom is like one of the, uh, the milkers, one of the farmers on the Lol Cow podcast. And then, what, come back and talk about how he's not a lol cow? He wants nothing to do with that community? You see how he just wants to fucking benefit, even from people that he despises? God damn it. God, Phil, are you out of your mind? Because now he saw Cloud in talking about one of these guys, and he was like, dude, what? Can I have some? This year what happened, after you trusted people, and you were you were basically treated uh -huh. like dirt, and then we had to go through that crap for two, three months, until it finally calmed down in the, you know, the early summertime or whatever. Um... And like, why would you even think about possibly doing this again? Are you dumb? Right? Yeah. You not learn your lesson the first time. No, he never uh, does. You know, people, I hate to say it, but after the side scrollers thing, there's sadly a chunk of my viewership, my audience, who feels that like they were I right. Would never be given a fair shake ever. What? By anyone oh yeah. Those, you want to, you want to milk those guys. Talk, when you're talking to your chat, talk to those guys specifically, because they're they're your hardcores. Those people, oh, you love them. On the internet, that everyone has this underlying agenda. Oh like, yes. People are simply put, just trying to fool me, so that they'll get me in a situation oh, yeah. <laughs> where then they can. They're trying to get, get the upper hand on Phil. Benefit out they of can having interaction. With personal Let's benefit, be bro. That's the only thing you're good for. I am what one the of fuck. The most sought after people for an interview. 
I wonder why. Dude, no way. And then he gives you this fucking lobotomized fucking retard face. Look at this fucking expression. God damn it, this dude is stupid. In this last year, I've had people offering me thousands of dollars for an interview. Okay. You seem like you need them. Down. Okay. Oh, uh, you could buy a better shirt. To talk to me. But I refuse. Because I know that these people don't have my best interests of, of, of me or my... No, community. nobody got your fucking best interests. It's the fucking internet. What do you think that your fucking friends out there... Fine. Oh my god. ...want to pull me into a drama vortex for their own personal benefit. By the way, this is a an hour-long drama segment for his own personal benefit. We're literally talking about right now whether or not he should go and have an interview for some with somebody exclusively for personal benefit and in zero downsides that's what he wants no drawbacks a hundred percent benefit this is literally what we're talking about right now but now other people are bad because they want to do that to him you see right the more i say the more content they have to put out on the internet that's oh people had a lot of content after this and it gives them money yeah so that's all it is dude. get used to it drive me into that crap right So, there's a lot to think about here, right? I asked you guys for feedback over and I... Uh, maybe, you. maybe ask your wife when she takes her face out of that Chinese food container box. Maybe you should ask her. ...was the one team called a retard. Don't you have two big bills to pay? I really fucking wish. I just want somebody to have joined the interview, just call them slurs for like a good five minutes while everybody else is just sitting there silent. That's what I want. Because, like, I, I don't want to see an interview with this guy talking about fucking it's video games. I want somebody... That ...sells herself for $10 a pop complaining that her clients don't respect her. Well, he doesn't sell himself uh, for interviews anymore. So he's grown up from that. I guess it's like... This is like one of those porn stars that leaves the business and then discovers Christ or something. And pretends, like, he never actually got fucked by a thousand guys. Something like that. Ah. Uh more feedback than i bargained for i got more feedback than i ever expected wow too much feedback talked to in a while who actually wrote me okay okay you know i haven't spoken to you in years but i just want to let you know here's what i think about this situation with this interview with oh let's find wow. uh, let's find out more I'm expecting that um tons of people left comments on the video thank you for that i like i said i got emails i got messages dms wow about me crazy from every corner of the internet I was yeah like, holy crap like, I, I thought I'd get, like, 10 people. I got, like, 100. It was, like, wild, the amount of feedback that I got, okay? Yeah, because everybody wants him to embarrass himself again. So they're willing to go next level to gaslight him into believing that this is actually a really good idea. Which I, I, I stand for. I'm a 1,000% a always pro-gaslighting DSP uh, into whatever. Because it only takes a little bit, and you wouldn't believe the miracles that a gaslit DSP would do. And... Again, like he literally remember before he had the interview a couple of days before he was so confident that it would go great. And he went there the first like 20 minutes. He's like he he knew he was it's like you're walking into an exam, but you knew the, the answers in advance. But then they switch up the answers. So you're like, OK, hold on, hold on. And you gradually get to see this throughout the, the podcast climaxing, maybe when Keemstar joined how he realizes he fucked up, but it takes him very slowly to realize. And it, it's it's so good. It's such an atmospheric scene. And essentially, there's there's now three schools of thought on this, all right? Number one is, any exposure is good exposure. It doesn't matter if you do this interview and you look good. Or Apparently you look not. Bro, broski. There is like a hundred channels dedicated on hating on him. You think that's good exposure? Has it done him much good? If you gotta be honest? Yeah, the people still are reminded that he exists because people with way more skills showcase their skills making fun of him. But at the end of the day, what is he getting from this? How many of those people have converted into like real fans? Come on. Does it matter if you do this interview and you actually talk about meaning? Did, uh, did the quartering interview benefit him? Because the quartering is like a pretty, a, a guy whose viewers are kind of into gaming, 
But also, they knew that he's a failure, so why would they become fans? So people learn about you, or if Turkey Tom actually baits you into, you know, toxic stuff, any exposure is good exposure for you right now. No, so, especially okay. not right now. If it's positive or negative, right? Just do it, okay? No. The other school of thought is absolutely don't do it, because the flip side of that is anything you do affects everybody. And right now, like what? a year building up good faith with your audience, what? telling them you weren't going to involve yourself in drama. Bro, what, do you, what the fuck a year? The interview, arguably one of the most dramatic events in DSP history, was like in April. Was it April, right? Or March? What do you mean a year? It was not even like six months since then. Uh, I guess it has, but you, you know what I mean. Telling them that after the side scrollers thing you learned... And you're not going to keep involving yourself in this kind of stuff. You did a good job this year. You stayed out of the drama with things like this lol cow podcast. Where uh huh. Yeah. Kept trying to get your go, yes. threaten you and get you. Threaten you. Didn't do any of it, and that's a good thing. He's acting like they're going to show up and break his kneecaps, which I would. I would definitely tune into the lol cow podcast for that. So you Even out. if it's just the audio. Out of it because you made the right decisions, right? Um, so don't do it. Doug, no matter what, there is no positive spin on this. It's just going to be bad for you and everybody yeah. else. Okay? And then there's some people who, interestingly enough, are middle of the boat. They're not going off the one end or the other end. They're kind of like, well, here's the thing. It's kind of possibility for good, good or bad. Oh. Because if so, let me guess this. He asked his audience whether or not he should go on a podcast. And people were of the following opinions. One. It's going to be good. Two, it's going to be bad. And three, it might be good or bad. That's 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 great. Uh, I'm so glad he had to do the research for this. Hold on, because I'm stretching my back. Yeah, right he's now. stretching his fucking fake-ass back injury. Uh, if Turkey Tom... Look at him. Is being How does he expect somebody to take him seriously? He's talking about, like, doing interviews for clout and rejuvenating his fucking... YouTube career while he's fucking acting like somebody's trying to butt fuck him. Like he's readjusting his fucking anal beads or something. What the fuck, dude? How do you think somebody's gonna take this seriously? I know I look weird right now, but you know. Yeah. You back problems, sometimes you gotta decompress. Well, you don't have back problems. Please, get a yeah, fucking grip. Thomas being on it. Wasn't Pigroach going to interview people? He was. Wasn't he going to become the Conan O'Brien of the internet? Mm, not really. To that. Where are the special guests making an exclusive appearance of the Level 1 podcast? Now, all he wants to do is go on podcasts. Uh, yeah, honestly, I don't remember the official narrative behind why he's not doing it. I think it's because the interview happened and then everybody started hating on him or something. It legitimately makes no sense. Uh, so basically, he just decided not to do it. So yeah. But the idea, briefly, after the interview happened, the idea that he was going to go on with was that he wanted to show them how a fair interview is done. He was teasing that a couple of times, and then he decided he's not doing it altogether. But he really had this idea where he would be the alpha, the Chad interviewer of YouTube. And he would basically like show those motherfuckers on the, si on the side scrollers how to give somebody a fair shake. Nice. Right? Oh, and man. If he is being transparent and if he's being... But yeah, it was basically a troll's right? fault. Then this interview would probably be pretty good. Right? To actually have someone just sit down and talk about you and your history as a creator and what you stand for and Phil, why you made the decisions uh, you did. In this here, here's the thing, though. This interview being good for DSP and for the target demographic of that interview is a completely different thing. If completely different. Because, like, nobody who's going to turn tune into that interview want to hear about DSP being laid off in 2009. No, they want to hear about WWE Champion. They want to hear about uh, Bank Leaks. They want to hear about all that shit. If Turkey Tom is being honest, right? And if he is being transparent and if he's being truthful, right? Then this interview would probably be pretty good. 
right? To actually have someone just sit down and talk about you and your history as a creator and what you nobody said cares about that. Why you made the decisions you did and the things nobody cares the and stuff. And if you're not bringing up nonsensical drama shit that everyone else has already covered, all their conspiracies that are constantly circulated, the same exact bullshit conspiracy information in a circle, constant, just keeps spinning, right? If that's the case, then it's actually could be good. But again, the question really is, and this is actually. I, what I really most appreciate is some people who used an analytical mind towards it. Oh, wow. Like, the whole point of you granting an interview would be... Granting an interview? Who the fuck do you think you are? The royal family? Granting an interview? Look at how fucking fancy... Look at how important he thinks he is. And I'll, I'll give him a, a, a speck of credit. Because, of course, there are all these channels that are watching him, making fun of him. That shit probably makes you feel really important. It probably makes you feel like, legitimately, as he claims, he's one of the most sought-after uh, sought interviewees ever, of all time. Because of who he is. Dude. You have but, of course, this is the same guy that said he is the linchpin holding the Lol Cow podcast together. Because he's, like, the biggest loser of all of them. Basically. Without saying it, he paraphrased it. Something to talk about, and you feel that- Anything, anything to make himself feel good. He might say, someday he might just say, I'm a complete piece of shit, just to make himself look good. Or, or be a victim. It's so fucking good. The, the length he's gonna go to make himself look good, or like a complete little tiny piece of shit victim. Beneficial, right? What's the point of doing an interview if it doesn't help anything? <laughs> right? What's the point like, of doing you know, an interview if it's not for clout? Oh, I don't know. Makes sense. You don't? Absolutely. If I have a point to get across, if I have something I want to speak about, and I wanted to have an audience outside of just my own, because let's be honest, me talking to you guys right now live on the podcast, how many people are on the stream right now? I'm going to guess 350. 575. <laughs> Look at how There's stupid this is. Than I even suspected. <laughs> okay, well. In reality, my oh, I hate this segment. around 300 people on a podcast, okay? So me talking to you, this is like the preacher preaching to the choir, right? You guys are here every day. You like the stuff, you like me, you understand where I come from. You don't need me to tell you about what I stand for. You know already. You're what? here, right? But what? Uh, for me to go to a, an outside podcast or an outside... Yo, hold up, bro. Hold up, man. Like, how are we going to say something like this? And then continue to do the same, the same segments every day. He does like three schedule segments a day. I thought your fucking viewing audience knows what fucking game is playing. What? Dude, why does he gotta give them the fucking, the begging segment every day? When they know how they can support him. They know that the super chats exist. They know that tips are a thing. They know they can gift a membership. Why you gotta be fucking begging, Mr. Preacher? show and talk that's different that's exposure that's giving uh -huh. me a venue to talk to people who don't sit here on this show every day and know who i am okay. they don't watch my gaming they don't watch anything they, and you know wow wait a minute someone who stands for this kind of stuff it's a little different from everybody else that's for interesting. What? that's fascinating what do you stand right? for phil so, what the fuck if, does he actually stand for there's a benefit for me to go in, in an interview with someone like turkey tom and talk to his audience or whatever then maybe it's worth it, right? But that's what I have to really analyze here. It's not mm, a matter you gotta of, analyze. Oh, is it going to be overly positive or overly negative? Because if you want to know the truth, I don't think it would be either. I feel like there would be positives and negatives. There's going to be times when he's going to talk about stuff that I've done wrong, stuff that he, that he feels that I probably should be called out for, right? To which I'm going to fess up. Yeah, I probably did fuck up a lot. I'm a human. I made many, many mistakes in the 15 years like of what? YouTuber. Oh. I love this thing, dude. I love this generic YouTuber taking accountability segment. Oh, I, I, I was a terrible person back in insert time span here. I did so many mistakes, such as the many mistakes I did. Uh, I'm a fallible human, and I showed that when um, something in my past happened. Like what, Phil? Can we actually get a breakdown of this? Can we itemize the, the mistakes he's made? I've had situations where I absolutely know I made the wrong decision. I treated people badly. Oh, um, he treated people I made badly. Business decisions for sure. Oh, he did and that. It, it hurt me. And then that rolls over to my audience because when you're someone who's crowdfunded, 
Well, now guess who the responsibility goes on to to keep me going? The, the viewers. Because I have no other source of income. And that's not fair, right? And that's yeah. happened many times over the years, right? It's still happening. So, it is yeah. happening right now. It actually, matter of fact, happened less than 24 hours ago. That wild begging segment, you might even say less than 12 hours ago. I'm not exactly sure. There's rightfully things that he's going to he could easily call me out for and say, you did this wrong, you did this wrong, should you have done this better, blah, blah, blah. But here's the other thing too, all right? I could do that for by myself. Like I just did. Did I not? Did I not literally just do that right now and say, yeah, it's it's wrong when yeah, I- Yeah, but you know that when you say something that's stupid, somebody in reality can actually talk back to you. So they can question a certain thing that you said instead of just getting banned, right? bad choices and those choices result in negativity and that negativity hurts my business and now that responsibility to keep the business going is on the viewers because i'm a crowdfunded guy wow crazy i just said it right ultimately i don't want it to be like that forever but right now that's just how it is right there's nothing well it sounds to me like you have an issue and you're not taking any kind of steps to remedy it so it's gonna keep happening i mean ki ki that's kind of like a no-brainer of an opinion uh, what am I supposed to say? He knows why exactly he's begging. It sounds like a person that's addicted, if I gotta be honest. He knows exactly what the problem is. He knows what causes it. He just doesn't want to do anything to fix it because he's comfortable with it. I guess he's fine with begging. He doesn't want to change anything about it. I can really do about that. Because he just explained exactly why he's begging. And nothing changed. He's not going to pick up a sponsorship, so next month you don't have to hear about his bills. He's not going to try a new fucking video format. Something, I don't know. I'm not going to fix his business. He should know how to do that. What he's going to sit there and do is, is performatively and theatrically pretend like he's open to suggestions. But then when people give him suggestions, we just shoot all of them down. Because that is also a segment that I would like to take a look at a little bit later. The situation I'm in. So I can easily self-analyze too. The thing is, do my viewers really care for this? Right? Is this something that they're interested in? Oh. Probably not. Again, then why are we doing it on a daily basis? Why do we have segments where he's just sitting around shrugging and looking at chat for them to decide what game they gotta play that's gonna get him money? That is not a part of this self-analyzing that the people don't care about? We do it every day? Again, this is more appealing to a bigger audience, a different audience than my normal viewership. You understand? So, really, there's so many factors involved to thinking if I should do this interview or not, all right? I, this is a lot of thought goes into this, okay? So. A lot of thought goes into this. I know this. beating around the bush. Right. I'll tell you what happened last night. All this feedback is coming in, all right? And I'm like, all right, <clears throat> the last thing I'm going to do before I go to sleep, all right, I'm going to watch this supposed response video that Turkey Tom made a few days ago because i guess like four days ago he made a response video about me i guess again we got the weasel words just go watch the fucking videos dude take some notes and fucking respond what is this half-assed little pussy ass pretending to respond dad or people told me about things that he had yeah said there we go there you go and it's it's like so now you completely lost in the sauce. Did he watch it? Did he saw something about it on Twitter? Did somebody send him something? Did somebody send him the fucking transcript of the video? You'll never know. I responded to it. He watched clips of that, and then he responded to uh -huh, those clips. Yeah, yeah. Right? It was about a 20-minute video. Why don't right? you just get a room and talk to each other? What the fuck is this shit? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to watch the video, and I'm going to sleep on it. And I'm going to have all this feedback... That I've gotten, you know, I'm probably going to get more feedback overnight, which I did, by the way. So thank you to everyone <laughs> who continuously. <laughs> oh, man, feedback. please keep giving him feedback. Overnight. Please. Right. And I said, all right. It's like this dude, there, there doesn't exist feedback in the world that's going to help him. Because feedback is just an idea for an action that you should do. And when it comes to doing actions, his fucking back hurts. He can't do any of that shit. So you just keep it up with the ideas, and we're going to write them here on a little piece of paper, and we're going to put it aside, okay, for when we need it. In the morning, I'm going to try to figure this out, what I want to do. So that's what I did. I watched the 20-minute 
Turkey Tom, I guess it was on his alternate channel, his response video. Yeah, I, well, what was great about the video is it basically comes down to, hey, Phil, you didn't watch my video. That That's what it was. And, and he just tells him, hey, Phil, you should watch my video. To what I had been saying. All right. Now, here's what I can tell you. This is the only content of Turkey Tom's I've ever seen. All right. Okay. He's a well-spoken individual. He's an intelligent individual. <laughs> he can formulate coherent thoughts that aren't just dumb, insulting memes. <laughs> so he's already three for three better than DSP on on any any one Which of those. Is already insane amount of points wow. past anyone who would be considered one of my hate watchers or these idiotic memester morons on the internet who literally all they do is misrepresent me all day. By the way, he doesn't watch their stuff too, so he has no idea what they are actually like. Or what kind of stuff they actually make, right? The guys. But he watched a little bit of a Turkey Tom video, talking nicely of him. By the way, the Turkey Tom was very nice to him in the video, much nicer than somebody like me would have been. Leaps and bounds better than them. Other people have alternate channels. He has a sister channel. Oh, you know that that one is uh, is pretty good. I I haven't thought about that one. His is a sister channel, but on any, everybody else, you might as well call it a sock account. You know what I'm saying? He's actually like out to tell a story oh, and or his a story of failure story. and it's entertaining like the 20 minute video I found entertaining. I was a little weirded because but he the, was playing Metroid Prime. The 20 minute video is just a response to your fucking video, dumbass. Instead of talking like he was talking, but it was Metroid Prime and I'm like I don't remember people doing that kind of stuff for ages. Like, people used to do that on YouTube back in the day. People especially who were camera shy. They oh my god, like this dude. Rolling in the this dude, while they talked he hasn't it. seen... Bruh. This dude hasn't seen a video of a video game being played, or at least gameplay footage on the screen, while somebody talks about stuff. To him, this is like a new concept. This is why every single time this guy starts talking about YouTube, you should just... Just close the tab and do something else. This guy has no fucking concept on what people actually do on this platform. That he's made hundreds of thousands of dollars and it, oh, nearly a, a hundred thousand fucking videos on. He got no clue. The only thing that comes down to him is the money. That's all we give a fuck about. Would be them talking. Oh, and you're gonna hear about it today, but because. His YouTube check probably came through, and it was smaller than last month because he got sick uh, last month. Over gameplay, I haven't seen that in ages. Like, that's old shit. Wings of Redemption used to do over a decade ago, and I was like, that's a little weird um, that that was in the video. And that's just a, a, a straight-up criticism, but that's not a negative. Like, it's not, the video wasn't horrible. I'm just saying it was weird. Why not be on camera talking if you have something to say rather than show completely unrelated gameplay that it was actually distracting i was like why am i watching metroid oh Prime? my god you fucking speaker I, I want to see the person talk about the subject matter i don't want to watch metroid prime it was wow. very weird remember when this dude used to do um, a pre-stream every single day that was just him talking while a slideshow plays on stream you see but now you can't criticize him for that because he improved you guys now he has a webcam that we get to see his tits on and his shitty haircut okay but hey there's people who do it all the time whatever um right. essentially what he said in this 20 minute video is first of all he defended his stance on naming the video 10 years of failure essentially saying well phil doesn't feel he's a failure he's in a great mental space good for him and if he doesn't want to be in drama and he's happy good for him <laughs> yo what, what is happening look at uh, what look at this whole thing since he began paraphrasing his eyes are just like all over the place, bug eyes. He's tweaking the fuck out. Look at him. Essentially saying, well, Phil doesn't feel he's a failure. He's in a great mental space. Good for him. And if he doesn't want to... licking his lips. We're looking around like it's... Like it, there's a demon in the fucking room. Like somebody's after him. What the hell? Good for him. I'm happy for yeah, him. Yeah, good for him. I'm glad he's in a good mental space as he's looking around like he's fucking schizophrenic. I'm glad he's in a great mental space. I mean, that essentially... Look at this mental space. Unshakable. Couldn't have been better. Mentally unshakable. Untwistable. That he couldn't have made Big better Big up's uh, Guy King for the sub. the last 10 years, he's been on the decline, and I consider that failure. So really, it's a perspective thing. Yes. You know? 
I don't consider it failure. I do. I would consider it absolutely decline. Okay. Nobody cares about what you consider, bro. You're actually delusional. Who cares about what fucking DSP considers whatever the fuck? He's a crazy person. He doesn't have a right to an opinion. I mean, he does. He does have a right to an opinion, but you shouldn't take it seriously. That's kind of the thing. Or, like I said, that's the gimmick. Slope. I don't think that it's failure because failure would be, I'm insanely desperate. I'm going out of business. Okay. Right. Uh, I don't have any other re recourse. Everything is falling apart at the seams here, right? So I'm desperate and I'm doing crazy stunts for money every day, like sucking cucumbers and kissing chickens. Oh, I'm sorry, that's not me. I don't. Oh, that guy. Stabs I think that guy is is much better off than DSP. USA, because I can't believe he still does that shit. Yeah, I, uh, I'm sure he can't believe you still do the whatever the fuck you do. But you know what I'm saying? Look at just just a random diss. It's not even a sneak diss. It's just a direct diss at Review Tech USA. The guy talking about there's no drama. I hate drama. Everybody bringing up drama will be terminated. Oh, Review Tech USA, by the way. I can't believe he's still doing this. What a pathetic piece of shit. <laughs> like, that's not the case. I'm still someone who's true to myself, makes uh -huh. content that I enjoy and my viewers enjoy. I have a full, uh, 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 you know, this belief system that I stand by. It's a belief system. Wow. It's like a like a video game system he's he still hasn't unlocked the beliefs yet the belief system it exists it's like a skill system and i can still do that and i'm yeah. still successful he still, still hasn't unlocked them because um you need to donate some perk points sound good business. so again i disagree successful businesses by the way when your revenue that you make from your business is in a decline every fucking year that's what a good business is with him saying it's failure the opposite of success is success that's what he wants you to believe. He thinks that's failure. That's a subjective thing. Subjective and right. thing. And he even says, I titled it to try to make it entertaining. I get it. It's called clickbait. It's like back in the day, dude, he used to be able to make like one video and go on vacation. Imagine like this level of fucking privilege. And now he gets one off one day without streaming. And we're, we need to make up the revenue, you guys. We're fucked. You know, it is. It's a clickbait title. It is clickbait. You want people to watch the documentary, you make it overly No, dramatic. it's called clickable. If it was clickbait, what is in the title wouldn't be in the video. That's what clickbait means. I have a, 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 a thumbnail of It's just a good title. Insanely close up. Oh, now like, we get this great segment. Oh, I love this. I love those photos. This. Like this. Now he's giving us all ammo. Look at this. Like, this is the thumbnail that he makes of me. Like this. Like, you can see the boogers in my nose. And you can see, like, oh. Hi. A decade of failure. Hi. How are you? Right? It's like, I get it. That's YouTube. That's the shtick of YouTube. That's what yeah. you do. Right? <laughs> People are like, Jesus, stop. Back up. <laughs> What? You don't like getting up close and personal with your favorite YouTuber? You don't like that hair. What's in my mouth? Ah. Uh, you like it? <laughs> All right, you guys. Now we're going to get the super cool interactive um, uh, measuring my fever segment because you earned it. This is not a pregnancy test. This is a um, calculate. What, what was too big for the shirt? The buttons are this even called? Off like bullets. Big T-shirt. Yo, the if he got a little bit closer and started screaming, the the breast would have just exploded. Look at this. See, like, oh, hi. No, this is like get away from me. Get the fuck out of here. Oh yeah, it's called the thermometer. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Anyways, I'm pressing the button now. People are like, Jesus, stop! Back up. There we go. It's up. <laughs> What? You don't like getting up close and personal with your family? No. You like the fuck hair. out of What's here. In my mouth? Ah. Oh my god, no. The, his teeth are something that I don't want to be discussing or looking at, especially enhanced. Do you like that? <laughs> they are good where they are, perfectly invisible in his mouth. We don't want to see it. Okay, let's relax for a second. Yeah, yeah let's, let's silly, relax. Okay? We're getting too excited. All right, everyone calm down. Everyone just relax. I got more to say, okay? What do you got to say? Okay. So, I, you know, I, again, continuing on with the video. Um, there's a few things about the video, this 20-minute video that Turkey Tom made. 
<laughs> He's watching a follow-up video about a video he never saw in the first place, by the way. It's fantastic. That sometimes in the video, he says things, and I'm like, wow, that really resonates. That sounds great. Mm -hmm. And then he'll say something that immediately, like, contradicts it. It makes it feel like almost like a red flag. And I'll, let me tell you. So he'll be like, you know, he said to, uh, he said to his audience, he wants to keep out of drama, and I respect that, and I get that. If he really is happy in his mental space where he is, oh yeah, he totally he's doing, then there's no reason, you know, for him to do to do anything further, you know. But then he'll say immediately after that, but you know, if he would just watch my two hour documentary and do a big live react to it, that would be good content for him. That would be good content for me because then sure. I can re react back to his. Yeah, what you want him to lie? Action, and then we could do more. And I was like, I'm listening to it. I'm yeah. like, so I guess. Because he knows how shit works, bro. He just knows how it works for everybody's benefit. Not just him. Because he got his video out. It was a good video. He got his views. Uh, look, okay. Cobra is on a different level. We're not even including him, like, in this conversation. Cobra has, like, generationally bad teeth. What it is, is there is now a community on YouTube, okay? It's, it's a vicious circle kind of a deal where someone says something and it could be, it could be innocuous. It could be like a little comment. Someone responds to it. Then someone responds back to it. Then the reaction community watches the, the statement, the response, the response of the response, and they create the next level of content out of that. And it just becomes this giant circle of spinning content of people all reacting to drama. Right. All right? Right. And you might think, well, that's a, that's a, that's, that's a, you that, that's always been a thing, by the way. I can think of like back in 2015, that was a thing. Remember, um, fuck, what was his name? Like Pyro Cynical and Leafy. That's what the, they did. It was always been a thing to have people shitting on each other and pulling out their dirty laundry and just talking shit and responding to each other's videos. Matter of fact, those videos were some of the most successful ones. To ecosystem right that's absolutely what it's all about because when you do that you could get you could get more outside eyes on you you could get some prominence you could get some people to maybe watch what you're doing right it's all good for everybody okay okay but you have to understand that's only looks like that to the people who are in the inside of it okay so i will say this directly to turkey tom and others who like this kind of content all right i understand there's nothing wrong with you liking that but you have to understand something i'm 41 now here's what he does he says there is nothing wrong with that remember because the whole point is how this type of content is wrong it's bad you're a bad person if you make it you're a bad person if you enjoy it and he's a good person because he has ethics and morals and he doesn't do it okay this is the the takeaway from the whole conversation that's about to happen but remember he starts all of this by saying, I don't think there's anything bad with this. This is not bad. If you're watching and making it, it's not bad. Years old, all right? So I've been through a hell of a lot more in my life than most people who are watching this content or even making it. Okay? That is false. I can tell you. I can tell you something. I'm, I'm sorry I'm interrupting him. I really want to get into this, but this shit fucking pissed me off a lot. His fake sense of wisdom that he somehow convinced himself that when you get to the age of 40 you are now wise you now have this knowledge that you need to to be condescending to other people because you know that w wisdom first of all he's had an extremely overprivileged lifestyle he's been throughout his 30s he's been super rich uh, to many people's standards he's, you know he's not like a m billionaire but you know what he never struggled in any fucking way and now he is is pretending like he's a completely different person and he, he's like made a complete turn as a better person and he has this ability to like grandstand on everybody else and tell them what to do because of this fake sense of wisdom that doesn't exist because wisdom comes with experience not with age and his experiences are eating burgers being drunk and playing mobile games this is not wisdom 
from the outside, from people who are not in that vortex, you see it as a spinning circle of content, and it's all healthy, and even though it's dramatic, it's all in good fun, and it's growth, and it's everyone getting views and money, right? For me, I'm outside of it, and I'm looking down on top of all of this, okay? Do you want to know what it looks like to me? It looks like a spinning toilet. It looks like okay. a toilet full of like shit. Like your neck seat? And someone hit the flush. And everyone's just spinning in a big circle in this endless spinning toilet that won't flush. It just keeps getting darker and browner and darker and browner as more people watch and contribute and comment and insult and extrapolate and make it worse and worse and worse. Do you get it? Okay, so remember there's nothing bad about it, but it's, it's just shit and it's a toilet with shit and everybody's covered in shit. But there's nothing bad about it, right? Because, bro, at least if you're going to be like this, at least have a fucking opinion. This whole, like, I hate to say this type of shit is so fucking fake. For me, when I started on YouTube. Oh, no. 15 years ago. All right. I By got the way, the thermometer segment is fucked up because the display glitched out. So I couldn't even see how much I got. So I will just assume I don't have it. Okay, let's move on. Or I can just assume I have extreme fever if you guys are going to be sympathetic and uh, send me charitable contributions. Whatever is gonna benefit me the most. And to YouTube. So right now, I, I feeling uh, like I'm dying. Because it was a hobby, it was something to do. I actually previously had been someone who was uh, traveled a lot and was actually more athletic, and I hurt my back. So I couldn't do that stuff anymore. So instead I decided- Massive to X. To console game. Nobody, nobody, ain't nobody, ain't nobody. Ain't nobody. Can confirm that he was fucking athletic and he was like traveling around and all this shit. They, they don't fucking exist. Get the fuck out of here. And I just started making you fuck yourself. silly commentary athletic. videos, to raging at games, drinking, getting shit faced, drunk, and just, you know, ranting at games. And they actually blew up wow. in popularity, right? And I didn't expect that, but it certainly wasn't anything that I took seriously. And then. Over the next three to four years, the fact that I took this ridiculous, silly attitude of nonchalantly making content, not being professional, and somehow blew up on YouTube, it's its a miracle. It's a lucky story. It's its a definitely right place, right time kind of a deal because a million other people have tried to do it after me and failed, but I somehow succeeded. Don't ask yeah, me why. Yeah, of course you did. Again, just a lucky dude, right? Well, because... <sighs> Like I said in the beginning, for, for every streamer that you see that is super successful, like Ninja or Aiden Ross, there's probably like 10,000 people that are barely trying to, to watching from above stream like in front of like 10 people. Blessings. Oh yeah, he was watching the, the toilet from above like God, because he's above that shit, you see? He just makes his own content that is much better than everybody else's content that gets the millions of views. Because, uh, you know, scat? Right. But... In all the years that I've made content, all right, 15 years, by the way, that I've been a YouTuber, and on, out of those 15, 13 years, this has been my job. Okay. You'd probably be hard-pressed to watch that content and look and say, oh, in that time frame, Phil's really done horrible, awful things that hurt others here and here and here and here and here and here. That's super specific, because I know a couple of people that can do that. Hey, big ups, uh, Mr. Extravagant. We're making it to that fun, dude. This is gonna buy me a nice fucking coffin. That is all, like... I, I wanna have, like, fake diamonds on my coffin. That's what I want. But those are expensive, you guys. Hint, hint. Here and here and here and here and here and here. In reality, it's more like Phil did something stupid to hurt himself. Right? Oh, really? Phil did this and that was dumb. He didn't change. He didn't adapt. He didn't do the right things early on to stay in with the times. Right? He idiotically did this, and he, he streamed for how many years and ignored his live audience. I mean, that's so boneheaded. I know that now. Yeah. I didn't understand that back then. You I didn't know? He was in his mid-30s. For years, and never spoke to my live <laughs> audience. What a fucking moron. Yeah, dude. what a right? fucking idiot, right? So I He's acting like he was 12 years old back then. This is the, the thing I find the most endearing about him. That to other people, their 30s is the time where, you know, you're at peak in your life. You're as mature as you're going to get. And then, from then on, you start getting some, some wisdom, you know, to become wise. But in your 30s, you gotta be mature. Your, your brain has finished developing, bro. And he's acting like he used to be a teenager back then. Meanwhile, he was raking up, like, over 100k a year from this shit. That. 
<clears throat> okay? But if you look at what I've made, the content that I've done, maybe you could argue early on when I first started making content, there were some really dumb things I said and did. Because at that point, I didn't understand the power of YouTube. I didn't get that when I said something on YouTube that I had a big audience that listened and actually took that as like truth because they looked up to me almost like an idol, which is crazy to think because I never thought of myself as anything important. I just thought I was just really? a nobody playing games. Oh, get around. the fuck out of here. He thought he was hot shit back then. The significant other CD for Duck Often. The significant other? You mean like the, the Limp Biscuit? album the significant other that's a shitty album i don't want that in my coffin i want the chocolate starfish what the fuck don't listen to that guy i having fun it was a miracle that anyone wanted to watch me or or anything like that <laughs> big old um, stress man yeah, a lot of the things that i said early on were very irresponsible no, uh, but yeah he he thought it was hot shit back in the day he was flexing on people calling him jealous remember this oh this idiot is so fucking jealous when he was responding to somebody about the, the Blip TV getting banned uh, racism situation, he thought he was a superstar back then. And he got himself some young pussy, you know, some fangirl pussy. Oh, he was living the life. It was so good. Nobody could tell him how to live. Ain't nobody gonna tell me how to live. Crazy, man. And now he's trying to say it like, oh, I, I just like, I was just doing my thing, you know. I was like humble and I'm not like a big deal, okay? Considered toxic and stuff like that. I made an active change in my life. Right. I'm a better person to stop making that kind of toxic content. And I feel like I am much better today than I was 15 years ago. And At what? Look, the content's like night and day from what it used to be. Why? Because it's more flashy? Because you, you bought a thing that can record your gameplay? So you don't have to do it with the camera. I will make sure hmm. Pasta does your eulogy and trashes women and says me a cat mob. Who? At it. He, the, the pastor, if you can get him to do my eulogy, that would be the fucking best thing. I want him, I want him all there. I want him to make the most, like, the completely off-color jokes in, uh, in comments. If we can do that, that would be amazing. Or boring. Yeah, but also doesn't hurt anyone. It's not hurt. And I, I, I want him to do the whole thing. In the in the Hogan voice. Let me tell you something, brother. When I hold it, let me tell you something, bro brother. We're gathered here today to honor this this little brother. Okay, right. I every night can go to sleep and say I'm very drunk to today. I loved the game I played. I interacted with my audience. We had great conversation. Hey, I made money. I supported my family, and I go to sleep soundly. Is that what happened yesterday? Let's vibe check him on this because I don't trust him for some reason. Let's see what he was thinking before he went to bed yesterday. Members goal, we had a tips goal, nothing. And I was like, what on earth happened? Like, it's like mm. a night and day attitude. Wow. I played the game on Friday and it's the same game. You wow. know, I don't know. I played this You game. can see it in his eyes that he's going to go to bed happy and, and a single tear is going to roll down his face because he made it. He's truly going to realize he achieved it. He made it. He is a success. Uh, so yeah, since I vibe checked him, he's, uh, he didn't pass the vibe check. He's full of shit on this one. As opposed to, oh, well, what did I do today? Well, someone had a really bad day. This drama happened and they did something stupid. So All I right. made a, a video about it and I just basically, you know, ripped them a new asshole. Yeah. For two hours. Hell yeah. And then everyone came to my stream. We all made fun of them. Yeah. It was great. Cause everyone yeah. People love doing that. Hell yeah. I want this to happen more often. I laughed at them and their Like stop embarrassing yourself on the internet. Is it that hard? Is it really that much of a fucking problem not to put your personal embarrassments on the internet? Like, come on. And I made a bunch of money. Yeah, even better. There. Between the styles of content, you understand? And again, if you're in the YouTube vortex All right. of that spinning content you're in the toilet cycle, maybe you think there's nothing wrong with that. But for people outside of it, we look into it and we're like, okay. So what happens then, though? What happens? People think you're a bad person on the internet? That's all? People think you're an asshole on the internet? I... I... What? I think you should cut the, the virtue signaling off, DSP. Because, like, being a good person on the internet is basically just being, like, the nicest guy in prison. It doesn't really make your stay better. It doesn't really... Nobody respects you for it. Some people pretend to respect you. You can virtue signal all you want so people can think you're even better of a person. But it, it doesn't really matter. Because, like, there's people that we can all agree are assholes on the internet that make a shit ton of money. 
Logan Paul comes to mind. Dude is literally in the WWE. He's champion. So obviously you're not getting paid on you're not being successful based on how good of a person you are. You're being successful based on how entertaining your shit is if you're an entertainer. Eh, it's not that difficult. What the hell? Yeah. You think that's acceptable? People behave like that? Yeah. Why would you want to be a part of that shit? Why, Why not? LTG does your eulogy. His life served zero. <laughs> <laughs> LTG is another good one. LTG is lit. I would have. I would prefer that one. Ever want to get sucked into? Or maybe we can have it hosting like like it's the Oscars. So my funeral is gonna be like the Oscars. We got LTG and Eric Miller in character as Hogan doing the whole thing. There you go. Okay. Um, and then I'm, I, I want DSP, because of course he's going to outlive me. I want him to lower my coffin into the grave so he can, he can let me down one final time. Allow me to give, tell you a story. And I have never told this story publicly before. I will wow. tell a, a story to everyone right what now. What a leaked story. This actually, is very appropriate to the situation. All right. Last year. Well, get a load of this, you guys. This is going to be crazy. Drama. With the Lol Cow podcast. Okay, I was friendly with Boogie. Over the years, we had had a few conversations behind the scenes, uh, back and forth. Uh, not long conversations, very short ones, brief ones, a little, little, you know, how you doing, hope you're doing all right, or whatever, back and forth, like, like Twitter DMs and shit like that, right? <laughs> okay, and one of the conversations that we had had was about particularly working together on something, um... And at this point, there was a situation where we were talking early on about this Lol Cow podcast and the possibility and stuff like that, right? And I'm going to paraphrase it, all right? I'm not going to sit here and read the direct DMs I had with Boogie. This was over a year ago. This, so again, this was before any of the drama of this year or anything like that. Um, <clears throat> but basically, the conversation we had, and this, I really feel, this is the difference between myself and the other people who people consider lol cows, all right? When you look at the Wings of Redemptions, when you look at the Boogies, and you look at these people, all right? Here's the difference between me and them, all right? And this is what you're going to understand. It's a lot different. As we're having this conversation, we're talking about the possibility of working with Keemstar on a podcast or whatever, right? So basically, Boogie said something to the effect... And by the way, I think this, ad, this stream is about to play ads. No, I'm telling a story. I'm going to skip the ads, okay? Um... Basically, the way he equated it... By the way, weird. before we get into this, because this is probably going to be a very funny story, because all of them are, I'm going to show you a life hack. So there are these things, you see, that you can spray in your nose, and then you don't have to snort. And you, there is no snort at all. It's a miracle, really. He probably doesn't know they exist, but... I don't know. I do. I didn't bring this up. He did. Boogie actually said something to the effect of the way he sees YouTube or, or how YouTube is, is kind of like Walmart, all right? So let's think about that. It's kind of like Walmart. Well, Walmart, everyone knows, is a pretty bad business, right? Walmart comes into town with the lowest prices, the lowest cost for, for their products. Walmart is actually an excellent business because they provide a lot of value to people that can't afford expensive products and when a hey, big ups uh based boglamite for 12 months dude big ups it's a lot of time it comes to town they sweep in and they take over they could cause all the small businesses in a town to go completely out of business all right they sadly underpay and mistreat their employees he it's a giant thing of flonase when he was at bed bath and beyond what it was closing but it broke any complaints for 15 minutes about it recently. Yeah, the, the, the thing is with these, uh, you get a little bit of like, a, I don't know how to call it, a little bit of a, not a sour, but kind of a bad taste down your throat when you, when you spray it on. So maybe he just prefers the taste of snot to the taste of medicine. Well documented. Because he's used to it. They do this. He's been eating his snot for 40 years. Okay. And the employees are overworked, underpaid, not trained, right? They'll have someone who's a door greeter, who's an elderly person. This is their job. This is great. They have a living. Oh, you're fired. We don't need you anymore. What? Why? What did I do? You didn't do anything wrong. We just don't want to pay you anymore. Bye. Right? This is how they are. This is their company. And there's countless stories of 
Walmart being a bad company in this regard. Now, Walmart is a fine company. Bro, what laws. the fuck? They... This all started from something that Boogie told him. And now he's like just talking about Walmart. Do everything law by Oh my him. god, this dude sucks. But man, when they come in, they can completely wipe clean a small town. And now the whole town's focused on the Walmart, right? Now, you could argue <clears throat> plot positives and negatives about that, right? So basically, Boogie said this to me. Again, I'm paraphrasing. And he said something like, you know, when you look at people like working with Keemstar or working with other people on YouTube, this drama content on YouTube, he says, you, I, I, you know, you look at it like, like Walmart. Like, you know Walmart has a ton of blood on their hands, but you still shop there. <laughs> Right? Kimstar has blood on his hands. Because it benefits you. It's the best yeah. benefit to you and your family. The lowest <laughs> prices, right? It's oh, man. I can see the... Oh, no. I don't want this segment. Chat, I'm turning it off. This segment sucks. Because I can see exactly where it's going. And it's one, like, major grandstanding segment. You see, I'm not like them. You get decent quality products, the lowest prices. Everyone still shops there. Despite I hate the fact this. You know, this is not a great company. You still kind of just do it. You bite the bullet, right? Wrong. And he said that to me. Because, again, we were having a conversation about the possibility of working together and stuff like that. <laughs> I said, Boogie. This, I mean, both of them are fucking, like, just the... Oh, man, I wish they could have a show together. Boogie and DSP. <laughs> Why is this not happening? I understand something. Because, like, Boogie also has to, uh, always has to one-up everybody on how much of a victim he is. And if there's one guy you can't one-up on victimhood, it's Dark Side fucking Phil. Oh, you had it bad? He had it worse. You, you, got, you got somebody assault you in the street? He got somebody assaulting him every day. Somebody stole your money? Well, they stole his whole bank. You can't one-up with him. I never have. In my entire life, I've I've shopped at Walmart once. Okay. And it was at the height of the popularity of Street Fighter 4. They were the only <laughs> store that had Street Fighter 4 joysticks. And at that time, I was buying and modding <laughs> joysticks. So well, I imagine this discussion. Hey, Phil, YouTube is kind of like Walmart because this and this and this. And then Phil's like, well, I don't, I don't even go to Walmart. Like, what are we talking about? On the internet as a project. So I had to buy it from them. They were oh, the these dudes, man. I them. hate them. And by the way, the one experience I had all of these, I, I, I just want to cyber bully all of these people until they're fucking gone. I, I can't I stand this man, dude. Had, <laughs> I was supposed to go and pick up these joysticks. Oh, man. Just bring them right home. I pre-ordered them online. They were there supposedly in stock. Just go pay. Pick and it now, up. like. I go there and I spent over two dude, hours at Walmart. Now we're talking about the one time he went to Walmart. Because somebody compared something else to Walmart. And now we're just, we're getting a Walmart story. To pick up these joysticks because they were understaffed. The person who works the pickup counter was not there that day. They had no idea where they were. They just didn't show up for work. None of the management actually knew how to run the pickup counter. They had employees running around the store like chickens. This metaphor to speak insanity. But it got more insane because now we're just talking about Walmart. Their heads cut off. No one knew anything. It took the employee two hours as they scoured the warehouse okay. to find the joysticks and finally give them to me. It would take DSP four hours if he was working there. If DSP was working at Walmart, he would get shot by somebody, like unironically. He's going to piss somebody off the second day and they're just going to shoot him. So I could go home. Okay. Legitimately. What a fucking entitled piece of shit. But he's acting like he has all this wisdom about life. So here's the deal. I don't like Walmart because I know that they're a scumbag company. I know that they mistreat their employees. I know that they don't pay enough. I know that they ruin the towns they move into. They have absolutely no regard for anything around them. All they care about is that they're making money. That's it. They don't give two shits. And when a Walmart moves in, that town now is beholden to Walmart. What do you do? All our other businesses went out of business because they can't compete with the prices of Walmart. Now we got to shop at Walmart and there's nothing we can do about it. So now it's a Walmart town, right? So, according to his logic, I guess, if Keemstar is Walmart and the, the LolCow podcast is Walmart, then DSP is going to go out of business because people w won't care about his quality gameplays. And they will go to the LolCow podcast to listen to the drama. Is that what he's supposed to make the point? That's YouTube. 
in a nutshell. That's literally YouTube. And that's this lol cow culture on what? YouTube. What you found is you found people who are so desperate, right? They need to make money in some way. They can't just operate anymore and have a life on YouTube for some reason. Maybe, they, you know, their popularity is waned. Maybe they just made a ton of mistakes or whatever. And the only way that they can get attention on YouTube. What about if maybe they're just a piece of shit person? What if, what if that's the case? I mean, Daniel Larson is a piece of shit. I would say LTG is a piece of shit. That's why he's a lol cow, because he has no self-awareness. He's toxic as fuck. What about... I mean, Wings, of course. Boogie, of course. But, like, what if, what if they're actually not very good? And cyberbullying them is okay. What if that? Huh? Let's make that case. Chat, start researching. Uh, topic of the report is why cyberbullying is good. The rise... In lol cow culture, okay? Uh, make me uh, 10,000 words on that by the end of the week. Creating drama. So what they do is they create the drama. They know the drama's toxic. They know that it's harmful. They know that it's not good. But that's the only way that they can get by. So they sit there and they create drama. And then everyone else sits outside and says, Ha! Now we capitalize. And we jump on this. And we make two-hour documentaries. And we do pop- wait, wait, wait. Who makes the drama, though? Those people that are desperate to still make a living on the internet? Uh, I th it's like he's explaining something he doesn't even understand. Podcast about them. And we slam them. And we rip them a new butthole. And we constantly make fun of them. And we meme on them. And we milk them. Milk them. Okay. I want you to think about that statement. Because- this is coming full circle now. As I was watching Turkey Tom's 20-minute response video about me, okay? He distinctly said two things in the video, all right? That resonated with me overnight as I slept on it. And the first he said was, I wish he would watch my documentary so he could react to it. I could react to his reaction. And then he would come on the Lol Cow podcast, or the Lol Cast, or whatever the fuck it's even called. I don't know, because they had to change the name because they're so stupid. They made a show that they couldn't even use the name of, and now they had to change yeah. it. Yeah, they, they were actually that stupid. What it's actually called. But the thing is, DSP should research that a little bit, and then dunk on him. If he wants to be in a beef like that, go all out. Go in the beef. Called anymore. Um, but this is like a half-assed, half-measured response. That is like, it shows that he's too much of a pussy to actually engage with those people because he's terrified of them. But he just can't help himself and be quiet about it and handle his stuff in private like a actual person. He gotta do the lol cow thing. And that's why he is so fucking great. Talking all that bullshit! So literally, the reason he wants me to watch his documentary is for more content. For himself do you understand he admits it right there in the video he says it and then he says at the end of the video well you know unless <laughs> did he said the reason <laughs> hold on for himself um so literally the reason he oh yeah the reason <laughs> it's it, it is the season of the reason everybody and then he says at the end of the video well you know unless phil decides to actually do this interview with me. I think I'm done milking him. Yeah. Bro, he's so hurt. It hurts him like deep inside. That the reason people are watching him. Is to extract entertainment in the way it's not supposed to be there. And he doesn't know how to stop it. You know, that's the best thing about lol cows. They don't know how to stop people from milking him. Every time they think they do. People still keep milking him even more. Remember, like, the debunk video he did was to, like, to clear his public image, and it completely failed to the point where now we can reference it. Hey, by the way, if you want a, a nice piece of lore, go check out the debunk stream. That shit is fun. Because there was people debunking that. It's great. But essentially, this is what makes him such a great lol cow, is that not only is he in denial about the fact that he's a lol cow, him being in denial, it's is the type of milk that you're looking for from somebody in him. His deludedness. Delusion? The, 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 the thing. Milking him. Yes. I want you to Look again, think about that. And of course, we got to take everything literally because it's dark side, Phil. You say 
Like, if you say something, he's gonna take it extremely literally. You, you remember that time somebody called him a dork? And he had to explain, yeah, well, you actually called me a whale penis. I don't know why you would call me, like, a big penis, but you did. So, ha ha ha. Alright, and then I started to read into what people were saying about Tom and or other things going on. And I started reading messages. And basically, here's the information that I got overnight. Are you aware that Turkey Tom is part of this lol cow culture and lol cow cast? Yeah, you dumb motherfucker. He is on the fucking panel, you fucking subhuman moron. I didn't know that. Hey, you didn't know that, of course. I wasn't- I don't watch it, I'm not paying oh, attention right? to it. Oh, yeah, he's, he's called one of the lol cow farmers. Yeah, literally! Literally! Him and Mudahar <laughs> and others- Like, he's literally in cahoots with Keemstar. And Mudahar, who is another guy who has a very educated opinion of DSP. And I, I would love to see him interact with DSP, but we're not going to get to see that happen. They're showing up to every show, and they're not highlighted like lol cows. They're highlighted like, like big shots, right? Yeah. They come to the show. That's what they do. In order to basically degrade the subjects of the show, which... At this point, I guess is Boogie and and Wings and whoever this other person is who was my replacement because I didn't do the show. Even though you can't replace someone who never agreed to do the show. <laughs> you see, in a way, in a way, he wants to flex that he denied it, but then he has to say, "Well, I actually didn't. I never even agreed to do it, so they can't be replacing me." But I, it, it is my replacement. We, we don't, if we gotta be honest, it's my replacement. Okay, but. And replace the unreplaceable, the guy who didn't even want to be there. Um, but whoever awesome. they are, I guess. Right? I guess. They're basically, it's like a shooting gallery. Like, here's the people who are supposed to be the hosts. Okay. In reality, they're just the targets of ridicule and toxic behavior. It, again, they're just people shooting down at them. Okay. That's the show. That's yeah. That's what the show is. It's literally the Lol Cow Live podcast. It literally, the entire purpose of it existing is capitalizing on the fact that Wings and Boogie are pretty deplorable people and generally disliked on the internet. And people like to watch them when they're miserable so they can get a laugh out of it because they're trash. And Turkey Tom is one of these people. Yeah. Essentially, oh yeah, you see, we're, we're better than them, so it's for, time for us to shoot down at them and basically insult them and do this kind of fucked up stuff to them constantly. All right? And but also he wants to have a an opinion, but he hasn't actually watched the podcast, so he's just assuming everything that happens. I I don't really have an idea what the farmers are doing on that podcast because I didn't watch that episode. I didn't even watch the second episode too. I'm pretty bored with that show. For what I'm not under, and again, I'm not watching this show. I have nothing to do with it. I want nothing to do with it. But people contact me. People actually contacted me this week and said, "Phil, you have no idea." You made the absolutely, positively, 100% correct decision to not work with Keemstar and be on that show. You predicted it completely correctly. <laughs> Everybody could have predicted it like that. That people that are known for not being reliable would fuck up. And going into business with them is a volatile endeavor that you never know how it's going to end. Everybody fucking knew that. Come on, dude. This was not a show where it was going to be the host talking about topics, intelligent, yeah? respectfully. It's literally... Yeah, what the fuck? What, what did you expect? Literally, the ridicule those people show. Yeah, the, the Lol Cow podcast is not supposed to be a gathering of intellectuals and discussing trending topics in the world of finance, education, and maybe technology. No, it's just two fat guys and another guy trying to piss them off. That's the whole point. That's the whole point. It's just gross. It's toxic. It's insulting. From what I'm going to understand, they're being degraded to the point where I guess Boogie was forced to get on his hands and knees and apologize to Keemstar because he went on someone else's show <laughs> and there was drama and he's like, you should have done that. I wish DSP would do that, dude. I wish Keemstar had this level of control over him where he could just tell him, Phil, Get on your fucking hands and knees, apologize. And he would be like, I'm sorry, Keemstar, I'm sorry. Our show to make us money, now apologize. <laughs> oh, man. Because you you're so stupid. 
but here's the thing, right? Here's the galaxy brain concept behind this whole thing. Everybody involved in this looks stupid. Outside of probably the farmers, because they're supposed to be the normal guys. Everybody else looks stupid. The difference is, this guy gets a thousand views per video at most, and they just got a couple hundred thousand. So as far as he's concerned, he's the loser here, because they're going ahead with a concept they had in mind, and so far it's been a success, if anything, at least financially. So you're safe to say that in this case, even though he was right and he has the moral high ground, whatever the fuck that means, the moral high ground don't cost shit on the internet. And he did it apparently. Right? Now again, I didn't see any of this. This is people telling me this. And I'm like, can you imagine? That's what people want to be involved in? You think this is valid content on yeah, YouTube? Yeah, why not? To literally just be a bullying group. I mean, it all should right. really be called We Bully People Podcast. That's all it is. The bull that should uh that being said should be called this. If if we were to think of a name, it, it should be that. Because obviously, why wouldn't we? We bully we bully Phil Podcast, the WBP podcast. Pretty pretty dope, huh? Bullying podcast. We just bully I think that would be like a if if I had complete like creative control, I would do it. Fuck it, why not? Big ups uh, Ricky Spanglish for the nine months, dude. I would do it. I would just be like the the bullying Phil podcast. Well all day, like it's a fucking schoolyard of people beating down on people. That's what the show is. Right? So, thank God I'm not involved. Yeah, because I told you guys, I knew. I'm not stupid. I'm wise to this shit. I, when you tell me that the name of the show is The Lol Cow Show. Every time somebody tells me they're not stupid, chances are they are stupid. Or The Lol Cow Podcast. There's no respect. There's no intention okay. of actually helping people. Why would you? This is not a charity podcast. It's literally the opposite. It's supposed to take advantage of their weaknesses. That's the whole concept they agreed to. Or doing something positive. That's a toxic show. What do you think? Like, who would fucking watch the show the way the DSP had it in mind, right? If it's this... DSP doesn't understand the simple thing we do as a society is keeping each other in check. And not not necessarily this. He just doesn't understand that, that entertainment based on somebody else's failure or misfortunes or misery is absolutely valid. And you shouldn't really think about the ethical repercussions of it because it doesn't fucking matter. It doesn't mean anything. Um, so yeah, if, if the show was the way he thinks it would have been, it would be basically the the pity party show where everybody would gather so Wings and Boogie could tell their wh whatever is on their mind at this moment that they're feeling a victim about. And then people would feel bad for him. So it would just be a big like circle jerk podcast, basically. It's the point. From the day it was incepted, I knew that was the point, you know? That's why I want nothing to do with it. I'm so... here, And again, here's the difference. Boogie and Wings, they shop at Walmart, right? Okay. Anything to get ahead, anything to make a buck, anything to fucking get them to a position where they're, they're doing something because they need that, right? I don't need that. He doesn't need that. He doesn't need that. Oh. In that regard, I really like the character. This guy is fucking great. He doesn't need it, dude. 50k men to get bullied is worth to anyone not dumb. Uh, yeah? Sure, why not? 50k, that's a lot of money, dude. Monday, we were questioning. I had, I was feeling good about it. The game, it's exactly... Maybe I should have... Well, you get my point. He's begging in this clip. But yeah, he doesn't need it. I'm, I'm successful. I have a business. He has a business. I'm good. He's successful. Watch my content. They enjoy my content. They support my content. I do positive content all day. I don't do this lol cow shit. Positive People content. People try to pull me into their spinning vortex of drama right. shit. So, but I stay out of it. So why would I... Bro, he stay out of it. By the way, we got like a 15-minute segment talking about him considering not staying out of it. Matter of fact, doing the opposite by having an interview with one of the guys who literally works for fucking Keemstar. We just got off this segment. It's in this video. Want to be involved in a show like that. I'd be a moron, right? And if anything, this is right now representative. When you, if you're here every day on my show and you're watching my content and you're enjoying everything that I'm doing, is this not evidence that you don't have to be sucked into a toxic vortex of crap on YouTube? 
to be successful. Uh, you're not successful, Phil. Is not evidence that you can stand alone and stand apart from all that crap, and you can still be happy? Okay, no, you can be happy anything. You could be in a dungeon in the Middle East getting tortured every day and be happy. Because happiness is a state of mind. Happiness is doesn't reflect anything. You, you're not instantly happy if you buy a fucking PlayStation or something. Happiness is just a, a feeling. A feeling can come from a thousand different places. You don't need to be successful or considered to be successful. You don't need to be rich. You don't need to be um, married. You don't need anything to be happy as long as you can convince yourself to be happy. Or you f get the feeling of happiness. Right? I'm not in a desperate situation where not yet. I have to milk a situation. Because someone made a two-hour document. Um, he milked being sick for two months? No, not not two months. Excuse me. A month. Almost almost uh, exactly a month. It's going to be a month next week. And he's still going to be using it as a, an excuse. That is milking a situation out of desperation because he was set back a lot from being sick. That that sounds like it to me. Sounds like he was both desperate and milking it. Documentary about me. I don't have to now react to it to get some kind of boost in view. No, you don't have to. So I can make money today. But everybody else will, and they will make the money. They will get the views because people reacted to this and they got the views. And I'm not even talking about detractors because, of course, they would react to this because it's fun and relevant. There's people like Papa Gut. Um, this guy, you've probably seen him. He's like um, a bald guy with a beard. Uh, he reacted to it. There we go. He got like 7,000 views. Maybe he got some fucking content for his Twitch stream, whatever. And other people reacted to this. Except the guy who's supposed to react to this and actually get a, a kickstart or, you know, some kind of benefit. I can still do my content that I absolutely love making and still make a living. Okay. I don't have to degrade myself for how long? To the level of crap that I feel is very harmful. And it's okay if people disagree because obviously there's a huge group of people out there that disagree and think that this is fine. Good for you. Well, there's the, some of us who are older and more mature for that shit. Oh, okay. Care for that. I so basically saying, if you disagree with me, you are immature. I certainly don't. I never wanted to be involved with that level of shit. My involvement with Boogie and Wings was going to be a positive podcast. Oh, like what? You have gay sex? We interact, we have a good topic. The, the gay sex podcast, that would have been super entertaining. But you can't publish the video on uh, on YouTube, should have been an OnlyFans. About DSP has to finally fulfill his dream and just be with a man. Come on, we all know he wants it. Things, maybe maybe Boogie him. can dress up as Hogan? Who, who fucking knows? Our lives, our personal situations, you can talk about current events in the news. Oh, so pity party, basically. I do this every day on my own show. Do you think it would be that hard to do it with two other people who we just talk? Actually, yeah. I think I think is very hard to do. Um, considering you're going to have people there who might not completely agree with you. And you cannot ban them in real time. It would be an easy show to do. And by the way, it wouldn't be toxic. It would be fun to do. And everyone else out there could react to the show and do their own toxic shit about it. And I'm sure they would. But at least the core show would be great. And it would be good for our, our viewer bases and our communities really? and our audiences. That's what I wanted to do. But... Apparently, this, this, is more important than that, right? <laughs> Taking this big paycheck to be on this toxic ass show where it's a bunch of bullies and a shooting gallery is more important than actually doing something positive for the internet. What is positive? Your audience. You know Maybe I mean? this is positive. Who fucking cares? Who fucking cares about this moral bullshit? Give me a fucking break. You tell me. That anyone in their right this whole fucking virtue signaling nonsense is he's like really pushing it because he used to be the opposite of this it's like it's like the idubs flip of the coin and instantly just like one day i'm i'm becoming a good guy now you guys would think that that's okay i'm sorry i'm good I'm now who's involved in this lol cow culture shit you got to get yourself fucking reassessed at a fucking professional Oh, you gotta, you gotta get your shit renovated, bro. If if anybody else gotta get reassessed, DSP gotta get completely reinstalled. You gotta get a fresh OS on on that shit. You to go to a medical professional, a psychiatrist. Tell them you sit on the internet and all you do is you you bully people or you laugh at other people bullying people. Okay. And you you watch degrading content about people. Okay. Who you think are pathetic. Yes. And this is your actual. 
source of enjoyment. Okay. Tell me that that's that. What, tell me what a medical professional would say in response to that. I don't know. Let's uh, let's answer the question with a question. What if Dark Side Phil went to a medical professional and told him that his pastime activity and also a crippling addiction of his is playing Candy Crush with wrestlers who are naked, and you get to spend money that would otherwise go to his family on that video game? I wonder what they would say. And I wonder if then they would allow him to give mental health advice to other people. Hmm. I would love to hear it. I would love to hear it too. Tabloids suddenly don't exist. Well. Oh yeah, Tabloids been doing that shit since, like, whatever the fuck. Since they exist. Celebrities have always been getting that treatment. And nowadays more than ever. Because there's a difference between, oh, there's some celebrity gossip. Or, oh no, my entire source of entertainment oh you see now now you see we do the dsp thing we jump onto the extreme now it's your entire source of entertainment now you are framed in this specific way that make it seem like all you do is this you see how we made a narrative how we built the straw man is actually when other people but it, of course it doesn't work because this dude is profoundly stupid he can't even do it half right harmed or we we bully people we degrade them because i mean obviously if if all you do all day is just watch detractor stuff you're probably pretty fucking retarded but i don't trust most people or let's say like make up a percentage let's say 90 percent of people do that because that shit's probably really fucking bad for you and also probably very repetitive Duh. all right so like then you gotta go around and watch this segment being reacted to by like 10 different people and at the end of the day, it's just this segment. 20-minute video from Turkey Tom. It's my only content of his I've ever watched. And I find the guy's well-spoken. He's charismatic. He's intelligent. He can make a point well. I disagree with him on the point of the fact that he thinks that I've had 10 years of failure. And that's okay. We can have that subjective disagreement and agree to disagree. But the moment that he says, Oh, you see, I just wish he would react to the, the documentary because that would give me more content. Then I could talk about it on the LOLcast, or he can come on the podcast, and then we have even more content to make. And then I could milk him further, but for now I'm done milking him, all right? Okay. That's... You can, you can use a different term. If this term makes him so butthurt, you can just say anything else. Making a video on him. Okay, we can just phrase it like that. Does that make it okay? Fucking disgusting. That's not even like a joke. That's not funny. That's not... That's fucking vile, all right? That's toxic. That's harmful. That's fucked up. That kind of... And the fact that you can just nonchalantly say something like that. Oh, yeah, I'm done milking someone. Yeah. I want you to know how disgusting that sounds. You're milking a human. And not, not literally. Okay? I mean, people can actually discern between literally and figuratively. Not even for sus. You're not milking them for milk. You're milking them for... Yo, he said sus today he said sus you know how disgusting that sounds shut the fuck up say sus human they sus okay? not even for sus you know milk he said sus what massive pop the crowd goes wild he says sus oh man i'm fucking i'm gonna get like brain damage from this one hey something like that oh yeah i'm done milking someone today I want you to know how disgusting that sounds. Wait, why Why does my slow down doesn't work anymore? What happened to YouTube? What happened to the game I love? YouTube is ruined. Can't use ad block. You can't slow down the fucking video. Can't hear the guy say sus. You're milking a human. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Why is it so fucking funny, man? Not even for sus. Sus! You're milking them for milk. You're milking them for profits, for money. What if What if I was literally milking him? If I actually wanted to, like, squeeze on his, uh, on his snort sacks until delicious goo comes out from his nose, would that be okay if it was from sustenance? <laughs> if all I drank all day was, was snort? And every time you do that, you hurt them. But you don't care. Wait, what? There's no, no, there's no reason, no, no quality, you know, no, no moral compass here. Who cares, right? 
you're dehumanizing the person. You're yeah. You're literally categorizing them. Start acting like a person, you piece of shit. As a as an animal. You are. Not a human. Yes. You're, you've degraded them to the point. That's that that's actually the only reason I don't like completely a log out for DSP and get like super mad at the internet is because I I see him as like actually subhuman. I don't look at him as a real person because otherwise I would get fucking pissed off that a person like this can exist, go through life completely unbothered, and then still complain like he's the biggest fucking drama queen of all time. They're just cattle, all right? He absolutely That's is cattle. Really fucked up. It is. It's completely messed up. It. I can't believe people think that's okay, right? When you're watching that lol cow show and you're seeing people who are supposed to be, oh, we're better than them and we're just going to bully them. What makes you better than them? Exactly. What makes you better than them? Because you're toxic? Because you're okay with bullying people on the internet? You have no morals or values? No. That makes you better than them? Yeah. Because you have an association with someone like Keemstar who's pretty much the worst of the worst when it comes to that kind of behavior? Okay. I mean, what makes you think, Turkey Tom, what makes you think you're better than me? That you milk me for content, right? And Dude. DSP can rip someone a new butt or shove excrement up someone, but milking someone is apparently too. Oh, hard. yeah, that, right? Ripping someone uh, a new ass? Milking Phil starts at the third button from the top. Third button from the top? You mean like the X? You know, you got minimize, maximize, and close. Is that what you mean? That's the third button from the top? I guess so. And the funny part. Or maybe I just don't get it. I don't know, man. I'm sick. That's why. All that is, it could easily be reciprocated. Someone could do that to Tom. Someone could do that to Mudahar. Someone could do this. They have done it to Keemstar, actually. Yeah. And Keemstar ain't happy about it. Remember the H3H3 H3, uh, beef that he had? And when he yeah, got I remember uh, iDubs dropped the content cop on him back when iDubs had a spine. Roasted on his fucking oh, balls. Do you he think Phil has an internal monologue? Um, I, I wouldn't, I, I would more likely say schizophrenia. But that's kind of like it, right? It's just a bunch of people instead of just your internal he was monologue. So upset that someone would criticize him the same way that he's criticized everybody else on the internet, right? It could easily be flipped. But the thing is, you'll look for the easy targets, right? If you already find someone like a boogie or a wings or a DSP, and you find someone who's already the subject of ridicule. Oh, the third button from the top on the shirt, dude. Oh my god, I get it. Okay them well no one's gonna care That's that when they flip oh my god i got it now right. better than boogie and vingo not a groom uh not not a bit uh, you sound like nico belich from gta no i don't just listening anyways i know this is late but when he says so many people tell me these things like who the voices in your head that you hurt ego keeps hatching a new voice fake fan. Uh, I'm not, I'm not surprised people are, are telling him this because there are plenty of people trying to help him out and plenty of people trying to gaslight him even further. So I'm not surprised this is happening, really. Right now, and also, I, I don't sound like Nico Bellic. He has a way more distinct accent that I'm trying to conceal. So there you go. You got debunked. I got here and I made an hour roast of Turkey Tom. No one would care. Because I'm the lol cow. They could. Uh, if if he had some, like, really huge hit piece material on Turkey Tom, people would care if he made a video. By the way, look at this. This look is iconic. What the fuck is this face? It's like he's just disconnected. Like, controller disconnected type face. It's, it's like you're you're in a, in a coma for a second type face. The thing is, I have no interest in that. I have no interest in researching the guy finding out what failures he's had. Oh, but you he I could do it. He just doesn't want to because he, he got the morals. Care about what his interests are, what his mistakes are. And I don't care to make a toxic video about him to make money or profit. That's not me. You know what okay. I want to do? I want to sit here with my audience. Big. And I want to have fun. And I want to relax. And I want to enjoy video games, which is the whole point of why I started making content 15 years ago. Oh, you, you got a job so you can relax and play video games? That sounds good. I should do that too. And I want that to continue. I want that positivity and that fun and that safe, interesting environment to continue. So that way, every day when I turn my stream off, I said, I just had a good day. We enjoyed games. We had fun conversation. I made a living. Everyone's happy. No one's hurt. 
Until you can do that. Oh my god. All right. And now he's calling him a failure. Every moment. Bro, get this morality bullshit out of your ass. You're fucked. That you're gonna say 10 years of failure, dark side Phil. Alert. Phil, all of you three are groomers. No. There you go. I'm happy and successful being who I am. Nope. And I don't hurt anyone. Doesn't when matter. I my content. Do you understand? That's success. The failure is if the only way that you can be successful in life is to step on others, to bully others, to push them down under your heel. So, success is whatever I decide and whatever I feel. And failure is being successful, but not under the terms that I decide. You see, he, he created a new definition of a failure that includes being successful. What the fuck? Bro. Oh my God. Heel of your boot. And you have absolutely no conscience to tell you that that's I don't bad. give a fuck, dude. If that's the situation you're in and that's your level of success, I want nothing to do with your level of success. And oh, I yeah. the best. You, you never ahead. will. You do what you want. You enjoy your bully show and you beat up people for a living on the internet. Hell yeah. I'm going to issue a word of warning. All right. A very harsh word of warning. Oh, wow. I understand this is not coming. Oh, he's going to say, dude, he's going to say one day somebody's going to do that to you. And it's not going to be me, but it's going to be someone. That's what he's going to say. A thousand percent. Because I'm well adjusted and I'm a good person and I feel that ultimately I'm happy where I am. All right. I want all these people who feel like they're safe in their vortex of drama to be very careful. Okay. I really feel like people need to start wising up. All right. Or and here's why I say this because we've already seen situations where people who've been bullied have gone crazy. We've seen this, it's documented. Okay. And it's only a matter of time that if you think you feel safe doing this kind of content, this messed up, toxic, really harmful content, and you think that it's good, right? Oh, this is fine because everyone makes out. It's money. It's just Walmart. Okay, right? get That's to the Walmart, point, bro. Okay? It's just a matter of time. Until? until someone snaps. Okay. And I'm actually worried that one of these days, and it, I'm not saying it's going to be Tom. I'm not saying it's going to be Keemstar. I'm not saying who it's going to be. Someone's going to make a documentary about someone. It's going to be the wrong person. And that person's gonna fucking lose it, man. What is he gonna do though? And that's gonna be, you know, and whether it's self harm or harm of others or whatever I'm saying, you know, that's dangerous shit. You're treading, you're fucking with people's minds, you're fucking with people's brains and emotions of people who probably already aren't well adjusted, especially some of these stories that you've told and shit. You know what I'm saying? No, this is dangerous shit you're dealing with. But what is he talking about? What is he actually talking about? You can't make a video calling out somebody on the internet because they might go crazy? But by that logic, you can't do anything because you never know what's going to make somebody go crazy. You can't do anything. You should always be paranoid that somebody at some point can go crazy. And you should say nothing and do nothing and be a bitch, always. Because somebody can have a problem with it or be upset about it or, or go crazy, whatever the fuck that means. And... I think what it is, is people are in this culture where they just think everything's fine, everything's fair, everything's safe, everything's okay, because it's all accepted on YouTube, you're right? All right, listen, it's legal, right? It's legal, you can do it, but you gotta be careful. But what are you, know? you talking about? Between I made a documentary, and it was even-handed and fair, or I made a documentary. Oh my and God. Response to it, so that I can milk them for content and dehumanize them constantly endlessly okay so all get all over on it. it's like what do you not see the difference no between that no and something's gonna it's gonna come to a oh point. man it really is gonna come to a point where someone's gonna snap and, and what does that mean me. i'm happy i'm good man somebody gonna kill himself because they released a video about him on the internet is that what's gonna happen <laughs> like i said i'm good okay I'm i have a great family life thing. and then he's like the happiest man ever but you are not happy because by his definition of failure that actually includes being successful you are a failure so there you go right i've had times in my is life is there anything class is there anything unclear about what this elderly gentleman just said where things were awful things are good you know i just gotta stick my stay my course and not make the same mistakes right. that i made in the past and, and just keep going. Like what? Going. Saying slurs? Things will, will go well for me. Uh, 
in the future, right? But I, you know, after getting all this feedback and everything and seriously like weighing this situation of how it's going, I'm like, I didn't know anything about this lol cow show or anything. I had no idea. You're a fucking idiot, dude. I had an idea of what it was going to be. That's why I wanted no, nothing to do with it. But when people started telling me what it was, I was like, Actually, I was wrong on my suggestion. I thought he was going to bring it up. You know, someday somebody's going to make a video about you. And we're going to see how good it is when you're getting milk. Not getting it? Like, do they not understand what they're doing? Like, you are trying to normalize fucked up bullying behavior. Like what? Say that's fine. That's but bro, what he fails to realize is that if we're talking about Wings and Boogie, they agreed to be on that show. Fully knowing what the show is going to be like. So why are you trying to virtue signal and dick ride a bunch of fat fucking retards on the internet? Is what I'm trying to understand. What is the problem here? That they fucking agreed to get bullied for some money? Fuck them. Who fucking cares? Why do we matter so much? It's okay to beat up people for profit. Is he beating them up? Like actually physically? And they didn't agree? I think when, when they were fighting, they agreed to it. They got paid. They went on a vacation to fucking uh, London. That's not okay. Well, what are you going to do about it? Case, is it ever okay? All right? And it doesn't matter if it's illegal and people get away with it. It's still wrong. All right? Okay. Now, what are you going to do about I grew it? I up Roman Catholic. I was raised. Right. Of course. Him being raised, coming out of a Roman Catholic vagina means that he is morally superior. Even though if his... Actions do not reflect any of those morals. Just the fact that he went to Catholic school makes him a good person because that's how it works, of course. He has Roman Catholic values that somehow include never giving to charity and all these other shit he does, such as calling people offensive names on a daily basis. Hold a certain kind of moral values or whatever. But to me, when you tell me that, you know what I'm saying? That's, and they, again, they think they're protected. They're not at any moment. And I've listened. I learned this the hard way, right? You think that you're protected in life and you think that everything's okay. And in a moment's notice, something could flip on its head. Like right? what? One day you're going to be doing a documentary on Joe Blow from Hoboken, New Jersey, and how he did something stupid on the internet. And you don't know how he's going to react to it. All right. And okay. I mean, you got to be so fucking careful, man. So what is he going to do? Break the law? Get himself arrested? Like, what is this? Bro. I cannot fucking believe this. Let's play some pop-ups, man. Big Roach model philosophy equals everyone more successful than me is objectively evil. Uh, no, it's subjective. You can disagree, but if you disagree, you're stupid. The fragility of packing peanuts. Oh, you got that right. I, I didn't see any of this as a threat. Those shirt buttons are holding on to dear life. Oh, man. He's not even wearing an undershirt, is he? That pesky... D-A-R-K-S-H-O-O-T-E-R-P-H-I-L-L-F-G Uh, yeah, he said Dark Shooter Phil. I don't know why it got spelled out. Maybe because it's all Dave's caps. Coming for you. He's coming, you piece of shit motherfucker. Whatever the fuck he said. You motherfucking piece of shit cocksucker. Phil doesn't that was understand it. the deal with being a public figure. He wants all the benefits, none of the consequences. That's, that's always been him. Always. OMG, he is actually pearl clutching LMAO. It's actually like some completely baseless and unfounded virtue signaling from a guy who... Catholic but won't ever forgive someone else. Uh, well, he claims he does, but you, you know how that is. It's completely like baseless and unfounded virtue signaling for absolutely no reason. You could have just said, I'm not interested in doing drama shit. That's all you had to do. And then they would stop hounding him. But now they're going to keep counting him because he keeps giving them hour-long segments. And this is going to happen again a week from now, two weeks from now, three weeks from now. Because he just can't keep his fucking mouth shut. This is wild that you to think. And the thing, I, I hope that Turkey Tom understands when I say all this, I'm actually look, trying to look out for his best interests. Oh, right? yes. I think and now we get another fucking stupid DSP gimmick. I'm just trying to look out for your best interest person that I don't like very much that is trying to exploit me. I'm I'm actually the nice guy here. He might have just as well said that. I'm you listen to me. I'm I'm actually the nice guy, so listen. This guy's charismatic. I think he's intelligent. I think he can make good content. I think what he should do right now is immediately quit that show. This very moment that he hears this, he should quit the fucking Lal Cow show and try to do something better for himself. Because I know he can.
Because I know that he's smart. And I know that he's intelligent. I know he's charismatic. I know he can make good content that's not harmful. He has to stop with that. It's not even the documentary about me I have the problem with. It's all this other shit that he's doing. You know what I'm saying? That's fucked up. And you've got to separate yourself in life. You, at some point in life, you've got to take a stand for what you believe in. What do you believe in? And you've got to understand that it's all about who you associate with as well. And that's just not the right path to go down where he's going. So... You know, bro, he think he thinks he's so mature. He's given advice to people that are way ahead of him. When you think that it's okay, oh to my say god, to milk someone or you yes. milk someone like a dehumanized animal. Yeah, I think that's fine. That's so there's nothing left. Acceptable because I got views and money off. And dude, the the cool thing is like I'm looking forward to all the instances that people are gonna milk DSP about stuff, like you know. Uh, we're during his downfall right now, but it's gonna get worse. At some point, he's gonna have issues paying his bills. People gonna milk the shit out of that. People gonna m milk the shit out of when he has to return to Connecticut. People gonna milk the shit out of everything. And I take great joy that I might have the possibility to actually be there. Fuck him. Uh, that's where I draw the line. That's where I draw the line. I'm not gonna have anything to do with Turkey Tom. I'm not going to have anything to do with Mudahar. I'm not going to have anything to do with Keemstar. I'm not going to have anything to do with Boogie. I'm not going to have anything to do with Wings of Redemption. Does Phil know TT has outed PDF files? Oh. Um, well, he he doesn't know. He thinks that... He's stuck on term milking due to move criticisms. Oh, you know what? That that might be likely. Uh, the, the whole... I, I think he believes people like Turkey Tom, Mudahar... They just go after a good boyfriend and milk the pre-stream big cast. I don't know, dude. I'm considering it. I'm considering it. But anyways, I think um he has this opinion of Turkey Tom that he preys on people that are just down on their luck. Not just like straight up bad people or assholes. Just people that are just, you know, they're trying to make it by. They're good people just hanging on to life and somebody just cyberbullying them actively. That's not the case. All of these people are pieces of shit. It, for the most part, I, I'm not going to say all of them because I haven't seen all of Turkey Tom's videos. I'm not going to have anything to do with anyone associated with that kind of fucking behavior on the internet. That is the complete antithesis of what I stand for. On wow. The so if that means that I just sit here and I play games with my audience as small as it is. When are you going to do that? I'm here forever. That's fine. I'm happy with that. I don't need toxic popularity for making bad choices, you know, and, and being milked. I can't believe that you would even say that in a video. Yeah. And think that's, oh, yeah. Because, bro, I, I know he's super shocked because he takes himself super seriously as a businessman and this, like, innovator, pioneer, all this shit. Nobody else does. Everybody else looks at, at him, at most, as a shitty person. And... At least as some kind of subhuman entity that you can get enjoyment out of their suffering. Nobody fucking takes them that seriously. Maybe there's like 20 people at most on this planet that take them that seriously. Everybody else just looks at them as a joke, rightfully so. I'm milking people today. Like, huh? Like, what? That's, you think that's fine? To talk like that. Yeah. That's not fine. That's really messed up. Like, I mean it. Go talk to a psychiatrist and tell them you taught, you milked someone today. And let's see how wow. they respond to what you said. I should, I should go tell them about all the shit the DSP has done. Like, dude, what did you just say? That would be their reaction, yeah. Like, huh? But this is it. It's been normalized on YouTube. This behavior has been normalized by people like Keemstar. So it's acceptable now. No, it's not. It's really not. You have to understand. Normal people think this is endlessly fucked up. Bro, you don't know what normal people are thinking because you're not one of them. And it's really cute that you think you are, but you're not one of them. First of all, this dude doesn't even fucking go outside. His social connections are people in his chat that half of them don't even fucking like him. And they pretend that they do. He doesn't go outside to sh social events. He doesn't communicate with other streamers to know what is actually fucking normal. He is not one to talk about this shit. They don't agree with this culture, this spinning toilet culture of toxic shit. It's awful. Did nobody is fucking ask him if if they agree with it or not? The the problem is they can't do anything about it. It's gonna exist and it's self-sustaining. So nobody cares about what 
quote unquote normal people think about YouTube drama. Nobody fucking cares about it. The the quicker, the absolute quicker you get out of this toxic vortex, the better. Especially for someone like Turkey Tom, who seems like he's got his head on his shoulders, he's smart, he's intelligent, he could make great content, but he has to get out of the toxic vortex now before you're stuck in it forever. Because guess what? You'll be the next lol cow. Wow. You'll be the next one. Oh, that, okay, okay. I was, I was early with my uh, prediction. It actually happened. So I take it back. It's a W. I'm right. 10 years down the line, you're desperate for content. Yeah. And what are you going to do to get it? Well, all you ever did was make fun of people. No one cares about you anymore. Now what are you supposed to do, right? Wow, is he talking about himself? You're the next one on the list, man. So, no, I'm not doing no goddamn interview with him or anyone else involved with any of that toxic shit. And that's my final answer. Oh, and we take a victorious sip. Triumphant. Huge W. Okay. <clears throat> all right, guys, I'm done. I got it off my and chest. And he's done. Got he answer. got it all his, off his chest. Which makes me think, after giving so much advice about people going and having a, a meeting with a, a licensed medical practitioner, and him recently having so many pre-streams where he had to get things off his chest, he might start thinking, why doesn't this asshole piece of shit actually just go to therapy instead of bothering everybody else with what is on his fucking chest? That is very interesting. And now we can go back to normality around here. Now we can go back to normality. Absolutely, positively know that these people are going to talk about it and their content or whatever, but that's the last thing they're going to get out of me. You know? It's just stupid. It, it's pointless. It's dumb. It's, it's so different from anything that I would ever want to be dealing with. Okay, we it's get it. Sad. It really is sad. You know? But, hey, that's what YouTube has become, right? This toxic place. And I refuse to engage with that. So, hope you respect my decision. And, again, I literally don't have any problems with Turkey Tom or his documentary. I haven't seen it. But I certainly have problems with behavior like that, right? Like, that's really endlessly fucked. So, I'm not going to... Okay, but what do you know what the behavior is? Because I thought, for the most part, the documentary is pretty just straightforward. There's no angle to it. Because, like, if you watch the Ex Mortis documentary, A, A Beggar's Journey, you can see Ex Mortis doesn't like the guy. So, it's it's for the trolls, right? But that thing is for the normies, and it's pretty, like, well-balanced. It's not, like, really spiteful in any kind of way. But, there we go. Okay. Okay. All right. Oh, yeah, I guess I might do the pre-stream, too. Why not? American Manga Undertaker re-upping their membership. You haven't watched the documentary. Why would you want to speak with him? If we want you to speak with him, you're gonna are you gonna watch the documentary? The the point was that he was supposed to um he wanted to talk to me about my history as a content creator and stuff like that. Which oh, I'm and this is my least favorite gimmick about the whole pre-stream is the moment he's done talking about something, somebody asks him a question that has everything to do with what he just talked about, and he needs to recap it all. Because he just spent an hour talking himself in circles, redefining what success means, redefining what failure means, talking about how happy he is and how shit everybody else is. And now we gotta go back and actually start from the beginning because we forgot what this was all about. He's interested in talking about. Why wouldn't I want to talk about 15 years of content creation, how I've changed and evolved over time, how YouTube has changed over time, how my community you know because you're irrelevant and nobody cares about that angle because it's not a success story it's a failure story why do i want to have somebody do an interview with me who's a fucking failure enjoys what i do but has to deal with this harassment from this crazy group of fucking haters and shit you know what i mean like it's that's an interesting conversation to me that still hasn't happened when have i ever had that conversation with a single person the side scrollers could have had that conversation with me they weren't interested they were interested in just regurgitating the same exact bullshit really? that my haters said. So, literally, it was the most boring five-hour interview you could have. Really? Because they didn't actually get into anything interesting at all. Instead, they just asked dumb questions. So, I mean, that was their chance, right? <sighs> so, <laughs> that's what I mean. Like, that would be a great interview. It doesn't have to be about me watching a documentary at all. You know? Uh, GDTV, we up this membership. It says... Wow. Keep but, uh, again... I thought the fucking 
the the I thought the documentary not the documentary the interview went as it was supposed to. Why is it now he's trying to make it seem like it was always just a a trick? It was always a scam. Like this is why you can't take this guy's word on anything because every day it's different depending on the angle he wants to push. One day the narrative is going to be that he's supposed to be super successful and super happy with his life. The other day is supposed to be that he's the biggest victim on the platform. Everybody mistreating him, but he deserves their success. A few days ago. What's sad is that I would say that's slanderous. You can't say that. But I wouldn't, I would actually believe that he said it too. You know what I'm saying? Like, I would believe that. I don't know if he did. I don't watch the show. I never will. But I would believe it. He's done it before with other people. Okay. You know who I'm talking about. Ooh. So, Erica? That's not surprising to me that he would. Oh, you know who I'm talking by the about. Way, why do you think? Yeah, he told him to kill himself. So what? That and does that, right? Why do you think that? Because guess what? Because, like, people acting like telling somebody to kill himself on the internet is just like magic. Like, I'm making a spell on them. It's not just words coming out of my mouth. It's like, I'm, I'm putting magic on them that is going to make them kill themselves. He gets away with it, right? He's, he got away with it before, so why not do it again? Until there's consequences for actions, okay. the actions will continue. What, it, what should the consequence be for Keemstar? Let's be Judge Burnell. What should the consequence be for telling somebody to kill himself on the internet? Should, should he be flailed? In the in the town square should we lobotomize him maybe that that's gonna be the final solution we just get rid of that brain what should we do and if YouTube allows this kind of consequences content, the actions will continue the bullying the insane amounts of mistreatment of people okay the drama the toxic shit will continue that's good puts is it entertaining on. what are we doing why are we promoting and allowing this why are we allowing monetization that's the other thing why would you ever ever allow monetization of that content that content should be immediately demonetized no monetization whatsoever possible and any channel that has that kind of bullying behavior should completely be removed from the youtube partner program should that shouldn't be allowed what are you crazy an advertiser wants to have their product represented on a toxic bullying show sure huh? but again we're, you know we'll be the ones who have to have to suffer because they'll be the example of why YouTube gets demonetized and loses advertisers, but it'll be the common person who makes normal content that'll suffer because we'll also lose. But it's like, yeah, is DSP supposed to run ads on content where he's calling people uh, mouth droolers and he's telling them that if they went away, no nobody would care? Is that supposed to be also okay? Because like, let's let's be real. If we're talking about demonetizing toxic shit. Nobody would have ads outside of like the content farms who intentionally make super sanitized videos. Right? It's pretty messed up, right? And the thing is that people would still make toxic content. They would just make it in a roundabout way. Like when saying curse words in videos, you still know exactly what they said. They just fucking muted it. There you go. Okay. Let's continue. Uh, let's see here. <clears throat> I love how you're willing to go all the way and stay up for the pre stream. Reminds me how Cart goes all the way to Meerkat Ball, a Meerkat Ball, a Meerkat Ball. Yeah, because, um, I guess, I mean, I'll do it. Why, why not? We made it this far. Likely a bunch of troll tips today, so I'm probably going to skip a bunch of these. Oh, wow. Uh, very nice. Number one. Oh, what a what a productive discussion on cyberbullying. So is is I think the bottom line is cyberbullying is good, and um, who cares? Who cares? To be honest. No, when you got a bunch of dollar tips coming in randomly during my my discussion of something important, that it's going to be a bunch of idiots. Troll tip number three. <laughs> there you go. And troll tip number four. There you go. So here's the funny part too. Because idiotic people will say something. Oh, I didn't. I misclicked. What are they going to say? I wonder. Idiotic people will say something. Like, for example, they'll say this. Um, oh, well, you see. You see, Phil, well, you didn't you just milk Turkey Tom? Right? No. 
Not really. You just, milk, you just had you just did a whole podcast on the topic, so you milked him for content. I didn't milk him for content. If I didn't do this show, I had plenty of other things to talk about. We got a whole suggestion box of positive. Oh yeah, I, actually he did. Because this takes what seventy percent of his podcast is talking specifically about Turkey Tom. Things for my viewers. We've been waiting to respond to. Yeah. Them, and I barely get to it. But right? you didn't do that, and you did this instead. So yes, they it it is milking. That's fine have to do this you can milk each other everybody milks everybody on the internet just put your fucking morals aside i kind of feel this was a wasted show yeah by the way how many contributions exactly have come in during my show today we had one membership okay four troll dollar tips that'll likely be charged back and not you know what are you talking about what is this point supposed to be just because i milk somebody and didn't make a lot of money that i decide is a lot of money it was not a milking thing People don't what? come to my content for toxic stuff and then contribute. Oh, really? Then why do you have so much toxic stuff in your content? They don't, because that's not what I'm about. When I waste time talking on shit like this, this actually hurts the business more than helps. Do you understand? If I just sit here and I'm talking about my content, gaming, stuff like that, that's what people like. That's why people come to this channel. They don't come here to watch. They want to know if they want to see drama. They go to one of the restreamers. They go to one of my hate watchers. Okay. He literally misrepresents me every day. Uh huh. They watch their shit. Good. Go over there. Stay the fuck off of my channel. Right. I don't benefit from that. You can't say I milked Turkey Tom. I didn't get anything out of it. I literally got no benefit from. Isn't that? Doesn't that just mean that you're bad at milking him? I mean, that's that's what it sounds like to me. This besides now I've gotten my my perspective out there. People understand it. They can agree or disagree. And but he's the he's the right. arbiter on whether or not you got something out of it, right? So if you got something out of it, he determines it enough for a milking. It's labeled as a milking. Otherwise, it's something else. You can you can play around with the semantics. So there you go. And now I'm done with it. And now I can move on. I have to talk about it again because I'm done with this topic. It's a done deal for me, man. So there you go. Um. You know, no, there's, it's, it's, there's the difference is Turkey Tom or one of any of these kind of YouTube drama content creators, right, makes that content and they benefit from it hugely because the person who's the bully always makes out, right? The bull, oh yeah, although I don't get that. I thought the whole point was that we have this anti-bullying movement and we have all this stuff where society's supposed to be. What changing. is that thing? That's not allowed in schools anymore. No, that that's yeah. always, it's still allowed in schools. Everybody gets bull bullied at school nowadays. It's even more prevalent than it ever used to be because now you take that shit online as well. YouTube, it's more rampant than ever. It's like the opposite on the internet. Real life is changing. Okay. The internet isn't. The internet's going the other no, way. No, real life is not changing. Bullying is still pretty crazy. You tell me. Real life is changing. How did he fucking know that? How do you see that? Anyway. I don't um, know. Continuing on. I received a $25 tip from One Minute Man. Okay. Okay. Well, hey. There you go. It worked. He goes, video... Oh, yeah. One Minute Man is now incentivized to leave a message because he is actually treated like royalty. Now he's basically the co-host. About you you know bad slanderous videos get millions of views you have you already have peak exposure on youtube from those videos why don't you ask him to record questions and submit them to you you'll answer them on your channel why give this guy millions more views for nothing because who the fuck does he think he is the fucking royal family does he think he's like the president he's just dark side phil a worthless piece of shit why would anybody fucking go through all the bother to give him shitty ass questions? And here's the thing. All right. Because here, I can tell you one minute, man. I can tell you exactly how the hell he'll respond. Oh, well, no one watches your channel. That's what he'll say. No, it's not that no one watches. It's that my positive viewing audience watch, right? You have, he has a broad audience of a million viewers who are there for toxic negative shit. Because every video he puts out is toxic negative shit. Do you see? Literally every video he puts out is toxic and negative. So to him, that's the audience. People aren't going to Tricky Tom's channel to find out what good thing happened today. <laughs> right? Yeah. Who what? Right? Fucking kills, so, dude. That's the point. 
yes, I get millions of views of exposure on his channel, but none of it benefits me. Yeah. He thinks it does. It doesn't. Like, he, oh, I wish he would react to my documentary, and then we could have content back and forth. Oh, my but God. And this is like, nothing. this is like we continuing on this segment, no. dude. At all. Zero. There's nothing <sighs> by me from drama. Nothing. I've seen it time and time again. I've had viral tweets. I had tweets that went viral on Twitter two years ago during the Oscar. Oh my God, it's so embarrassing. He still keeps bringing up tweets that went viral. Tweets go viral every second. And nobody ever gets anything out of him because it's a fucking tweet. You just scroll through it. You see if you find it funny, you like it, and you move on. Slapped Chris Rock. I had the most viral tweet of the entire Oscars. Guess how many new viewers it brought to my content? Zero. And that was a positive tweet. And people thought I got like thousands of new followers on Twitter for it. Zero effect on my business. No one cares. No one cares about this toxic shit and virality on, on the internet. Nobody gives a fuck. They care about the content. So if people right. for toxic content, they go to Turkey Tom. They don't go to Turkey Tom, watch the toxic video about Dark Side Phil, and then have it spill over to positivity. Maybe two people. Right? I, I'll tell you, I got a bunch of negative shit. I got a bunch of negative people leaving me negative comments after that documentary. Nothing positive. Yeah. You see? Like That's what? So. I don't know. No, he just expects to be glazed day and night. And, and to have other people treat him the way he wants to be treated on his own stream. Which is completely unreasonable. You, you, don't, you don't have what it takes, DSP. You're just washed up. You should know your place. And this, all this shit is happening because he doesn't know his place. And his place is on the bottom. ...to take his questions, answer them legitimately, and put them on my channel, no one would care. Because no one on my channel cares anyway. People on this channel just want to watch gaming content. That's the whole point of the channel. It's called DSP Gaming. <laughs> right? It's not DSP Drama. It's not DSP Responds. It's DSP Gaming. Right? I have a DSP React channel. No one cares about it there either. <laughs> you know? I, I know. I've tried. You know, it's stupidity. But that's the thing. These idiots uh, think that somehow this benefits me. It does not benefit me at all. Oh, it's free exposure. It's bad exposure. There's not such things. Not all exposure is good exposure. That's completely false. You know? The only people for whom all exposure is good exposure is people who are absolutely desperate and have nothing positive to bring. So therefore, any attention they get is attention that's good. Oh, just wait and see, Phil. You haven't got there. Not yet. You're going to get there. You know? Oh, he's you know, going to get there. On that show. Notice I'm not on that show? For good reason. I don't have to be. I don't want to be. Get it? Got it? Good. Okay. Blue Kid did a super chat. Oh, this last part was so fucking obnoxious. It's like, even if, if you kind of uh, agree with him, this like condescending part in the end is just so fucking annoying. He is late by like 20, 25 minutes, by the way. Maybe even a half an hour. It's been like half an hour since he started his broadcast. What the fuck is up with him? Hey all, I'm almost ready to go. Just gonna use the restroom and then we can begin. This happened three minutes ago, so I guess he still he still needs help putting up his pants. I guess so. Chat, it's no different from celebrity roasts. People like seeing controversial people get racked. No, it's much back. different from You're celebrity right. roasts. Celebrity roasts are done with the permission of the celebrity. Yeah, and the Lol Cow podcast is done with the permission of the two fat retards that the show is about. Next. You know? Did you know that? When they set up those events or whatever, they're set up with the permission of the celebrity. The celebrity says, go roast me and I'll roast you back. It'll be beneficial for everyone, correct? It's not someone did a two-hour, you know, awful roast on someone and then they're forced to respond because someone already did toxic stuff about them for two hours. It's different. Oh my I, I've God. Said it, I'll say it again. The most insufferable no fucking one, guy, dude. No one at all on the internet who has ever made a video about me has contacted me first and said, I would like your input in my video. I would like to have you as part of this event or documentary to offset the toxic stuff people say about you so it's a fair and balanced documentary. That would not be a fair and balanced documentary because they're literally taking your word for it. That wouldn't be fair and balanced in the slightest. Instead, they make the content first, then they expect me to- If anything, they have to- they have to go out of their way not to interact with them so they can be unbiased. ...react to it so they get more free content. 
Do you understand the difference? That's the difference. So, I understand what you're saying, except that's not an equivalent situation. There you go. At all. Oh, by the way, I'm not a big celebrity. I'm not someone who benefits from being razzed or lampooned at all. Well. I've had 10 plus years of that. Really, I have. I've had over 10 years of toxic behavior thrown my way. I don't benefit from it. At this point, you know, I have a hard time even getting someone to legitimately check out my stuff because all they hear is the toxic shit. And then I'm expected to defend myself after the fact, and I never do. I just say, I don't care, and I move on. Uh-huh. Right? You continue not caring by constantly talking about it. That's And that's, that's correct. Drew Corporation says- That's fucking great, point. dude. You put in all this work in the last hour to respond. And right. And right. now nobody's going to give a fuck about it. Now, now Snort Hogan is going to get all the views, you fucking dumbass. Well, DSP got a thousand views, and I am watching his video. So there you go. I guess he won. But before he actually for real, really this time goes live, let's read some comments. Then we got, first off, Crusade11722. Gotta love the free publicity. We roll on, Phil. And Phil is spelled with a uh, small caps. Turkey Tom is a young man. And young men think that failure of others is funny. Giving up is the only real failure. And you're still in the game. Giving it your all. There we go. This one is fucking good. Just found your channel and I'm so confused. There is an absolute mountain of content. Why are you so obsessed with these detractors? Are they that bad? Why not just focus on being entertaining and making good quality content? I can't be asked to watch so much content every day. You seem chill, but damn, this is a lot. This is both like a, a dick sucking comment and at the same time is like, wow, you're putting out a lot of shit. I even I can't handle it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, the replies we got nothing special. We got OP Boone, uh, head of the, the dick slurping and, and nut sucking community uh, in DSP's community. And he says he does typically ignore the troll element. That's like it's it's like fucking DSP is running this as a sock account. It's actually fucking crazy. He does typically ignore the troll element, but sometimes it can build up to a boiling point where he has no choice but to address it, unfortunately. Uh, and then we got this guy. Sean's View Entertainment, right? And he might sound familiar because uh, he has a check mark, which means he's uh, successful, objectively. Um, and I realized I actually know about this guy. So what he says in this comment section is quote-unquote, uh, incredible. This was one of those comments for the engagement purposes. Because nothing in this video that's hour and 32 minutes long is incredible in any way, shape, or form. But then I open his channel and I'm like, wow, this is a maniac. This dude loves wrestling. And he loves breaking news. Matter of fact, this channel looks incredibly fragile because everything is fucking breaking. And he has the best intro I have ever seen of all time. Let's enjoy. Subscribe, click the bell, and turn on all notifications. The one-stop destination for all WWE and AEW. Sean's View Entertainment. And welcome to the morning version of Sean's View Entertainment. Around the clock, we don't stop. And Around the clock, you never stop. You keep that Millie Rock. Anyways, um, what else do we have here? Oh, yeah. We got OP Boone again with uh, another high quality dick slurping and nut inducing comment. Uh, sad to see Tom turned out to be yet another drama hound, but glad you found out before and not after getting roped into another interview. And notice how all of these fucking comments sound exactly like Phil. They're using the same terms too. Roped in, drama hound. Here we got the phrase that is a signature DSP phrase. Ignore the troll element. Address it, unfortunately. You see this like literally just brainwashed vision. Fantastic. Uh, speaking of brainwashed and lobotomized and perhaps not even human at all, uh, we got to enjoy the Dark Side Phil podcast. There we go. It's time to dehumanize Phil some more, everybody. Let's, uh, let's get on the train. It was selling his ass for profit. 
Oh, this is gonna be real good, you guys. Good morning, everyone. And what, what the, the fuck show. is this shirt? <laughs> this is the level one podcast for. Oh Tuesday, man, 24, zip this so shit up. What the fuck? Three. It is my final consecutive streaming day of the week. It's like somebody right. gifted him this shirt. Short week this week. It's so and off. I'm here six days in a row. Good reason that I'm not here is because I have a holiday this week. Wow, that's crazy. Is it's it Burnell uh, Day? American Thanksgiving this Thursday. And the truth is I'm not All right. taking time off for the holiday. I will be here just in a limited capacity. I won't be here for a full day of streaming. Jasper, please stop attacking my wires. Jasper, stop attacking the wires. Stop. Hey, now he's gonna bite me. Jasper, you're gonna behave. <laughs> he's gonna start. Gonna start <laughs> this is he so fun, as as dude. Start talking, Immediately as we start, yeah. So Immediately start as we start, we're already you know. distracted. That's you're fantastic. I want more of this segment. All right. Anyway. um. Yeah, I will be here on Thanksgiving just for a half a day, you know, a more chill stream day. Uh, but because Thanksgiving's Thursday, typically my day off is Wednesday. Well, excuse me, typically my day off is Thursday. Uh, I'm not going to have that day off because I also have to do things like run errands, you know, like buy groceries and stuff. And you're not going to do that on Thanksgiving. So I had to shift my whole schedule around this week. Really? Because um, it's just one day different? What did I say? What did I say? Oh, my God. What a hard yeah, life know. he's living. Behave. Here. Truly, truly difficult. Okay. Yeesh. Um, it's it's tough to run a show when I'm distracted. We gotta try this again. <laughs> you know what? Let's just start over. Here we go. Oh, we're gonna play the. In <laughs> oh man, this guy is such a fucking joke. Oh, so despicable. <laughs> Oh my god. Why did I agree to doing this? I should have ended this earlier. Okay, everyone. Welcome to the Level 1 Podcast. Today is Tuesday, the 21st of November 20... Deja vu. November 21st, 2023. I'm DSP, and I welcome you here to the show. I hope that you're all in good spirits for this holiday week, because this is a shorter streaming week for me, because Thursday is American Thanksgiving. Now, I will be here on American Thanksgiving in a limited capacity, meaning about a half a day. However, uh... Truth be told, my whole schedule this week is in disarray. Why? My normal day off is Thursday, uh, but I have to do stuff on my day off, like grocery shopping and the like, and I'm not going to do that on Thanksgiving, so I had to change the schedule around. So today is actually my final consecutive streaming day of the week, which is fine. we got a lot of stuff going on. Uh, fun gameplay today, good stuff, and I'm actually excited because coming up later in the week, we got the big marathon on Friday, the Ad Apocalypse 2.0. We're going to talk all about that. Well, he's having two marathons stream. this week, um, basically. Two specials, let's I'd say, like Thursday and Friday. Stuff's going Legitimately, like, like back-to-back -back back marathon. Uh, particularly today, nothing too crazy uh, in the realm of news, but I'm, I'm not shocked. It's not like you would have been expecting tons of news or anything today. There's one minor thing to talk about. That good I think thing, um, a good laugh about, but outside of that, good thing like, he's saying it as American Thanksgiving because when I do the restream of that, when when I do the restream of the American Thanksgiving, it's gonna be a Bulgarian Thanksgiving. Oh, you guys don't know that is so fun to really address or talk about today, which is a good way to end the week, in my opinion. <clears throat> it also looks like yeah, I did Jasper will be the next puff. Jasper uh, is gonna be the next. Which I, which um, I thought I had. I don't know, president. I, I had forgotten to, so hold on one second. Let me just do this on Hopefully. the fly. God damn it. Come on, bro. What are you typing? What What is happening right now? And of course, you get to look at the lobotomized face. There. He didn't shave because why would he fucking now shave? It's not like he takes himself seriously. Yeah, he just wants you to take day. him seriously. I'm running all around. I get a million emails. I get a million updates. I got paid by YouTube, so I'm running around trying to pay all my bills and everything. He's running around oh, paying his bills? It, just, it gets me so like... What? Not necessarily frazzled, but there's just so much going on in a short period of time, and I have to do it all and do it right or else... None of this makes any any yeah, level of probably. sense, honestly. He's uh, running around paying his bills at home. Ten minutes late for the podcast. Uh, he was paying bills, just trying to get a bunch of stuff done, and uh, you know, having a rambunctious cat on the floor. 
doesn't help that much either. So, but I am here and I am ready and it is time to get started. So where do we begin? I would say what we should do, let's recap what's been going on with all the current playthroughs. Oh my that. God, no. Give you a cumulative update on all of that. We'll talk about the schedule because this week is cumulative fun. fucking update. Why? Thanksgiving Day. We've got the Adpocalypse Marathon this Friday. Which no, is it's just and then we self promotion back. segments right. over and over again. Starting Saturday, okay? Let's do so some drama. Call, call somebody a mouth game. drooler. Okay. So first of all, let's talk about the lingering playthrough. Oh, and now he started so playing the kick drums with his legs. Look at this shit. He, he's going crazy. October. And the more I played it, the less interest he's happy though. in it. Why? Because it plays exactly like every other Bethesda game with almost no variation. The graphics aren't even good on the Xbox Series X. They have tons of issues with, uh, you know, the frame rate and everything. The graphics Pretty aren't dead. even good on anything. Meh. The exploration is okay, but there's too much looting. And half the stuff you get in the game is completely purposeless stuff. Like, there's nothing to do with any of the items you pick up. They just sit around in your inventory. And... Truth be told, um, there are good parts of the game. Like, I think that there were some story beats and story elements that were great. But once you hit a certain part of the story, the entire story falls flat on its own face. And it's because it's a, it's a plot line that's been used in a million other things in the last five years. So it's not original whatsoever. It kind of ruins the entire experience of everything you've done in the game so far. It's pretty bad writing. And I can't believe they thought that this plot line was a good idea for a video game. It's not. It's totally the opposite because it makes you feel like you wasted all your time in the game. So, oh, dude, I was fucking muted. I left the playthrough on hold for a month, and I was so like, I was going else. hard on Starfield, and I was showing this, and I'm like, DSV got a good take. God damn it! And being sick didn't help. Sent me back so far. So I finally went back to it this week, and fuck off. You know, you admittedly, I, I knew it wasn't going to get a lot of attention. It wasn't going to get a lot of engagement or support. No one really cares about this game anymore. Even people who are fans of it actually don't like it anymore. So the thing is, a lot of people are giving me shit and they're like, why are you playing it? Why am I playing it? Because I put 40 hours into it. Now we're 42 hours into it. <clears throat> Do you really think I should just skip the end and not see how it ends? The thing is, I do feel like I have an air of professionalism around what I do. I've been doing this for 15 years. When you put that much time into a game, you at least want to see how it ends, especially because I know I'm near the end. I'm only a few hours away from the end of the game. In addition, this is one of the most hyped and anticipated games of the year. I want to see how it ends, even if it's bad. And then on top of all of Spoilers, that... Spoilers, it's bad. You know, but but the good on thing on is, it only gets good on your 46th playthrough. Four, I'm going to be doing my meaning you guys are going to nominate what you thought were your favorite games and playthroughs that i did this year and vote on it so it's not necessarily what's the best game it's what was the most fun playthrough to watch right that's cool because i like having that level of interactivity where you guys can uh actually uh you know vote and be a part of the the event right so if i don't beat the game i won't know where to rank it in that stuff so that's why we're doing it all right and it was funny because Sunday night when I played it, everyone was like, oh my God, and they're groaning. But you know what? Admittedly, I had a good time Sunday night. And the reason being, it was all story elements. It was answering some questions, lingering questions you had from the game. Truth is, the, the answers weren't satisfying because it was bad This writing. podcast isn't but satisfying because it's bad writing. You know, at least you have the answers for the things you were wondering the whole game. So, I'm being told... One to two more streams of time being be told. Done. Maybe only one, but maybe two tops. <laughs> this um, this should always so sound gonna, shady as fuck when he says right? I'm being told. Um <clears throat> other stuff that's ongoing. Street Fighter Six. Obviously Street Fighter Six for me. And the rocking is the crazy today too. Year, the best fighting game in many, many years. Um after not playing it for a month because I was busy with all the new releases and quite frankly the sickness sent me back as well. Bringing it back into the rotation this week is very fun. I'm glad that I did. Uh, I am playing with a new character, Dalsim. I'd only use. Yeah, Dalsim it really does sound like reports are coming in. You know, my sources are telling me that I have yeah, only two streams left of Starfield. When I was doing those viewer nights over the course of the summer, so I never really used him in any real major attempt uh, to actually like learn the character or play him at any kind of a competitive level. Well, now I am. 
I've actually uh, absorbed a lot of tech from watching a few of the top Dalzims. And after two sessions, two hours each, I'm doing pretty good. All right? I really am. I'm, I'm learning a lot. I'm not dominating by any means. But I'm having a good time, and I'm improving every single time that I play with him. So last night... Oh, no. I booted up this uh, game. God damn it. Okay. I spaced and out for a second, and we're talking about Street Fighter again, and we're reading Street oh, Fighter stats. Good. We've oh, been doing that since fucking the June. Here with Dalsim, all right, is very simple. Dalsim is a character that is very slow, and he doesn't have many advantages at all. He has to play keep away. If anyone gets in your face, you are in big trouble with Dalsim because he has almost no good moves up close that will stop someone who has a good fast rushdown style of gameplay. Um, so last night, for example, the first 15 matches I played were against this Kami. I only won a single match because this Kami knew what to do. Her dive kick stuffs everything Dalsim has, literally beats it all. Her flip move, her flip kick move, is so fast and high priority. Again, you almost have zero chance to do anything to it. And if she mixes it up, you really can't avoid it. It's very, very tough. And then all her high priority normals. So the thing is, I liked playing against that Cami that many matches and losing that much. Why? Because I'll never learn the game if you don't lose. No, I we have no more. skip juice. Everything is 100% live. Dull seem is like Dave. Slow and no advantages. Um, it looks cooler though. To be a good loser, it looks pretty badass. Take your licks, and hopefully, when you're playing, you learn something during those matches. You oh my lose. god, again! Well, talking about advice, After he doesn't follow. That, this way, is a very DSP thing. Three star diamond, two or three star diamond cami. So pretty darn good cami, almost master level. <laughs> then, when I finished with that, and I went back and I started playing other people, uh, I played a wide variety of characters. It was a good variety of stuff. And by the end of the night, listen to this, even though I was down 14 matches, by the end of the night last night, I had 31 wins and 29 losses. So think about that. I was down by 14, and by the end of the night, I had a winning record. That's pretty good. Okay. And no, it wasn't because I was facing endless amounts of scrubs. That wasn't Bro, you fucking all, played actually. casual. Most of the players I'm facing with Dalsim and the This dude really, really, really. We're, we're taking record of casual matches. Casual matches. Bro, you're playing against people that got one of their hands on their fucking balls or something. It's flexing on casuals. Up being either high high level platinums or oh like low to mid level diamonds, which is cool that I'm getting that comp in. <laughs> oh my oh. god, we're still not over this. How? We're having the same conversation we've been having for months. Is the same thing. The same thing. Hey, I played Street Fighter. This is how I did. I played against these people and I played as this guy. Tell me I'm good. Wait, you don't have to tell me I'm good. I will tell myself that I'm good. Casual? But what it also means is that so many people who are playing this game have been playing it so long, almost everyone's in those ranks, right? Like, everyone's gotten to that rank. Almost no one's at a low rank anymore because everyone's still playing Street Fighter Six. has been playing it for months and months. Um... But I'm having a good time learning. I am. And I'm having a good time because it's a new character. I'm happy I've done this. I feel like if I had went back to Blanca again, I'd be bored. I'm happy that I'm doing something new and different. And I'm trying I'm so to learn tired of this better guy, slowly. Man. And I'm going to continue to learn. Okay? So. Good stuff so far. Now you might say, well, whatever happened to the story mode? Well, you're right. I am going to beat the story mode. I promise you. I promised you all I would. I don't know when. But I swear to you, we are going to go back and we're going to complete the story mode of Street Fighter 6 at some point. Right now, I'm having fun focusing on Dalsim. I want to keep that going. I want to play with him maybe like twice a week at least to stay, you know, stay there and at the level I'm at. And of course, yes, eventually there's going to be ranked gameplay, okay? Um, <clears throat> oh, people in this chat crying so, about ads. Uh, <laughs> they, they started definitely. seeing ads. Dalsim, I'm having fun doing good While stuff. While he's talking about the super important well, Street Fighter so. segment. Right, so. Street Fighter 6, I'm glad it's back. I'm just going to comment on whatever the fuck Chad is doing. Like a Dragon Gaiden. Well, it's exactly what I expected. Oh, the Sleepy game. Japanese game. Of Sleepy course, Japanese game. Dragon. Open world exploration, lots of side content, beating thugs up in the streets, 
grabbing items and giving them to other people, little quirky side missions all over the city and everything. It's exactly what you would expect. The graphics are quite good on the Xbox. It has and Japanese like people in it. It has sexy Japanese like girls in it, it. chat. Pretty solid playthrough, but these playthroughs always end up being what I term chill late night playthrough. Oh, so sleepy playthroughs. If I tried to play this as a daytime stream ongoing, I would barely get attendance. People just don't click with these kind of games right. these days. Because they're right, racist, probably. Like, for my core audience of people who like who I am, who like the content I put out, and just want to relax with me, you come to these streams a couple times a week at night, you spend a couple hours with me, we talk, we interact, we have a good time. Yes, the game is part of that, but it's mostly about having a great social interaction on the stream. Social? <laughs> Bro, these... The late streams are when he complains that nobody is in chat. And I've seen screenshots of legitimately Nightbot and two other people in his chat at some point during a late stream. What the fuck do you mean social interactions? Unless you're talking to the voices in your head. Progress and narrative and all of that. You see, it's a little very much different from some of the other places. Oh my I've god. Done. So, I like the game a lot. Oh, the fast forward is working now. Wow, that's crazy. It works, you guys. We made it. For me, it's actually quite fun. Why? Because it's Modern Warfare 2 maps from 2009. It's maps that I recall and I'm actually playing well on because I remember them. And <clears throat> it's me getting used to this new style of gameplay on the old maps. Um, and the... I want to say maybe 20 hours we played it because I'm thinking there was three three daytime streams and like two or three night streams. So it's probably like 15, 16, 17 hours, something like that, that I played it. I've had a lot of fun because I keep mixing it up. Start with an assault rifle, do the daily challenges, switch it up. Go to a LMG, go to a uh, SMG, go to a shotgun, go to a sniper rifle, go to a marksman rifle, and keep it fresh. When I unlock something new, try the new thing. I've been doing that, and it's worked. It's very fun, and in fact, my latest loadout, which is a sniper rifle and a auto oh shot. Oh my god, now we gotta talk about well. his loadouts. Yeah, I'm actually having a lot of fun with it. Loadouts. So, today, I'm excited. Actually, Legitimately. Fun. It's cool because I'm going Grandpa, to Grandpa, please I'm fucking stop. Daily challenges, unlock. We're legitimately talking about what weapons he's using in his loadout and what maps he's fucking playing on. As if somebody gives a fuck. Bro, if I cared, I would go watch you play it. Keep going. It's fun. And when I get going, when I get on a tear. And now he's sucking his own dick kill again. Streaks, you get the freaking Oh, he gets down, kill streaks. You, you know, big uh, sweeping. Oh my God. Streak after that. Right? Some good stuff. I'm really enjoying myself playing Modern Warfare 3 multiplayer. Now, is it perfect? Hell no. It's not at all. It's still got the same flaws as all the last several, like the last six, seven Modern Warfare has all been the same. The same shitty net code, the same skill-based ba matchmaking that ruins the game, every other game. It should be like, chill-based matchmaking. They never, never fixed this game. It should and be matching one, you with people so who are chill. Most, they just kind of phoned it in. They didn't put much effort into it. They just kind of reused all the assets from the last one, and they rushed it out. So, is it fun to play? It is. Is it the best game ever? Hell no. They, they really got to put more effort into it. Nobody these. thought Modern Warfare here, 3 would be the best game ever. When they're new, you know, Excuse I played me. them now for a, I'll probably like a month or two. And yeah, apparently skill-based matchmaking is uh, terrible. And people who are actually good at the game hate it. And I, it's fun. And that, that's not something he said. That's something that I've seen on the internet. But I don't see, I don't play uh, Call of Duty, the, the multiplayer stuff. So I don't know. I just play the campaigns because they're always great. You guys campaigned. For me to bring Except this back to a day when stream, they're trash. remember, I had it as day streams for two streams. Then I made it night streams for like a week, and you guys were upset. You're like, man, when you make it night streams, half of us can't attend. You know, that sucks. If you bring it back to the daytime streams, you know, we'll come back and we'll support. And you did. I brought this back to the daytime streams on Saturday. Dude, you guys came out in droves. You Whoa, attended. You engaged. It worked. Supported. It was a really good stream. And obviously, I'm hoping we can keep that momentum up when I'm playing the game. As long as I keep it on the level I am. You know, I'm doing a lot of effort here to try to play well, improve, use new weapons, and the like. And I want to keep that going, okay? So that's awesome. Now let's talk about Super Mario RPG Remake. Uh oh This is the one I really feel trouble, like... Trouble, trouble. Alert. Mayday. So, I was Broke on boy alert. to play this game since the day they announced it. A little apprehensive. I'm going to fucking roll a joint. Fuck RPG. this guy. 
the SNES version emulated on the Switch several years ago. It was like, what, four and a half years ago? Someone said it was like 2019, like mid-2019 I played it or something like that. I guess they had just added it to the Switch Virtual Console at that time. So I told you guys I would play it, and we did. We did a playthrough of it. Now, <clears throat> excuse me. When they announced this remake, I said I would do it if people want it. And people kept telling me, yes, we want it. Please play it. It looks amazing. New soundtrack redone by the original composer. New gameplay elements. Absolutely amazing. Let's do it. But then something happened. I played Super Mario Wonder, okay? Which I love. One of my favorite games of the year. If you don't think that's not going to be my top 10 games of the year, you're crazy. It's a super good game. I don't care that it seems like, at least in my viewer base, there's this weird innate bias against first-party Nintendo, Mario, and platformers in general. I don't get it, because I love them, okay? So I absolutely love Mario Wonder. But, distinctly, as I was playing the game, I noticed it started out strong, and then What's after like two streams, it will stop showing up. exactly like some evil German leader. Downfall, I think. Making up soldiers and tanks that don't exist on the battle map anyways reminds me the time he went ban 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 yeah shout out to downfall that was a good reference dude everybody loves downfall that's a really good movie stop engaging stop supporting complaining when i'm playing it why are you playing this kitty game and i'm like it's 2023 okay and we still have gamers who are prejudiced and biased against oh the my style oh games. my and god is this the future of Dark Side Phil when he just turns into like a virtue signaling little pussy? That's the future current year DSP? Really? I don't know how much more immature and wrong you could be, but we have people saying that crap, you know? Um, oh, God. I still finished Fucking it. Who cares, though? You know, Super Mario Wonder, I went through it. It was a great playthrough. I really enjoyed the game. Um, But man. As I was playing it and finishing it, people said to me, well, are you really going to play Super Mario RPG Remake later this week? You just finished Wonder. You saw what happened with Wonder. And the same thing is likely going to happen with Mario RPG. I mean, it's another Mario game. And so I thought hard about it. And we talked about it last week. We had several streams where in the mornings we were talking about it. Hey, big ups, uh, 50915 for 24 months, dude. You're almost Later day on. one. <clears throat> almost day one. And That's a lot. a lot of discussions about it and everything. And what were some of the options? It's a lot of brainwashing, bro. We could play Hope you're all right. Cop game. We could play the Lords of the Fallen. We could go back and play something different like Sea of Stars, which you guys had wanted me to play over the summer, but I was busy playing Chrono Trigger, and then it was too late to kind of jump into it because other new releases were out. You know, we had all these options we were discussing. Well, ultimately, what we decided we wanted to do was bring Modern Warfare 3 back to day stream, so that worked as a day stream, and then have Super Mario RPG Remake as the balance off of that, so two completely different styles of games, the daytime streams. And then, it was determined that once I finish Super Mario RPG, we'll start RoboCop. I mean, someone donated the game. No, two people donated the game. Yeah, big ups no, Tony T for 18 months, dude. donated RoboCop. So I think people really want to see RoboCop, considering three different people donated it. Yeah, I guess you you want that in the rotation, so that will absolutely be coming. Uh, okay. He's going to give away the two copies, right? So That's what he said he was going to do. All of this. And then when I played Super Mario RPG Remake on Friday, the premiere day, things went really well. People showed up, they engaged, they This supported. entire conversation is about money. His entire career has been anti-profit, though. Well, it's it's about... I guess, yeah, you can say the bottom line is money, but it's also everything around it, you know, people showing up and all that other shit Control. and views. Love the game. Wow, this is he, contrary to what he wants you to believe, the most oppressed group gamers, contrary gamers to what he people. wants you to believe, uh, he actually cares about views a lot to the point where he has to gaslight himself that YouTube is calculating the views wrong just so he can cope with the fact that his views are abysmal retro throwback and yeah gamers the most oppressed group first they came for the gamers nobody said anything cool. now there's no gamers left all the gamers in siberia you play it cool the gulag i guess i guess maybe my my fears my apprehensions have been disproven maybe i was just being a little bit paranoid he looks right? super bloated today Except though then i played it again yesterday so when I played it again yesterday which was only my second session so you know you're talking we're getting from three to six hours into the game um, attendance dipped after the podcast half the audience left okay engagement after about halfway through the stream people stopped talking to me <laughs> they stopped talking to me and support was nearly wow. non-existent 
That's a great community you have, Phil, when people show up in your chat to talk to you. Once the game started... You gotta love it. The support completely stopped. There was no tips, nothing. It just stopped once I started playing the game. And I'm sitting here thinking to myself, then why am I playing it? I mean, I could have played anything else. I've already played this game four and a half years ago. You'll be reacting right, right I'm now. I'm loving it. I love this game. I would play this game every few years because it's, it's a great game. But I am here to stream content for you to watch and enjoy and digest. And hopefully you enjoy the content and what I'm putting out and then you yeah 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 that's he's he, how the formula works that's how the formula works he's just straight up telling you that's how the formula works i'm not someone who gets why uh, but, but and he's talking about it like it's fucking science like it's a scientific fact this is how it works i show up and i play this video game and then you like it and you give me money for it come on company to promote their game i'm not someone who shows a product a fucking clown a million collaborations well maybe you should projects. It's just me, one dude, sitting here playing a game. Okay. Trying to make it entertaining for you. And hopefully you find that entertaining and then you'll support my content, correct? So when I'm playing Mario RPG in one stream, everyone's telling me everything's great. This is amazing. Keep going. I love it. Yeah, and then Phil, the I love stream, it. Keep giving me that Mario, it. Phil. And it was like the complete Go opposite. Go harder. I don't know on the, the video game. It's the same game. I'm the same guy. I'm making the, the same, same guy. Content. What changed from Friday to Monday? Well, the right? pay pigs changed. And the thing is, I mean, it's the, uh, everything else. Dumb fine. motherfucker. All my other are doing good. So what the and heck? And this is like all this logic is based on the belief that he is not supported by a handful of whales. The moment you realize this is the actual reality, this logic falls apart. Because it doesn't matter if his stream is good or or his predominant like the majority of his audience likes it. As long as one dumb motherfucker gives him a hundred bucks. It doesn't matter. He could be playing the worst fucking game ever. But that's uh, one minute man's favorite game. So he's gonna swing by, give him like 50 bucks. It doesn't, it doesn't yeah, work like that. My head. I don't get it. So, oh, by the way. Just get rid of this fucking idiot. Yeah. This guy fucking yeah, yeah, kill him. For days and kill days him. Days. Tell him to commit. Okay. Um. So. My question to you all is... Get on that ass. Mario RPG. This is honest answer, or honest question. Now, here's the thing. It's not a long game. It's about... Even if you, you are bad at the game, it's less than 20 hours. If... You're looking for all the secrets and... and so DSP is going to take 15. 40 hours. If you're just rushing through the game, you can beat it in 10. All right, I'm not rushing through the game, by the way, at all. I'm taking my time with it, um, and I'm going to enjoy it. People are saying there's new optional post-game content. People are like, well, are you going to do it? And I'm like, well, number one, I didn't know it had that. Number two, if the second stream of the game I'm playing has no one showing up, no one interacting, and no one supporting, what makes you think that I want to play this game extra long? Right? Bro, are we still talking about fucking video games? You want something else. You don't want this game. Please. But again, I don't get it. What happened on Monday compared to everything? You know, the Friday stream was completely different. Okay. So I just don't get it, honestly. He's trying to I make sense of things that don't make sense what, to begin with. Same playthrough, same game. And this will game. never get old for me. It will never get old. It's one of the things that he... Uh, I, I see the most appeal in him as a lol cow. He's trying to make sense of these things that are... They're not supposed to be easy to figure out you just figure out oh this is what i'm gonna do to my stream to make it super profitable and hype it's it's a process but he doesn't get it he's looking for somebody to tell him exactly what's wrong so he can do something else and then ha have instant profit which he never learned that this is not the correct way life is not a fucking video game like this gameplay didn't change play style didn't change everything was the same but somehow completely different attitudes towards the game from friday to monday it blows my mind. Oh, it doesn't matter. Yeah, Everything is great you. now because uh, let's see who. Uh, Lysifer Soul gifted him five memberships, which means everybody loves the streams now. Yeah. Like near the end of the stream yesterday, I was like, is anyone here? Like no one's talking. Like what's going on? You going to sleep? You know, and the game's good. I'm sorry. I like the game. You going to sleep? We're that not playing Yakuza, right? dumbass. Wait, wake wake up. It was the predecessor and precursor to games like the Mario and Luigi saga that was on like the game boy games and also the paper mario games like it led into those quirky style you know humor and stuff like that so um 
I guess we'll see. But I want your feedback. Please give me feedback. I would love Please to Please give me happened. feedback. We're back and there. Is there a reason? Is there something We're I doing can this prove? again. You know, the thing is, like I said, it's not a super long game, which I'm happy because I know you guys want RoboCop. Many of you want, must want RoboCop. So that's coming, okay? But Okay, but you got to keep them well, waiting, well, huh? You know, I want feedback to know what the hell happened. By if now, everybody is fucking done with RoboCop because that game came out, like, what, five days ago or something? This shit is over. You missed it, dumbass. Again. Prove or change it in any way, I like to. I just don't get it, all right? <clears throat> it's the game people sent them three <clears throat> copies of. Three copies. That's how much they wanted. So, there are three different idiots that send him a full price fucking video game. And he still hasn't played it yet. It's been nearly a month. Hold on, what? Uh, oh, cop game release date. Uh, November 2nd. So, second today is like what? 7 21st. Yeah, wow. It's been like three and a half weeks. God damn it, Phil. The you dumb right motherfucker. Now, you couldn't even do that properly. It really is. It's like, I, I don't get it. And now Everything he doesn't get it. It's going all right, but... Her whistle. You heard that, right? Yeah, that was me. Anyway. um, <clears throat> So, here's the thing. All right? This week. A short week for me. Kind of sucks. You know, what can you do? When you have a short week, you have a short week. It's a holiday week, right? We got special stuff coming up. We're about to talk about that. We're about to hit up the schedule, and I'll tell oh, you. Oh, yeah. Look at how excited he is to talk about the schedule. This dude is like a backwards human. Certainly. Everything is backwards with him, including his hairline. To show up for those events if you can. And if you can't, I'm not going to go crazy for Oh, I'm going to show up. Thanksgiving Day event coming up. I know a lot of you can't be here on Thanksgiving Day. If you live in the United States, you're going to be busy with your friends or your family. It's all oh, good. Oh, I can be here. So will be able to it's come not to even going to be daytime for me. Relaxing stuff. We'll talk about that in a sec. We're so, going to spread so those I'm cheeks. Gonna sweat it or anything, you know. But <clears throat> the truth of the matter is that this week has been the ultimate mixed bag. Okay, the first two days of this week. You know, starting up with Mario RPG, bringing Modern Warfare 3 back into the fold as a daytime stream, bringing Street Fighter 6 back entirely and doing a fun Friday night fight stream. Now you know, he's selling, he's selling himself really to well. you, basically. This is, this is what this segment is supposed to be, is just an ad for himself. That's all. That's like when you start re watching a wrestling show and the commentators talk about how amazing the audience is and how full the arena is. It's all to make them look better and more successful. Engaged, supported, great attendance, great support, everything. Like, super positive. Then Sunday, it was my react show, which I knew was going to kind of interrupt that flow, and there's nothing I can do about that. I do the show once a week. And then we did, like, uh, no, we did Starfield, and man, again... I really wasn't expecting Starfield to go crazy or anything. I knew, I definitely knew that that was not going to do well, but I need to finish the game. But then yesterday with Mario RPG, that threw me for a loop. And I was like, Street Fighter stream did all right. I never expect when I'm doing a late night Street Fighter stream that we're going to get insane amounts of viewers or we're going to get people going crazy with contributions. Every once in a while you do. You have someone who's like, oh, I'm a big fan of Street Fighter. I come by or whatever. Oh, so a whale. It was all right. You know, I got no complaints there. It's just four straight streams now. Where I didn't even hit this goal yet. Not even one of the four streams that I hit that. Right? I've been trying to get us back up to 500 members for three straight days. We were at 500 members. Oh no, and then a Phil. Full expired, and it just seems like for whatever reason, for two straight days, it's been, you know, kind of slow around here. And it sucks because I like having momentum. I like the feeling that everything I'm doing, people are enjoying. They want to come by and they want to, you know, partake in it and they want to be a part of this fun experience. And I feel like it kind of was great for two days and then pfft, fell flat on his face for two days, right? So he was making he a lot of money and then he stopped. Like me, to keep momentum going. <laughs> Man, this... not some one notable hot fuck yourself. That everybody wants. Like, actually. And there's no one game that's, that's the one that everyone wants to see. It's tough because you always get a, a split audience. So, right? so unless he gets a game like Elden Ring or Grand Theft Auto 6, he's fucked, basically. Unless it's a huge AAA game, he's having a difficult time. So now he's, his success is so big that he's dependent on huge AAA games to have successful streams. Um, here's what I'm hoping. I'm he hoping is so today, successful. Yes. Modern Warfare 3 has been a hit, and as a daytime stream the other day, it did really well. I'm hoping it'll do well today. I'm hoping that people will come and support the stream, engage, have a good time, and in general, 
this will be a situation where people will really enjoy themselves watching me play Modern Warfare 3, and we can kind of do a flip on, on its head of what's been happening all week. I hope. We got someone, Lice for Soul is gifting tons of memberships to the channel right now. Thank you, Lice for Soul. I'm going to shout all these out later, as you know. Uh, I do the shout-outs at the end of the show. You know what, though? I probably should do these now. You want to know why? Because if I don't, they don't show... They might time out, and I might not even be able to do the shout-outs for each person. So, Lies of Her Soul gifted... Well, first of all, Lies of Her Soul re-upped their six-month membership. Then gifted five memberships that went to Bully Hunter 69. Oh, Bully Hunter. Melon Dog Watch out, membership. bullies. Then gifted ten memberships that went to... Tip, Whoa. Tip tonight, Alejandro Wild. We're getting back up to prominence, motherfuckers. We're making it to 500. And Iuko. Then Lysifer Soul gifted another Whoa. 10 members. And those went to Nicola Francesca, a Pig of the Day Award, Joshua Mama, Ethan Redfield, Lay Doe, Ruben Rivera, SSJ4 ha Hazardous, Ernst, and VT Cycling. Big cash, big money, big racks. Nine, that's 10. Okay. That's a lot of members. So thank you, Lies for Soul, for an insane amount of memberships. I don't even know how many that would be. <clears throat> I actually have to check now. Bro. Um, so my, my plug is texting me, but it's a fucking voice message. So now I got to listen to my plug voice messages while we're watching Phil. I'll be right back, you guys. I'll stay muted and then forget to unmute. So I can update the leaderboard properly because that's a while. Normally, I would do this at the end of the show. The thing is, when it comes to gifted memberships, for some very weird reason, they tend to like. Bro, and his anything. first fucking message is this. Meow. Meow. He goes fucking pussycat on me. Leaderboard, and when they go away, then I don't know. Uh, how many we really have or and I also I like to do the individual shout outs and I can't do that if they disappear So I just wanted to do that fast. All right, we're at 509 members Thank you. Thank you Lysa for soul. You're certainly not gonna hear me say a negative thing about members today I'm very happy right now with how that just, with thank you so much Lysa for soul for supporting the channel Really? Thank you, because that, that gives the channel a boost. A lot of people are going to have memberships. Now, by the way... Yeah, but this dude is fucking awesome. You know why? Because I told him I'm live. And he just said, I'm going to come to your place. Just come down in a little bit. Time to find a new plug. Oh, no. This dude is the most reliable plug in the galaxy, bro. Nominate ads for the upcoming Adpocalypse Marathon this Friday. Literally just I told me, yeah, I, I, you can't come down. All right, I'll, I'll come with a car. That's the fine. Members priority there you go. That. So please do that. You're a fucking goat. That's posted on the, the channel page. I'm going to give him all my money now. Uh, and by the way, if you just received the gift of membership, be sure to thank Liza for Soul for the gift. Yeah, and thank you, sure Liza for Soul. Tis for the season, right? Whatever. Be very nice to everyone, including me and you. Please be grateful. He's being me. nice to okay. everyone. By the way, I love that we get this now. How many years? What? I've been doing this on YouTube full time. It took two and a half years, and finally they made it so this works now. So that now we can get the pop-ups for the gifted memberships. That's very nice. I love I love seeing those back. We used to get the, that shit all the time on Twitch. And then went <laughs> what? Away what? Over here. Now we got these pop-ups back. He's so hyped. Look at this. He's tweaking out over like a pop-up from a gifted membership. He loves this shit so much. Like, what the fuck? The member, so. Cool. He's so excited. Okay. So, um... By the way, Don McLean just gifted a membership and it went... Oh, yeah. Look at this. Look at all this positivity. I'm gonna Don. skip to live. And then I will leave for a little bit for a certain something. And then I'll come back with a smile on my face. Then. And you guys watch whatever the fuck. Wait, 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 wait. We need a oh, hairline yeah. check. I food. I eat, we eat it together. I rate it. I tell you about the different dishes I'm eating and what I think about them. Okay? So he's going to eat then, food. That's the breaking news. Oh, my God. What is happening here? So you can see. Let's. We got the, the right side and the left side. I'm not going to go too deep into analysis. But as you can see. There is a continental drift happening from the west to towards the east, more specifically towards the northeast, where it seems like there has been um, a, an accumulation of atmospheric masses, if that's how you would call it, you know. In addition to that... Uh, in other words, his shit is all fucked up, and there's no saving it. Halloween, so hopefully this will help make up for it. In addition, we didn't do a marathon on, in September. You know, we were doing a lot of special events every month, and now we haven't done one in several months. So this is going to bring it back, and hopefully you guys will like, you know, the return of the Adpocalypse, okay? 
Cool. Now, starting on Saturday, we are back to regularly scheduled streaming, meaning Saturday will be a normal streaming day. It's going to be a Super Mario RPG on the day stream and Street Fighter VI on the late stream. So there's no Friday night fights this week, but there's Saturday night slam. I know it sounds cheesy, but we're going to do it. Saturday night slam, more Dalsima Street Fighter VI, and maybe that'll be the stream where I try ranked. We'll see. Okay, we'll figure that out. And then Sunday, it's my react show, DSP vs. the Internet on DSP Reacts, the sister channel. But then Sunday night, we're going to do more Starfield and try to finish it. Monday, then, will be Modern Warfare 3 multiplayer and Like a Dragon Gaiden. And then again, Tuesday, more Mario RPG and Street Fighter. And then Wednesday, more Modern Warfare 3 multiplayer and Like a Dragon Gaiden. And that's the streaming week. And then after that, we can get back into a regular rhythm. You know, the schedule will be normal again. And coming up in early December, December 7th, is the next new release, the, the Avatar game from Ubisoft is coming out. And I will definitely look forward to that. Okay? Tub Tub says, can we change it up? Instead of looking to get $100 tips for a shot, can it be cumulative? Yes. Was this about a fanboy plug yes. in my chat? He's not we'll, a fanboy. We'll, we'll make it so that... Stop slandering my plug. How many tips I raise during the day? Wait, what? Yeah, cumulative total. We will do that. <laughs> I will... See, what and is this dude talking about, bro? He just makes fun of them. No, that's a great suggestion, and that is exactly what we'll be doing this coming Friday. Now I have to sneeze. Hold on. I gotta sneeze. Oh, he's gonna sneeze, you guys. Watch out! Oh. It's coming! Oh. Watch out! He's gonna sneeze! No. I was just about to sneeze. Oh, I it's over. It. Wait, wait, wait. While Holy he was crap. sneezing, you can look at his hair from a different POV. And I mean, what what am I supposed to say about it? It's like, it's so fucked up, I don't even know like what, what this looks like. I can't even tell you what, what this looks like. Mm. And the thing is, he got a massive bald spot in the back! No! Oh. oh, what the fuck? This is just skin. Come on, man. Look at this. Ah! Help! Looking scary. If you see me, yeah, if I you guess. see me like this, just, just tell me to go bald, dude. And that just I'm allowing sense. utmost honesty. Just tell me to go bald if I'm like this. Because, uh, Honestly, I don't know why I did it the other way previously, but that just makes sense. If we do it, let's say it's a hundred dollar milestone, right? So you raise a hundred bucks, take a shot. You raise two hundred bucks, take a shot. What? And everyone can contribute. Oh, he's gonna weaponize his addiction. By the way, this is a super positive segment. I love it when he does it because it shows how much willpower he has to get over multiple addictions and still indulge in them. Not only indulge in them, but make it a paid reward where people can get him to indulge in his past addiction that ruined his life and it's a cool thing now a little bit right and then it works as opposed to relying on one or two people dropping like a giant bomb of a contribution it could be everyone working together in a small capacity it's like a community event right? oh yeah so that was go. that was bound to happen because at some point he realizes he just simply wants to drink on stream because he just likes drinking why not get paid to drink? But we got to have enough stupid idiots to give him money so he can drink. So are we going to make it every time we hit a specific monetary situation? All right. Very good. Very smart, Phil. He's evolving, you guys. There you go. That makes sense. My nose is itching again. It's and now we got to do this thing again. Show oh. us your haircut. Oh. Show me your hair right now. Oh, oh hell yeah that's what i'm talking about look at this oh my god oh my lord oh stupid cold then again i don't even know if that was the cold <clears throat> as you can see here i'm almost better like i have a little bit of drip a little bit of problems with this cold. oh yeah that was like such a good right? sample man uh, a little bit of drip that's good Canadian good Kirk, one there's no way you're wearing the same shirt as me how about this Canadian Kirk, tell me the brand of the shirt. Um, I think it 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 simply says Kuklux on it. The Kuklux, that's what it says. I'll tell you if you're wearing the same that's shirt. That's the shirt, I and it's pure white. I'm this sure. Is not really a shirt. It's a what do they call it? Pullover. I normally would wear this like out, but I just felt Pull like pullover on stream. The pull style over, you fucking dumbass. Stream, I believe. I don't think I've ever worn this before. Okay. Anyway, let me throw these out. And we'll Where's he going now? 
Oh. Uh. Okay, quarter zip. Wrong. This is Dockers, so we're not wearing the same shirt. <laughs> and once again, this is something I got on a discount. Guys, I'm going to just tell you. It, do not buy stuff from the regular store. Don't go to the department store. Don't go to the normal clothing store and pay full price. There's tons of discount stores out there. Sometimes you can, like, like you ever been to, like, a Marshalls or a TJ Maxx or a place like that? <laughs> they take the same clothes that you would get full price somewhere he else, just, and they're, they're fine. He just discovered thrift shopping, and it changed his fucking life. Whoa, what? I used to buy the underwear that cost, like, 35 bucks. They got it here for, like, $3? They're not, they're, they're full quality, you know, and they just resell them for super cheap. Yeah, no shit, or, dumbass. Uh, there's another place that we go to locally. It's called Plato's Closet. Now, I don't know if you have one locally, but essentially it's like a thrift shop where they take in clothes, they clean them up, they make them ready for sale, and then you can buy them for a humongous discount. There's stuff in there. You can buy a jacket for like 20 bucks. It's like a leather jacket. It's crazy. That's where you should buy your stuff. I don't recommend going out there and, uh, you know, spending insane amounts of money, you know, it's just, it makes what no is sense insane amounts of right? money? It's ridiculous. So even though I, anyway, I that's agree. I that's because people, oh, how you get all these clothes? Well, first of all, I've had these for ages. These are the kind of clothes that I wear off stream. If I'm going out or I'm doing something and I'm not on stream, this is what I've always worn. Um, but I've had them for ages because every once in a while you go to a store, I'll drop like 20 bucks. You get like two shirts, you know, two good shirts. It's you actually, know? I would actually say. Going thrift shopping is a really underrated date idea. If you want to take a girl out on a like a creative date, go thrift shopping because you can buy a lot of shit and you have a lot of stuff to talk about while you're there. You know, it's a piece of junk. It's two good shirts. Take right? this one from from your uncle Meerkat that you're probably older than, but you know what I mean. So there you I'm go. wise. I'm wiser than my age might assume. Anyway, because um, I'm Bulgarian. So, there you go. So, that's what's going on with the schedule. That's what's going on with the games. That's what's going on with the special events. Oh, yeah. Thrift shops do well. smell funny, but that's kind of the point. Because you get a distraction, right? Special stuff. I hope we have a really great stream today. Because what if you oh. smell funny? Well, that, that's a problem. What if the girl smells funny? That is also a problem. So, you go, you, both of you go to a place that smells funny by default. Really well. So hopefully people will show up and support. Thank you, Lysifer Soul. Thank you to Don. Thank you to Parasolo for supporting with those memberships so far. And if we can just hit this, then we're good to go. And I really hope that we do. All right? Okay. Um. Outside of all of that, I have one news story Switch for today. Shop so I just can get the rest snot. Hell yeah. That, that is also a good strategy. All right? That I want to cover. It'll be a quick one. So it's time for everyone's favorite segment known as DSP News. Although now the color of this logo is wrong again. <laughs> so let me, uh, hold on. Hello? Why are we doing the, the color go. logo thing? Who fucking actually cares about this? Who takes this segment seriously, about, uh, uh, seriously enough to care about the color of the lower turd? Lower third. Uh, or in this case, the lower turd. One new story today. Are you ready for this one? This is a good one. All right. Today. This very morning. Well, actually, it was overnight, I guess. Bethesda Game Studios announced, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for our biggest update ever from Starfield. Yay. We're adding DLSS support, fixes and improvements to the graphics, better performance, improved gameplay, and all these What does that mean? Things, right? <coughs> oh, he's still sick, so you guys. Guess what? Apparently now, I'm not kidding you. I wish this was a joke. <laughs> Apparently now, Starfield will actually run at 30 frames per second on consoles. Whoa! Like they originally promised. Now it should actually <laughs> run at 30 frames. Oh, yeah. man. I want to see the, the thread of replies on Twitter of all the people praising it and all the people bashing it. This is, oh, it's so good. Since launch. It's I thrive on shit like this. They lied. Thrive on toxicity. That it was going to run a super smooth 30, and they limited that on consoles so that everyone would have a great experience. It was a complete lie. The game's never run at 30 frames. It's always been sub-30 frames and chopped up frequently in firefights and things. Now they're claiming with this patch, it fixes it, and it runs at 30 wow, frames. Wow, that's wild. Consoles. This is also supposed to stop a lot of the game bugs and game crashes. 
and problems and things that have been happening with the game since launch. No, the know? the DLSS is for Windows because yeah, because sure. initially they had the AMD dynamic resolution implementation, but they didn't have DLSS. But guess what? They had a mod for DLSS like two two days after the game launched. Would not have been in the game since launch. If this is a game that they truly spent as much time, effort, and money on as they claim, do you really think this game should have launched as poorly as it did? What do you mean? It was a it's resounding success. Another situation where Bethesda fails to live up to what they promise. It's another situation where everyone just kind of laughs and like, you know, why is it that in modern game development, right, some companies can can exceed and get better, and some just stay at the same level forever? Like, because they get a free pass. For example, if you take a look at a company like Insomniac, right? That's a company that, you know, they made good games over the years. They made some missteps. They made a few issues here or there. But look, they're constantly improving. Look at their last two outings, right? Spider Man and Spider Man 2. How those games have pushed the levels and boundaries of what can be done on a console. Now, there's bugs. Absolutely, there's bugs. People found bugs when Spider Man 2 came out. Look, it's the swinging cube or whatever. But <clears throat> for the most part, these games are incredibly well-polished experiences, right? We can all agree that. What about... Yeah, but they're, they're far more restrictive than something like Starfield that allows you to do all these different stuff and it has all these different systems. And I'm not the guy to, to come up with excuses, especially to defend Bethesda, but we're kind of comparing apples and oranges here. Right? With God of War and God of War Ragnarok. Again, pushing the boundaries of what the console can do, Right? There's these great game developers out there. They take their time, and they make these well-developed, well-polished games. Okay. Why is it that Bethesda literally always makes the same kind of game? So it's not like, oh, we're going they get a free the pass. Because really people come up with excuses to excuse their downfalls and still buy the product. So who, who fucking cares about the standard of quality of the product if people are still going to buy it? Really breaking the mold here. They make the same game, and every time they make it, it runs like shit. Like, you would think at one point they'd be like, well, okay, well, finally we figured this out. We figured nope. out why our games are wonky, why our games have issues, why they don't run well. Why it's, kind of, it's kind of like with DSP. He is being enabled by people who excuse everything he does and support him. So why would he ever be better? All these problems. And, you know, kind of like that. we're going to improve upon it, and we're going to make it so it doesn't do that anymore. But no, it's like when you buy a Bethesda game, you just have to expect right like literally expect that for the first several hour, uh, months excuse me that you play those games they're going to run like crap and you're not going to have a great launch experience if you wait the truth is if you if there, any bethesda game comes out if you wait six months to a year and then you buy it it's a much better game it's just truthful you know fallout 70 that's pretty much all games playable for the first year i played it six months in when they made it free during that e3 week and the game was dog shit one of my teammates was stuck on his knees sliding around in a Pete Townsend slide. Yeah, yeah, we get it, we like get it. That game up. was a fucking disaster. So what the fuck is this game? Of course. These games are really bad until they put so much afterward effort into them to make them better. For a game like Starfield, this is a game that everyone even said this was a make-or-break game for Bethesda. A new IP, no. the first one in over a decade, correct? It's been a long time. It's not make or break. People are still going to buy the next Elder Scrolls, regardless of what it is. It's not make or break. They have a reputation already. Nobody fucking cares about truly new IP. what's going to happen. And a lot of people were disappointed with Fallout 76 and with Fallout 4. So it's time to really show your chops, to show what you can do. And they claim they put all the, their big efforts and everything into this game. That's why, you know, Elder Scrolls 6 hadn't been in development, because they were really focused hard on this one, right? How the fuck can they say that with a straight face? Like, I really want to know how Todd Howard can say that kind of shit to a camera, to the public. And then the game that came out, and that's the game that you're playing, you're like, where the fuck is any of the stuff that they talked about? Right? Like, <laughs> all the promises, all bullshit, as usual. Game runs like shit. Oh, we need to keep it at 30 frames on console so everyone has equivalent experience. Your game doesn't even run at 30 frames on console. Your game dips and chops and runs like shit. So what what does it mean everybody having an equivalent experience? You can get more than 30 FPS on, on PC. What the fuck are you talking about? 
Who is everybody? People on Xbox S and X? You got your game developers don't know how to fucking develop. Whoa. They, they don't know how to They should hire DSP as a consultant. He'd be like, you're 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 fucking uh the executives, they don't know how to execute. And your developers, they don't know how to develop. So uh we fire all of them, we buy new ones, brand new ones, the highest price because so they don't break, and we put out a good game, okay? Run on any kind of an engine, it's just trash. You know, like what the fuck? Everyone else has surpassed Bethesda. There was a time 10, 15 years ago, Fallout 3, Fallout New Vegas, Elder Scrolls Oblivion, and then Elder Scrolls Skyrim. Those games were groundbreaking. They were amazing. They blew your socks off. That was over 10 years ago. What has Bethesda done in the last decade that has even been equivalent to their contemporaries, right? So now two months later, over two months later, the game just got skipped and passed upon for a Game of the Year award. No one nominated it for Game of the Year at all. When it, everyone thought it was going to be a shoe in for Game of the Year, just based on what we were told about the game. Literally, no one is nominating this thing for Game of the Year. Everyone thinks it's a joke. And now you're going to update your game over two months later. And you're going to tout it. Oh, it's our biggest update ever. It has all these graphics. Yeah, they're going to the keep updating it like long. years from now. Now you're starting to make your game fun and playable. Like, what the fuck is your problem? Well, the fundamental issues like, are always going to be there. Guys this, that I feel like there used to be a core group of game developers that were the dependables. These were the ones, it didn't matter what game they were making, for what console, for what platform, you knew that it was good. You had, <clears throat> you had the Capcom, right? Capcom was big time fighting games, and then they went into like Resident Evil, Devil May Cry. Oh, Everything this is really great, stupid shit, random they segment. They Mega Man 2, they had all these great franchises. You had Konami, that was known for Castlevania, the Metal Gear franchise, and stuff like that, right? Pro Evolution Soccer? You had Nintendo. For no my PES fans. Uh, you know, Mario, Zelda, Donkey Kong, all those you know, synonymous, you know, Smash Brothers, Mario Kart, all those big ones. And, you know, you still always have these things. You know, to some extent, in the last two console generations, you had games like BioWare was known already from, like, Knights of the Old Republic and stuff like that. And then they started making Dragon Age. They started making Mass Effect. Oh, this is great, right? <clears throat> and we keep going. I mean, I could sit here probably for, like, an hour and name all the ones that used to be great, right? And what happened? What happened in the last 10 years? It's like the last 10 years was just this, decline. When it should have been going up, all the technology is getting better, right? Everything's getting better, so all the games should be getting better. No, it's the opposite. Now you don't even know when you buy a game. You have no idea how it's going to go. You don't know if it's going to be worth your money. You don't know yeah, if you actually a do. experience. Nowadays, you got way more media coverage than ever before. So you can go, the moment the game comes out, a bunch of reviews are going to be released because the embargo is going to drop. But those reviews are from people that got the game beforehand as a free key, a review copy. So you can just wait for the real quote-unquote reviewers, or you can just go and check all the aggregators like, I don't know, uh, Metacritic, uh, Steam reviews, etc., etc. So now more than ever, you got the chance of figuring out if a game is shit or not, almost immediately. Sometimes even before it came out, because they release astounding amounts of gameplay footage for games that are at least decent and the ones that don't get a lot of gameplay footage you know are probably gonna be pretty disappointing it could be dog shit from a game developer you trust like bethesda it could be dog shit okay. like what happened and i don't really say, have a reason to trust bethesda seeing how all of their games have pretty much the same issues that all of starfield is dog shit. i mean like when are you gonna learn if those issues don't don't bother you that's cool that's fine but if they bother you, you still keep buying the games, then that's kind of your problem. Things there that do excel, but for what they promised and what they delivered, this game is an underwhelming, disappointing fucking mess. And uh, then they expect you said that we're going to pretend. Subjective yesterday. Hey, there we go. That's a, that's a nice spot. Like it's good. No, I'm not going. I love Fallout 3. I love Fallout New Vegas. I really liked Fallout 4. Guys, I named Fallout 4 my game of the year. Okay. Okay. I named Fallout 4 my game of the year. Starfield is not even a fart of a consideration for game of the year for me. Literally, there wasn't a moment during that game that I was playing it, and I was like, oh, this is, wow, I'm just, whoa, I'm blown away. Not once. You know, the whole problem with this is, I agree with him. Uh, 
I don't like Starfield. If you like it, then that's great. Hope you enjoyed. It. It's a fucking video game. So I hope you get your money's worth. But the problem here is that he's still playing the game on stream. He still haven't finished it, right? He still keeps playing it. But now he's spending all the time talking so much shit about it. And then it's going to come the stream where he is playing it. And he needs to make it look good so people can support him and enjoy their time. He doesn't realize there's an issue? Oh my god. Not once did I feel like that. I felt like I was playing Fallout 4 again. Like it was Fallout 4 Part 2, only in space. Only it ran worse. It looked and ran like shit. That was, that's Starfield. <clears throat> you know? That just kills me, man. So, I don't know. We'll, we'll talk, I'm sure we're going to talk more about this. As I finish the game, I'm going to have things to say. Uh, and when we get to my year-end stuff, I'm going to have things to say. All right. I just find it hilarious. Over two months after the game is out and supposed to be a seller and be considered for game of the year, which it wasn't. It was All right. Plug you know, walk. I'll be forgot. back in like five minutes. Now we're going to enjoy your time and make it run well. Well, maybe you should have fucking done that before it came out, you fucking imbeciles. Then maybe someone would have liked it. <laughs> <laughs> it's unbelievable. Okay. Let's continue, shall we, everybody? All right. I told you the news was going to be short today. So we have a couple options. First of all, I want to do shout-outs. I think today, I don't want to go ultra late on the podcast today. So I think today what we'll do, let's do shout-outs, and then we'll do some Q&A. Because we could do suggestion box, but I feel we're going to get caught up in it. We already, you know, the, the talking about the schedule and everything took a while today. So I think we should just get to, uh, to like, Q&A. So let's do shout-outs. I already did shout-outs for all those gifted memberships. So thank you to everyone who gifted a membership to the he channel. He says all this stuff about Capcom, but I that's really going to help us issues get back in, in the right direction here. Xbox. Um, they haven't fixed Matt that. Cops Story Time did a $10 super chat earlier and said, I know it's your channel and your decision. Trepang Tri 2 makes Modern Warfare 3 look like Golden Eye 64 in comparison. Your viewers will love it. I don't know what the hell that is. I've never heard of it. What is that? Is that even on a console? Is that a PC game? I have no clue what you're speaking of. If it's a PC game, I have a mini PC, but I don't know if my mini PC can play for like a good person versus shooter. I don't know if it can handle it. If it's a console game, I've never heard of it. I appreciate the super chat, but I've like I don't even know what that is. Can anyone elaborate? What is this? Tri tree Pang 2 or something? Never heard of it. <clears throat> thank you for the super chat, though. It's generous. It was like 10, I think 10 pounds. A 10 pound super chat. So thank you for that. Also, Lysifer Soul, who already gifted a ton of members. Thank you, man. Also did a $20 super chat. Thank you so much. He says, I know you don't play co-op games. Smaller developers like the ones that made Lords of the Fall and perfected the Souls like multiplayer. It was nearly impossible in games like Dark Souls or Elden Ring. And Bloodborne, it was impossible too. So what you're saying is like, Lords of the Fallen is a really great co-op game? I didn't even know that. The thing is, I probably wouldn't enjoy it as a co-op game. I don't really like these games as co-op games. You know that. I prefer, you know, a game like that, I prefer to play it for myself and challenge myself. I know that's crazy coming from someone who... Ah, oh, my nose. Originally, <clears throat> you know, 12 plus years ago, fucking hated the ultra-difficult game formula and had no idea what I was doing. And it was one of the most hilarious things ever when I was trying to play Dark Souls originally, right? And I just gave up. But now I've grown to really love and appreciate these games for what they are. Look at my Lies of P playthrough from earlier this year. I love the game. Constantly switching weapons up, learning new builds, having a ton of fun with it. That's that's my experience with these Soulsborne games now. I really love them. So, I don't know if I would want to do like a co-op experience in a game like that anyway. So, Tree Pang 2 is on PS5. It's a FPS. It plays like the first Fear game. Never played the first Fear. I only had... I had it on PC. Because at one point, when I was building PCs, I had bought either a graphics card or a component of the PC, and they bundled the game together with it. So I had played it for like an hour, and it ran horribly. It was hilarious, because here is me buying components for my PC, right? And then when I went to play the game, it ran like shit. Like, it constantly would chugged along, and it had, like, like issues with the frame rate. It would make the game crash and stuff. So, I don't know if it was my setup at the time or whatever. I, I don't know. But I played it for, like, an hour. It was uh, scary. I like Alma kept and showing also up in the game and, like, jump-scaring you and stuff. And you didn't know what the hell was going on. Um, But then, 
I, 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 I Alright, I'm back. What is he bullshitting about now? I went and I played uh, Fear 2. Now, Fear 2 is also an incredibly scary game. It is. And then, the thing is, by the end of the game, they kind of explain the implier, entire plot. And once you actually understand what's going on in the game, it's not scary anymore. And then Fear 3 is the most unscary game ever made because you already know what's happening, so there's zero things to be scary in the game. It's just like, just shoot things, you know? Um, so, Fear 2 I liked. Fear 1 I never got to play. I feel like if I went back and played Fear 1, it wouldn't be scary because I already know the plot from Fear 2, you know? Anyway, Trapang 2 playing like Fear, I don't know what that means, but if anyone was interested, let me know. I don't know anything about the game, though. Okay. Um, so, on that side of things, thank you. Let's get to tips now. All right, we're back. What's up? It's about building PCs. Gosh. Wow. Building PCs, huh? I'm sure he was really good at it the Please one time he did it. A $10 tip from Dan the Man. Whoa, the yeah. Day. Mega Remember positive. Dan the Man, I appreciate that. By the way, guys, starting likely this Friday. Oh, we got new animations. Look at this. Up. I will have new animations. Oh, he's whoring himself out there, big style. And there might be one or two brand new ones. There's actually gonna be My a couple God. that are remastered. He wants to scam with everything. Everything that you can see on the stream, he wants to scam with. ...than they previously did in previous years. I'm surprised he didn't take up on uh, the, the offer when uh, somebody offered him that he changes the lights whenever he gets a certain amount of money. He decided not to do that. Oh yeah, he called them and remastered course, animations. For like the last three, four years. Of course, remastered. Me getting kicked in the balls. We got that mastering engineer to fix him up. In, um, in Scrooge, you know. Me fighting a bunch of Santa Clauses in Jingle All the Way. Me as Ebenezer Scrooge in uh, The Muppet Christmas Carol, right? All those. And there's, like, there's like seven, I think, that we have. Like seven Christmas animations, something like that. So I'm going to add all those to the streams. Those will start probably this Friday for the marathon. Um, in addition, there'll be, hopefully, if I have time, what I'd like to do Thanksgiving night is decorate behind me for Christmas. So I'll have, like, one half will be, like, Christmas-themed decorations, and the other half will be a little bit more generic, like the stuff I have here. What? So that way we got variety. Uh, but I think it would be really fun to... to what do we... Like, the, the variety and the variety. decorations? Right. But, so... Fear one plays like a so half of his stream is gonna be Christmas themed and half of it is not gonna be. So there's a variety. I I I it's don't get it. Pain. It has bullet time and a cool melee system. Interesting, JC Shaq. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, whatever. Thousand says I feel like what happened. Business experts went into gaming and ran it like an average business. All their success is on the coattails of past success. Now those coattails ran uh, out. What happened is what whatever happens every time something becomes too big for its own boots is you get a bunch of corpo people in it who want to get a bunch of money from the things that are selling, and then it becomes a joke of itself. I mean, yeah, there's only so... so basically, if you want a really good case study of this, just look up uh, Game of Thrones. Just see what happened in the end and why it happened. Times. It's basically kind of like that with pretty much every hobby ever. You can also look up the Marvel Cinematic Universe and what that started as and what that has become and not innovate and not improve and expect to get the same results. How many times are they going to make the same Bethesda game with the same fucked up graphics, the same bugs and issues? Just one more time, I promise. 2023, you know, this isn't 2011. This isn't 2009. It's 2023. Things are better now. Things are improved. You have to stay with the times and it doesn't seem like they oh, are. Oh yeah, The Walking right? Dead as well. They're oh man, The, the Walking Dead. Time. The like, show the ended and now there's like, what, three spinoffs currently running? The Walking Dead. They're never letting that one go. Okay. AMC has nothing else. Guys, let us now adjourn. Open up. Oh no! Open up the uh, stream. We're doing the opposite. We usually have fifteen or twenty minutes. We're fifteen or twenty minutes. We, uh, we get settled over, and we jump into no way gameplay. So I'll see what you guys want to chat about this morning. Let's do a right, lightning we'll round. He's tagging the chat. Once a week, inflation is too hard. Well, you should just be drinking water anyway. Fuck the Pepsi, it's disgusting. Full of calories, nothing nothing good for you. So maybe that's a life change that's good for you then. <clears throat> what are my expectations for Avatar? I think it's going to be Far Cry with the. the I think it's going to be Avatar actually shit. Into it. You're going to see a lot of incredibly similar gameplay aspects. Like, 
the, the bow and arrow is straight from Avatar, or uh, straight from Far Cry. You know what it's going to be. That's been in Far Cry for ages, the hunting and I everything. I think the, the Avatar game is going to be the most mediocre game based on a mediocre IP that has ever mediocred itself into existence. Because it comes from the most mediocre company slash publisher, Ubisoft, and it's based on Avatar. Uh, the gunplay might be interesting because it's like... The one with the blue aliens gun. in it, not the airbender so type shit. Have. Uh, a, a new element to it and also I think that like the traversal if you're actually using the animals and stuff and you're riding them around that could be pretty interesting and neat maybe I don't know how much that'll be implemented like maybe that'll only be set parts like a big set piece where you do it rather than actually like uh, maneuvering around the whole map using it I have no idea um <clears throat> overall I think if they make it a game set in that universe and it runs well and it looks pretty I think people are gonna forget that it plays like Far Cry I mean but that's Bro, that's what they're doing with every single one of their games. I mean, are you serious? That's how Assassin's Creed is the place it is right now. By the same shit. Hey, let's let's hope they don't notice that the gameplay sucks, okay? Far Cry game. That's just it's Ubisoft. Ago, right? Over two years ago. So already it's been a while. So it's kind of like it might feel more fresh to at least have it with a new coat of paint over it and look a little different. But am I expecting insane groundbreaking stuff? No, I'm just looking for a good time. We haven't had a good Avatar game, right? It has been nothing. It's been a long time since we had Avatar. Uh, since it was one I played as a kid. Yeah. That one was you know, pretty good. Back Avatar but last then again, I was a kid. Was Maybe really it sucked. Mad. I'm sorry, I saw Who it. Knows? Like, nah, not that good. But you know, people went crazy because they just go for hype. And I just hope that the game is decent. I think it'll be a fun time, a, 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 a solid outing to end the year. I don't think so. Game Master says now with this new Starfield patch, you can eat food in the field when you loot it. Whoa! So basically what you're saying is if you let's say you're in a building and they're adding food, stuff that should have been in the game to begin with. This is amazing. I am excited now. You could just eat it immediately and have it count towards your health rather than having to store Crazy. it in your inventory and then manually eat it out of the inventory. Oh, you mean like probably how they had intended to begin with but didn't finish it? Right? Because I guarantee you that's what they had always intended. And they fucked it up. <laughs> that is um yeah, I'll thinking about it like system wise, it's probably not that hard to do because I mean, all you got to do is just add a prompt to eat something. So instead of it going to your inventory, you just consume it on the spot. Uh, well, I'm glad to hear that. It's, it's probably it not that hard. I won't care anymore. I'm at the end of the game, so I won't give two shits. Doesn't give two shits. You see what I'm saying? If you want to actually play a Bethesda game today, you just don't play it at launch. You wait a year. In one year, they'll have patched it so much, it'll be a great game. Oh. But you have to wait the year. So basically, if you want to play a Bethesda game, don't. And wait instead. <laughs> okay, sure. Oh, I don't know. Great gaming know. advice. Oh, you want to play a game? Uh, don't. Play it later. Camos in Modern Warfare 3, so since I don't know what they are or how to get them, I guess I can't answer that question. You're going to the casino tomorrow, Jade? Cool, I hope that you have a, a good time. Oh, yeah. Safe, have fun. It time gamble. Oh, it's going to be so good in the casino, man. And uh, I'll see you when I Jade see is going to be going crazy. Whatever, that'll be cool. Stop picking uh, your ears, you rare fucking animal. Tricks. Rare Tricks became a member. Thank you so much for that, Rare Tricks. I added you to the total. Battle Duck says, how's the weather in your area? It's getting quite chilly and winter starts finally setting around me. Uh, cold. Oh, and now we got a weatherman segment. Let me do a shout out when I was gone. Big ups to the deep fryer. Let me play you the pop up. Already played, but I didn't hear it. Stuff about Capcom, but RE4 remake still has issues registering button inputs on Xbox. They haven't fixed that. Hey, there you go. I didn't know about that. Then again, I haven't played the actual game. Yeah, we're not in any kind of RE4. Oh. The remake is actually one of those games that even even watching DSP playing it, it still looks like a pretty good game. In like December around Christmas time, I remember one year we actually got good snow on Christmas. Oh yeah, I might play it special. someday. But usually we don't get it then. Usually it's it's like the next month or two. So okay, can I'll we see. skip skip? Five good RPGs. It's like, do they not understand that when you make a game that's forty to eighty hours long? Oh my god! You can't just sit there and play it all day every day to get through it to play the next one, right? It's tough for me because I'm a variety streamer, but I could just imagine the common person yeah, but who has a job and a life. You don't have time to just sit around and play these games all day long. You don't have to. You can play them whenever you can. That's what people do. And also, developers shouldn't be thinking about other developers and when their game's coming out and if you're going to play one or the other. Unless it's like, a, you know, it's a, it's like competition. How do you play all of them? Just in January alone, right? Okay. In January alone... 
We've got Like a Dragon Infinite Well. Okay, I don't care about that one. I'm not playing it. The Persona 3 Remake. I'm not playing it. And then within one month, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Okay, that one seems cool because I have the, the right? first one. So I might play this one. There you go. It, I have my solution. I'm just going to play one of them. And it's like... Because he's acting like everybody else is a variety streamer and they have to play these games. They don't have to. Because at the end of the day, games are pretty expensive nowadays. So not everybody has the money to splurge on every game that comes out this month. Sometimes you're just going to not play the game, wait for a discount, or just play the one that you're interested in. Even if I just wanted to play those three, how would I do okay. that? You, exactly. You don't. I, I don't know. <laughs> Even if those was the only games I was playing, I don't know how I would handle that. That's just insane. They're all lengthy as shit. They all take a lot of time. They're all different systems you have to learn. Like, how the fuck would I play all those at once? It's just a weird situation. It never used to be like that either. They'd be like, Oh yeah, get out of here. Good RPGs. And now it's just a like constant RPG, 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 RPG. And then everyone's like, Will you play this one? Will you play this one? Will you play this one? Like, how? How do you expect me to do that? You know? I don't know. I don't you know. manage, bro. That's your job. Yeah. Uh, it's not like I need to care about how he's going to manage to do that. Thank you to Swago Nito, who re-upped their membership for today, right? Swago Nito, you re-upped, or did it count as a new one? It might have counted as a new one, actually. Thank you, Swago Nito. Okay, I think it counted as a new one. Yeah, can we stop uh, doing this and get to the podcast? Okay. Um, Jay says, I'm, uh, I'm just asking, are you going to play Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League? You know, I honestly don't know. I really don't know at this point. Do we, oh, do we no, Jade. Like third person shooter? Bro, I like Jade, but when he starts throwing questions like that, so I get Black pissed Phyllis off. Encouraging a disabled man to gamble what little money he has. Uh, I'm sure Jade is going to be supervised by somebody. They're not going to let him open up his little Velcro wallet and spend all of that on, on Blackjack or something. I'm sure like... somebody's going to be taking care of him then, so I'm not concerned. It looks sad. It looks like a depressing game. It's from a studio that made three insanely good Batman games. And now they made a fucking generic third-person shooter. It doesn't look good. It's pissing me off. I want to play good games. I'm not going to be playing be that either. On mediocre bad games. And it just looks so mediocre. But it's like, I want to trust Rocksteady, right? I want to trust them. They put out three insanely good games. Do I trust them and give them the benefit of the doubt? Or do I say, fuck this? I don't know. I got to think harder about this. I mean, it's just a video game. You're not having, like, a kidney transplant or something. You can just see if it's good when it comes out and then buy it. Or maybe it's going to get added to Game Pass if it's really not great. It's going to get added to Game Pass within, like, six months. I got a dollar for the... It's like, all these problems that he's bringing up, they're not actually that serious. And they're not actually that hard to deal with. He just wants to make them seem like they're really difficult because that's what his whole business is about. Trying to make... A, a mountain out of a molehill. And I, I guess it works. From Beaver Bother. Because he's like, he whole says, gimmick is trying to convince other people that he is way more important, way busier, and way more mature than what he actually is. And most people can just see through that. I, re I re suggest doing a Donkey Kong 64 redemption run, you'll be a millionaire. No. But thanks, Beaver Bother, for the $1. fifty tip. In truth, although I get a lot of hate watcher views when I play those kind of games, uh, they don't support the streams. They don't. Yeah. So I'm not, you know, I'm not stupid. I would much rather take a, a full on six foot cactus, turn it upside down, hold it by the pot, and just grate my privates like this. What? Then play fucking Donkey Kong 64 again. And that might actually bring in more contributions if I well, did. Well, at, at least it was an ass, okay? It, at least it wasn't a scat. That's something. So, uh, thank, thank you, you Lil Crookie, for the the Lil oh, membership, man. dude. <laughs> I received a twenty-five dollar tip. Whoa, who is it? It has a message to it, huh? One minute, man. Yeah. He says, "I have nothing." Yo, to say. he says things. Full to say today. I just want to say hello to the chat. Well, wow. thank you, One minute, man. He's now the co-host. The twenty-five dollar tip is very generous, as always. Let me go ahead and play you a nice animation and get you up on the leaderboard. And personally, thank you, as always. Yeah, let me suck your content. cack, Mr. No one Minute Man. Am, no matter what it is I'm doing, I really appreciate that. Let's get that up on the leaderboard. Tappy, tappy, tappy. Where'd he go? He went to beat Jasper. Oh, crap. That's not good, Jasper. Oh, 
Oh, Jasper did a no no. Oh no. Oh no, Jasper snapped the blinds, you guys. And now all of his blinds are broken. In every room. I don't know if you can hear this, but you're not missing much. He's going to tell you all about it anyways. <laughs> I cannot win. I cannot win. I can't. We now have broken blinds in every single room upstairs. Great job. Room, the room Great job, there, idiot. And the bedroom. They're all broken. Oh, in the bedroom, I'm going to need you guys' support. The thing that, that holds together that you pull to open and close the blinds has broken apart. Just a so bunch of animals, dude. Go loose, and I can rebuild it, but there's no way to really permanently <laughs> have it hold together. Once it's once it's split, it basically never properly goes back together again. Have you tried duct while, tape? The whole thing just explodes, and I have to try to rebuild it. It again. explodes. So they work, <laughs> but they're just annoying to use. These don't work at all. Okay, the piece that's inside ripped out. So now when you pull the cord, there's nothing to rotate on. It just doesn't go up and down. So these blinds are permanently down no matter what. If I pull them up, they'll never come down again. Okay, so I just leave them down all the time. He kept going behind the blinds in that room to peek out and look at the neighborhood. And as doing that, apparently he got caught in them and pulled them. And he snapped all the wire off of the top of the blind on the left-hand side. <laughs> So now the left-hand side blinds don't connect to the top anymore, and they're sagging. <laughs> what a story, Mark. Talking all that bullshit! <laughs> uh, shout out to Jasper for the content. At so, least something happened this game. have no functional blinds. Well, the, the blinds in the bedroom are functional. In both of these offices, the blinds are not functional now. Okay. And before you guys say, well, why don't you just fix them? Because I'm not, because I'm not, oh, because money. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how much I'm supposed to care about this as a viewer who never sees his blinds and never is affected by them. I don't know why I should care. But then we got this face when he says money. Hold on, let me, let me do a replay. The, the blinds in the bedroom are functional. In both of these offices, the blinds are not functional now. And before you guys say, well, why don't you just fix them? Because, because money, right? They're expensive. When I had these installed money. in 2014, which was almost a decade ago, expensive hundreds and hundreds of dollars per blind because they have to measure the size of your window, custom cut, custom <laughs> custom blinds, expensive. custom okay? cut. Um, in my house, right <laughs> is that what he asks for when he goes to curls and twirls? Like a custom a cut on the inside. Oh yeah, the house is fucked. This house is fucked inside. We got garbage, we got ants, we got probably some random spilled stuff that was never cleaned. This guy likes to pretend like he's a really uh, a maniac for keeping clean because he always goes somewhere off camera to leave something or take something. Dude is a slob and his house is is drowning in trash. Now I have I'm sure. Things. I have a bathroom that doesn't work. Yep. A busted shower with all rust yep. in the wall, dripping fucking... Fog. This is This whole thing is getting recorded for a song. I'm not going to miss it out. In 2014, which was almost a decade ago, they cost hundreds and hundreds of dollars per blind because they have to measure the size of your window, custom cut, custom install. It's very expensive, okay? Um, in my house right now, I have multiple broken things. I have a bathroom that doesn't work, a busted shower with all rust in the wall, dripping fucking uh, wow. shower head, you know, all cracked, fucked up tiles he cracked the fuck the whole thing has to, the whole shower <laughs> needs to be torn out and redone his his shower is like the bathroom from the saw movie toilet that doesn't work i have a toilet that has not worked in like four years it's all fucked up all right i have a dishwasher that broke downstairs last year last fall i haven't replaced it every time that i think i'm getting ahead 
and I'm in a situation where I think that I can like fix stuff, something happens. Like this year, and we're we'll talking a little bit about this on Thursday during the Thanksgiving special. How you know I had ups and downs this year. This year I had a tire stolen off my car. I had multiple personal things, some medical and some other things happen behind the scenes. And it's like every time I think that I'm getting ahead and I'm gonna have some money to do something, it gets taken from me. Get yeah, fucked. So Go fuck yourself. I all this stuff broke. You don't. Down. You don't deserve being ahead. That's honestly. Let me tell you something, brother. Moment. You don't deserve it. So get fucked. I'm glad you didn't get it because you're a piece of shit. Go fuck yourself. House. I can't fix any of it. You know, it just it has to sit there broken. And I just. Yeah. Oh, well. Well. Don't use get it. Fucked. These blinds have been broken since earlier this year. Just leave them broken. You measure and order gonna... the blinds and install them. It's very simple. You don't pay someone to come measure for you. Look, look, look. First of all, they're custom blinds. They don't make them like this anymore or ever. They're one of a kind blinds. Debunk. Nazdrave prior tell you what drives me nuts. He speaks how much of a mature adult he is, but complains about these things. An age where you can succeed and do well at our fingertips online. Then this slob chooses to be a land whale with his horse. There you go. I'm glad you began this by saying Nazdrave Priateli. That's a very, the very positive I, I, greeting. What's the point of dumping money into it? You know? Well, in fact, at this point, even if I had money, I don't even know what I would fix first. The broken toilet, the broken dishwasher, the blinds, the bat. The bathroom is too so nothing. That I need to redo the I, ge I guess you just wait until the it gets worse. To not fixing any of the stuff he's been gifted money for. Yeah, absolutely. Because he asked, how many times did he ask like a thousand dollars for something in the bathroom? Fucked up. And now it's not fixed. And now apparently, there. like it's it's much worse because it's it's dripping rust. What 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 the fuck he said? He was basically making it seem like he was living in Silent Hill. It's all the piping in the wall and do all that's like. A ten thousand dollar project. I yeah, ten thousand. Look at this now. Now to fix everything is a ten thousand dollar project. Look at this shit. When is he gonna have that money? Never. And he, I guess, he's never gonna manage to refinance the house because that house is a fucking crack house. So good luck with that. Even like those small things. Even if I had the money, I don't even know what I would do next. I don't even know what to, you know. But this is stuff that happens when you're when you're got a house and you're you're an adult. All the shit. Uh huh. Happens. Yes. And you you don't take care of it. You're so mature that you never have money for anything. So your house has just fallen into disrepair, and you have nothing you can do about it ever. That's what happens when you're a mature adult, you guys. Tis life. Yeah, it is life. This is life. So when you spend all your money on mobile games, so we can't afford to fix the house. He's sitting on my floor moping because he broke the blinds. He's moping oh, yeah. right now, Jasper. I bet he's feeling silly right now. <laughs> it's like, well, I mean, you keep jumping behind him, which is fine. I don't mind. But you get sagging and you're pulling on him. What do you think is going to happen, right? Right. You should beat him live on camera so he can learn his lesson. Anyway. You go <laughs> learn now, boy. That's That's how you do it. That's how you discipline a child well, in the know, modern era. It's not a big deal. That room especially. That That room doesn't matter. We, all, we barely even use that room for anything. That's not a concern. I would love to have better blinds in here because for lighting, for the for the streams and everything. Your lighting is good enough. You're gonna look like trash have, anyways. Um, you know, like, I was thinking blackout curtains would work maybe? I don't know. I don't know much about them. Can we put them, can we do everybody a favor and put the blackout curtains in front of the camera? Uh, I don't even know if they would fit in this window because again, this is a window that's a weird size. They would have to maybe like custom, you know. Custom measure just a measure it probably cost a ton of money but can't you measure it why do you have to have somebody come in your house i know you're missing you know interacting with people but you don't always have to pay them you can measure it yourself what the fuck i'm gonna but custom measure even work that well even when they were working fine they don't block the sun that well during hot summer days and stuff it's a custom window size maybe blackout curtains would be a big thing. it costs it costs ten thousand dollars right i don't know <clears throat> Oh, this guy never ceases to amaze me. He just like banger after banger. Excuse me. Uh, another one. That's what I'm talking about. How well do, do blackout curtains work? Do I they don't know. Well? I'm just curious because I don't know what you're I think. Though. I think you should just put a blindfold on. If you want it to, to block the entire sun, put a blindfold on, turn around in your chair, let Jasper operate the stream so he can have some content for once. So maybe I should get like blackout curtains, uh, 
for for this office at the very least. It would benefit because then when we film, it's dark. Wait, bro. Open the bro, th this dude just went through a laundry list of things that are fucked up with his house. But then he got to the thing that is not fucked up and is just for his own luxury. And is now thinking of getting that thing first. That's how mature he is. Whatever I want, but maybe that may, may make sense. Now we're talking about whatever he wants yeah, to do that's going to benefit like, I mean, him exclusively. Like they put in like hotels. The thick ass curtains that they they go, you swing them open and close like this, and they kind of overlap a little bit to stop the light, right? Are those blackout curtains? <clears throat> Retirement will be selling his WWE account. Uh, I don't think he's ever gonna sell it, cause um he's sunk in way more money than he's he's made from it. So I don't think he's ever gonna sell it. They're legit. Swagonitos says they're legit. What I'm really wondering of, how well do they work for? heat because in the summer it would really help if they could cool down the office when you know stop the sun from getting the office up they could cool down the office um and then also what well, here's what i'm concerned about like right now because i have blinds i can open them to get air circulation with blackout curtains you have to open but i can't open if i open during the day i, I have sun in my face right so with the blinds i can maybe like a little bit of crack at least and then i can get some air in here and i'm nervous i wouldn't be able to do that if i have blackout curtains they're good for heat you think so my god they're good for heat for sure see that's what i need because man and it's like somebody is telling him what he wants to hear and he still doesn't trust them Oh, is it good? Are, are you sure? I don't want to run the air conditioner in here unless I absolutely have to. And I try to hold out as long as I can. But man, once it starts getting uh, spring and the sun is beating on the office in the afternoon, it's so hot. This is on 16 times the graphics. Excuse me, the speed. <clears throat> Which is kind of interesting. Yeah, so, yeah, I, I, I agree. I thought this whole segment uh, was great. That's why I, I, I wanted to hear it so fast because I couldn't wait to hear what he was going to say. So I put it on 16 times the speed. And I agree. Um, He's right about everything. He should definitely spend that money on whatever he wants to spend it on. I'm nervous about now. So every year you guys have me do a Bethesda game. What? Right? Now he's what nervous. If you guys say do Fallout 3. Okay, so in 2024, we play Fallout 3, and then they announce, oh, Fallout 3 Remastered coming soon. Okay. Like, out in the next year. I'm like, so? Oh. I just played it, right? Like, I just fucking played the game. So oh, I don't know God. what to do. This is like, it's not even first world problems. This is the kind of shit the Kardashians would think is first world problems. This is so, so insignificant. And I'm not even saying just in general, but even for him. No, I will not pause what I'm doing to watch a GTA 6 trailer. I'll, I'll watch it and talk about it later. It's literally like a two-minute trailer, <laughs> probably, stop dude. Stop what I'm doing to watch the fucking trailer. Stop what you're doing. It's no, come important. on. We have a scheduled stream of insert game here. We cannot derail that with things that people are genuinely actually excited about. The game ain't going anywhere. The trailer ain't going anywhere. Yeah. Take a nice little sip, you piece of shit. Okay. All right, guys. Oh, wow. Is it over? And uh, thank you all. Great. I mean, thank you so much, Life for Soul, and everyone else who supported during this uh, pre-stream slash podcast. I really appreciate that. <clears throat> Remember, the next time you will see me is on Thanksgiving. And that turkey will be very pertinent, let me tell you. And uh, I look forward to chilling with all of you on Thanksgiving for a very chilled stream day. It's going to be relaxed, you know cheer maker hanging out talking about this year what i'm thankful for um talking about thanksgiving food you know all kinds of fun stuff that day maybe some street fighter we'll see but i hope you all join me on thanksgiving if you can make it and if you can't um it's all good. i'm time. afraid i'm gonna have to make it so that's gonna be very fun that will be available on demand but i wish you all the best i won't be here tomorrow i hope you're all safe and have a good day and I'll see you all this coming Thursday for Thanksgiving fun. Peace out, everyone. And I will see you then. Epic. That mean we're done? Oh, well, he is gone. So, yes, we are done. So, we learned a lot today. Mainly that uh, cyberbullying is okay. Um, virtue signaling is... Nobody fucking cares. If you're a good person, bad person, or a mid person. And we also laughed at Phil. Because he said some pretty stupid things. Such as... Um, that whole thing for, with, the, with the fucking Jasper thing. Shit sucked ass. So, thanks everybody. It was a nice time.
uh as you can see i was sick and i survived streaming so there is hope for everybody out there including dsp that he can also be sick and show up to stream so that's it i'm gonna go play some games now or do something else i don't know uh if something interesting happens i might make a stream about it like with um you know the the weird turkey tom response type of thing because they're fun to watch so yeah big ups everybody thanks peace out uh you can follow me on instagram if you want to send each other like reels or something you want to reply to my story whatever uh that's cool thanks i'll see you around next time and oh uh, yeah we're gonna do the the thing the black friday thing and then the thing on the next day actually no hold on hold on first we got um thanksgiving which is on thursday i can do that and then on friday the black friday megathon i can probably do that too we're gonna see but anyways see you around have fun peace out